Uh, if you wouldn't mind, would you uh, share with us your name, the name of your group or studio or your company, and then the name of your game? Sure. Uh, my name is Ivan Moltini. My company is called Good Morning Games, but it's just my wife and I, so... And that's the whole studio, actually. The three of us are making this game, which is Knights of the Deep. Yo, I'm Paolo. I'm a solo developer of Table Rider Games. I'm actually self-employed, so uh, I'm developing games on my own for now. I had never made a game before this one, so it's like my first game. It's much harder to make a game than anyone thinks. It also means there's a thousand bugs I have to fix every day. Just didn't knew if the game had, you know, this acceptance from the general audiences. It can be a bit tough to, to get visibility for your game. Basically, no one knew the game existed. Having done this myself and then with the help of my wife, you know, it's it's a monumental task. There's so many moving parts and so many things that can go wrong. The whole effort of, of you know, marketing and developing and testing and coming up with new ideas is wholly done in-house. And for three people, that's very, that's a lot of work. What? Nani? Getting your game in front of people is kind of like, what, what makes all the stress worth it? And I never thought I'd ever be seeing over 100,000 people reacting to my game all at once. So it's kind of like, I don't know, very surreal, like I said. No, it was it was fantastic. People liked it. I got, oh my God, I think it was like an 800% increase in wish lists in the minute that my trailer was up. The gameplay being shown and the game was actually uh, <laughs> quite Man uh, bear pig. interesting That's for me. That's the shirt he's the, wearing. So many people came that crashed the servers. Yeah, this is from uh, last and year. From then on, yeah. we were sure that people would want the game. From OTK, I think I got something like 2,000 players in my closed beta. And since OTK, we got to see that it's really possible. So if you want to do it, now is the best time to do it because you have so many tools. And even if you're not working on a game, whatever you're doing, just keep at it. You know, that's 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 what I wanted to say. Okay. Well, well, well. Back at it again, boys. Uh, 2023 OTK Games Expo. I'm going to be totally honest. I didn't ever know if we're going to do another one of these, and I am really glad to be back here at the WePlay studio, and we're going to be looking at probably over like 40 different games today. And also, I am not doing this by myself. I am joined here with Extra Emily, Ms. Kiff, Amaru, Ooh. and Tectone. How are yeah. you guys doing? Hello. Good. Excited. Great. All right. Well, Great also, <laughs> of course, this is going to be a traditional Asmongold stream, which means that I'm going to be mainly yeah, just Espen reacting do? to somebody Apparently. else doing all the work. <laughs> and let's go ahead and take a look at who that's going to be. I'd like to introduce you guys to a friend. I think a lot of you guys already know. S-Fan. There we doing? go. I'm good, dude. I'm good. Yo, hello. What's up, guys? Uh, my name is S-Fan, and this is the OTK Games Expo. Yes, very good. We are so, <laughs> so, so unbelievably excited to finally get this thing out to you guys. Last year was absolutely incredible, and our team, our staff, very good, everybody very good. has put so much time and effort and work into this. The people that you see here, a little bit. But the people behind the scenes, they're putting in all the work, all the effort, and they've, they've absolutely killed it. And we cannot wait to show you guys the games that we are about to show you guys today. So we also have our variety gaming panel up top. Nick, how you feeling? Well, S-Fan, I'm feeling great. Thank you so much for the introduction. We are the Variety Gaming Panel. My name is Nick, of course. I am not alone. I'm joined by two of the best gamers in OTK. What's Thank wrong? Thank you, yes. What's as, wrong, Chance? As head of Chief Operating Department of Variety Gaming, Chance being the guy below me, they got my picture over there. It's it's just He's, so... Okay. What? what? Seer, Seer, Seer has... He just beat Dark Souls, and the game came out 15 years ago. Okay, so you are significant. <laughs> no, you are significantly out of touch. How okay. many hosts do they have? Just a lot. Buzzwords. He's just trying to throw up buzzwords. But here at the Variety Panel, we're gonna, you know, look at a lot of these different games, go over a lot of the nitty-gritty details that they put in, highlight some key points, and we're I'm excited to see these games, Nick. I'm more excited, actually. He's not more excited. And we got chat open. We're reading chat, guys, so we are paying attention Shut to the you. Shut up. What? This is a Twitch stream. <laughs> 
Okay, you're right. Go ahead, Nick. Do the host thing. Honestly, I'm just excited that uh, you know we're here again. This is where you're gonna get some great analysis. As you can see, the three best gamers in OTK. Uh, Does Nick by play far, games? It's not that, even close. that is not an achievement. It's like it goes like say. boom, boom, or boom, boom, boom. This <laughs> and then boom. He's exactly. Gonna, he's either, either way, you know what? Enough about us, guys. Let's just get back to Asmin, okay? Back to you, Asmin Gold. <laughs> Soda, Soda questioning his life right now. <laughs> Thanks a lot, guys. Really appreciate you padding out the runtime for the show. That's going to be super important. So, guys, uh, last year what we did is we gave away $50,000 in prizing to some of these indie developers. And this year, you know what we're going to do? The exact Double it. same thing. Oh, I mean, same so thing. It's going to be a yes. little bit different this year because we're going to be splitting it up into two twenty-five thousand mm. dollar categories. The first category here is going to be twenty-five thousand dollars going to the game that is the OTK choice. From everybody who's on the team here, it is the game that we feel like has the most potential, and we really <laughs> want to put some money towards making that game turn into a reality. Now, the other $25,000, however, is going to be you guys. That's because you guys can go over to discord.gg. Is that supposed to be Asmongold? There's way too much hair. And the game that gets the most votes is going to be getting a $25,000 grant by us to help continue and make their game a reality. And for a lot of you guys, obviously, actually, you might be watching from Steam right now. You can go over to our Steam community page and you can follow that COTK Steam community and you can see all of the games that we're showing today as well as wish list and play them. And oftentimes, in some cases, uh, you yeah, can I know. play them I think today. I just heard my sponsorship so, uh, evaporate behind me gonna be doing. with that comment. And obviously, this is that's a it. tremendous uh, accomplishment. And I'm just Back really happy, honestly, to see so many of these developers coming on here and showing their games. A uh, number of the games that they showed last year I had a chance to play. But speaking of being able to play them, I'd like to actually go to one of the main things that we need to do today is our first ad, which is going to be, guess what, Starforge Systems. And uh, so we got we got something pretty special going on here, right? Something pretty special, man. This is the, uh, the mech PC. Yes, sir. Well, as you guys know, I'm out here from Starforge Systems, and it's really good to be here at the okay. Expo. I'm joined today by my good friend Ron from Blue Horse Studios. You guys might have yeah. seen some of his old work, like his Elden Ring computer. That's a computer? His Last of Us computer and many more. We have some something really awesome to show you today, don't we, Ron? Yeah, we sure do. Um, we were reached out to uh, from Starforge uh, last year at TwitchCon. Um, we were down there together at the same time, and I got um, an email from Nick. He said, hey, we've got this real special project that we want to work on with you. Um, can you meet us up for, with, for a cup of coffee really quick? And so um, they came over, and we discussed a few ideas. Dude, and, uh, this music. Some I love things it. that they wanted to see, like in this project. And we headed back to Portland with our juices flowing and just the creative energy, knowing that we were going to create something really awesome together. It looks like we did, man. Yeah. So we want to... Uh, Introduce you guys our 101 custom mech PC. It's amazing, man. Honestly, this thing's basically taller than this kid. <laughs> Can you let us know like the process of putting this thing together? Yeah, so we came up with a few. <laughs> so we made a PC ideas and we made a robot. Some of the ideas and we put that on the work. PC. Um, one of the original ideas was actually to create the PC just in the mech's helmet. Ooh. And then we decided maybe just to do it in the bus, but the overall scale was just gonna be too big. So we decided to actually just build a full-size mech and scale them down a little bit. And there we uh, go. Yeah, he has over about 2,000 uh, print time hours into him, just in the print oh, time. Geez. Yeah, and then, then the... I'm not supposed to touch it. <laughs> <laughs> so, and then the, the post-processing, of course, like the sanding and the painting, um, you know, all the putty work and stuff like that, and another, you know, like four or five hand four or five hundred hours how much that to weighs. the build and that's just the top portion right. and like this is the biggest pc that we've ever built to date oh, yeah, that's yeah that's it, awesome. it is and it was like a really exciting build to do um we also made this uh that's base wild. for it um it stands on top of the pc this is the view 71 tower by thermal take um you can remove that and stand it up in its original position and put the bay uh the mech on the launch platform on the bottom there that's oh like, that's yeah. cool so let's good call. let them know then that this is not just a showpiece. This is a fully functioning computer. Fully functioning That's a good uh, computer call. in there. It's built on Intel's architecture. There's a 13900K process in there. Uh, the MSI 4090, 64 gigs of RAM, two terabyte hard drive, a thousand watt power supply, custom cables by Mainframe Customs. Yeah, it's a full gaming rig. You can stream on it pretty much. Anywhere. So what you're saying is it doesn't just look powerful. It is powerful. It is powerful. Uh, well, I want to thank you again, Ron, for creating something so amazing. 
Oh, no, M2 for sure, man. Thinking. I'm sure. No, you can't buy this computer. I'm sorry. But Asman tried to buy it, and we weren't going to let that anywhere near his room. However, you can <laughs> buy this. <laughs> We're presenting our first our first limited run one of 20 mech pc or our massively excellent comp computational hardware this is the baddest pc in the galaxy featuring a strix rtx 4090 64 gigs of corsair dominator duty r5 ram a custom case glass etching and light box from our friends at gallery panda and that part we're most excited for intel's i9 13900k this guy's very it's nervous and it's very endearing with 24 cores 32 threads the cpu is an absolute beast for content creation and you can leverage intel quick sync video for improved performance in video editing. Hey, he's doing great. Coding. Thank you to Intel for helping make this computer as awesome as it is. Guys, not only is this computer available now for purchase on our website, we're also giving one away. Head over to OTK's Twitter and enter the giveaway to win your very own mech computer. Applause if you please. He's doing, he's doing, doing a great remember, job. Remember, starforcesystems.com for the best PCs in the universe. Peace. Nice. That was actually a really good move, making it so you can put the mech on the, the bottom piece oh, and then put the PC well, where you want anyway, it. Well, uh, anyway, uh, yeah, I, I wasn't sure if we were supposed to be quiet there or not. No, anyway, uh, yes, there is a discount going on as well at Starforge, a 5% discount as well as a Time for new PC, PC oh, I, being given away on the OTK Twitter. I just got two new PCs, I'm good. Event without a free Starforge PC being given away. But I know a lot of you guys are here for the games, so let's get right into it. The first game you're able to play on Steam right now, there is a playable demo. And this game is Toxic Crusaders. I need one Crusaders. more, probably. Wait, Toxic Crusaders. This is the, the TMNT looking game, right? Dude, even the music sounds like TMNT. How do you not remember the Toxic Crusaders cartoon from the 90s? I don't I don't know. I don't think I saw that one. That maybe? Hold on. Think so, man. Toxic. Toxic. Come on, Crusaders! It's cleanup time. Oh, they're going game to game. I like it. Can I play the demo for this. I want to. I want to say I tried it. Yeah. I don't think I really knew what I was doing. And I don't think the game was out when I tried it. Welcome back, everybody. You guys just saw We Who Are About to Die, which is available now on Steam, and Toxic Crusaders, which you can wishlist on Steam. So that Toxic Crusaders kind of remind me of, uh, I played a bunch of Turtles in Time back on the Super Nintendo, remind me of that. But guys, it's time for us now to enter the arena. Let's get into some action games. I love their chibis. <laughs> Our first game for today, is a 2D action game, action adventure game, called Turnip Boy Robs a Bank from Snoozy Kazoo. Are those are all words that I know, but I've never heard in that order. Oh, you're you don't have arms to pump. What do you?
Oh wait, are you guys are you guys watching OTK now? Fucking three, okay. I'm gonna be back up, okay. Oh, very nuclear throne. Yeah. There's a lot of games coming out like nuclear throne. Or Gungeon. Well, I mean, out of the Gungeon's kind of like Nuclear Throne. Yeah. Snoozy Kazoo. It's great. All right. Our next game is a four player co op game set in a futuristic dystopia inspired by Robin Hood. And that is Gangs of Sherwood by Appeal Studios. Another game I've never heard of. You can't hear JP and Zeke? Oh, I... I... The hell? Sherwood is out of trouble for now. But Loxley will keep burning until we stop the pounding. And terminate that fraud of a general once and for all. I love the confidence, but Guy of Gisborne is an evil mastermind, and we don't even have the slightest inkling of a plan. How does that differ from any other day? Is it this is co-op PvE? <laughs> okay. It's time to upgrade your nose, if you can't even smell an ambush anymore. <laughs> I got an upgrade of my own, courtesy of the Sheriff of Nottingham. This is all over the place. Yeah, I agree. The, the lack of music is a little um, daunting, maybe. I feel like that would have been a lot better with music. Like, a lot better with music. Looked interesting. All right. That's Gangs of Sherwood. So remember, guys, you can add any of these games to your Steam wish list uh, right now, actually. So whether it's uh, Turn Up Boy Robs a Bank or... Yeah, pure gameplay uh, is Sherwood, awesome. You guys can make sure yep. to add that to your Steam wish list right now. Pure gameplay is... Our next game is from 10. Ziggurat Interactive. And it's a uh, two and a half D hack and slash side scrolling game that is... Uh, it's set in a... It's set in like a biopunk sort of theme from a game from 24 years ago. That game is Slave Zero X. Okay. My hand sent a hundred tyrant kings to their graves, and yet their deaths begat only more death. Zavkan and his calamities, they're all going to pay. What? You can still turn back, show. The Calamities are not yet involved. I'm not coming back until it's finished. You cannot comprehend what it is you are starting. Persistent little devil. I admire your drive to kill the Khan. Come and take it! I know that heaven is what you seek. Everything you've been told is a lie, Uriel. No! The Sob Khan is our loving god! You are nothing. Dude, the voice I acting's on point. You're almost there, Guardian. One final ascent. It's him. Sothcon, show yourself! Alert. Prepare for a post-human event. I could not. Sothcon, eh? So I would cast aside that fatal weakness to become something more. Who is this? I am the Sovereign Khan's oldest and most faithful servant. Did you just show us the last boss? <laughs> no! 
looked, that looked wild. That looked unique. Dude, that game looks so freaking good. All these games are going to look so good today. Uh, I, I'm incredibly excited to uh, keep showing you guys what else we got, but Slave Zero X, that's available now to, uh, to wishlist on Steam. Make sure you do that. And uh, Asmin, what'd you think? Uh, honestly, like with a lot of the action games, I'm pretty excited to see them. I think especially the one that I really liked a lot was the uh, the second one, the Nottingham game. I thought that was just amazing. The games of Sherwood, I mean, and uh, I really enjoyed that one a lot. But especially the Turnip Boy robs a bank. I like the uh, kind of had like a, a bullet hill t or bullet hell type nature to it, etc. But uh, I think actually, why don't we throw it over to Miz? Uh, let's get another sound bite for Donkey. What do you think about the game? Asman, great question. This is exactly what the Game Expo is all about. Oh, wait, I is this Donkey's game? Uh, I love the contrast and cuteness and violence. He was starting a, a and publisher, really right? Remind me a lot of Enter the Gungeon, I, which I absolutely love. Oh, okay. Puzzle mechanics look fantastic. And overall, Donkey's a big YouTuber. Like a fantastic oh, it's because Donkey ripped him game. last year. What do you think? Adam? Oh, okay. I think the art style is really cute, so I really like it. And yeah, I Donkey feel started like a, a publisher, so I, was, I didn't know if this was so his. I would be so excited to play this as well. Yeah, it reminds me a lot of Jump King mixed with Skyrim. Mm. Yeah, I don't know about that one. But this game is <laughs> absolutely fantastic. I'm very excited about it. Uh, it, it actually is a sequel, I believe, from uh, Turn Up Boy Evades Tax Evasion, which is uh, very Wait, interesting. Techno told me that yesterday. I thought it was a joke. But no, it's, that's, that, that's a game. Oh, yeah. It's a that's good so game, funny. too. The game looks super good. I, I would love to play this. looks good. I want to commit tax evasion and rob a bank. That sounds great. I do that every day. Now I can do it in game. Yeah. All right. So the next game, uh, <laughs> Gangs of Sherwood. I uh, th the second one. I'm gonna be honest. Like I thought it would just looked awesome. Like uh, the the graphics looked great. The movement looked great. Everything about it. I was really honestly impressed yeah. by it. The the combo system. You got like a little bit of a. You know, I think that combo systems are really good for games because obviously it gives the people that are like really into them a way to, that it can compete with themselves, etc. And uh, just in general, I just really think the game plays well. To me, that's the most important thing. Yeah, they absolutely nailed the animations here, which is very difficult to do in these kind of genres. And there's a massive market for fantasy games like this, and with they have very unique classes, which I'm very interested in. I think it's crazy that this is like an indie game because it looks so uh, high quality and like you can see so far into the distance. It looks pretty amazing. Yeah, this game looks like something that me and the boys are going to play on the weekend, grind this out. Reminds me a lot of Vermintide, makes with a little bit of a Devil May Cry elements. Uh, looks like it's going to be an absolute slammer. This is probably yeah. one of my most anticipated games I've seen so far. I can't wait, man. I don't think it's really a surprise, but like whenever the guy came in with the really big hammer and yeah. started smashing things, I thought that was really cool. And so that was like my favorite part. Yeah. But overall, <laughs> yes, extremely excited for that game. And also a third one, Slave Zero X. Uh, I'm you know, like probably one of very many of you guys that grew up, you know, in CC's Pizza, Mr. Gotti's, etc., playing games that look exactly like this and then crying and begging my mom for more quarters because I sucked at them. So honestly, whenever I see a new game like this, it's coming out, somebody's still carrying on the tradition, I absolutely love to see it. Mm -hmm. So uh, what do you guys think about this one? Yeah, this really to me is the next step in this type of genre. You have these yeah. kind of games at the pizza uh, place, you have these you know, whenever you went to the arcade, but this is the next step, this 2.5 style that they're doing right here. I think it just looks beautiful, and the side-scrolling to me is fantastic. I think this game is going to kill it, and you should add it on your wish list right now. Miz, you're so knowledgeable. When I look at this game, I'm like, oh, I just want to get out there and, and, you know, slash everyone. So it looks like a great game to let loose and have yeah. fun. Yeah, Miz, you're pretty knowledgeable, man. What, what's another 2.5D game that you know of, Miz? Exactly what I'm saying, Tectone. Yeah. I think one thing I love about this game is the art style is just <laughs> so beautiful. And to me, it's exactly what the Game Expo is all about. It's just uh, showcasing games like this that, you know, may not be able to get their marketing out there, but we're able to just show in front of, you know, possibly hundreds of thousands of people who can add it to their wish list right now. Just like so, Trump yeah, there. anyway, um, how to vote, guys. Uh, <laughs> keep in mind that you're able to vote for one of these games oh for Chat's God. Choice of $25,000. Yep. Go over to discord.gg slash OTK Network, and you can take a look at the games that you're able to see, our Steam Community page as well, and you're able to play at least some of these games right now as well as wish them right to come out. But before we go to an ad break, we'd like to show you one more game, and we're going to take a quick break to uh, show an exclusive <laughs> showing of a new game, Alien Hominid Invasion. Oh, oh wow. <laughs> Oh, 
This is a co-op beat him up. Oh. Alien hominid. Hominid. That's fun. Oh, dude, the, the game. I'm I'm digging the game so far for sure. Like they're, they're showing a lot of gameplay. They're keeping the games up. Like yeah, that's the stuff's good. If they do this the whole show, that that'll be awesome. A oh, potato. A solid game. Hey, 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 buddy. How was uh, the end of FTS? It was good. There was a couple of a couple of really cool games there at the end. Cool. Um, but I, I, we were watching. I had the OTK thing on the, up on the other screen, and uh, there was one or two that I was uh, interested in. That that Sherwood one. That one looked yeah. Awesome. And. Uh, there was one other one that I, I don't know what it was, but I'll have to look it up again. Did you ever play Brocato? I did a little bit. I, I think I played the demo. I don't know if I played the full version. Okay. Because I played, like, all the way through it. I had fun and with it. It's cool. It was great. The only thing about Brocato that kind of lost me is that it's basically, like, the exact same arena every time. Like, I think it would have been cool if that... Maybe I never just got to New Welcome arenas, back, but. everybody. No, you no, guys yeah, just saw right. Alien Hominid right. Invasion and Brotato. The full release, the 1.0 release of Brotato, is coming on June 23rd. Oh! So you want to make sure to check those out on Steam. Oh, it's not out them. yet. Alien Hominid, it's... No, it's still in early access. It's like pretty cool, you know. Access, I'm, yes. I'm an old internet guy, right? So is JP not joining? Kind of uh, he's show, muted. But, so maybe uh, he's next just... Up, he's wrapping up. We're going to go into some adventure games. Adventure games? Here we go. Oh, Okay. Gotta, gotta tighten up those outros. <laughs> so we're gonna kick it off All with right, a single-player hey, survival hey. horror from Santa oh. Regione oh. called Saturnalia. Oh, wait, we've heard of this game. Oh, I gotta unmute. Yo. Yo. What's up? Sorry about that. It's all good. I think we've heard of this game. Anything good so far? Uh, yeah, there's actually been a few games that have been looking cool so far. Wait, I think I played this game. Maybe? I see I joined right in the horror game. Yeah, I think I played this game and it was like pretty cool for a little bit. And then I kind of lost interest, I think. If it's what I'm thinking of. Same format as last year, Co. In terms of like how the show's going, uh, looks like it. They've got a lot of gameplay up so far, which has been good. Yeah. A lot of, a lot of cringy for the sake of cringiness stuff, which I'm cool. yeah. pretty sure everyone knows they're doing on purpose. So, I saw the uh, Gundam PC. Yeah, that thing is nutty. You missed. Uh... One game that you might be interested in called The Spirit of Samurai, I think is what it was. Oh, cool. Yeah, I'm going to check out the last 20 minutes later at some point. Okay, uh, that creeped me out, which it's is exactly what it's supposed to do. Uh, our next game. Our next game is from Fervier yeah. Games. It's from Fervier Saturnalia. Games. Yeah. Uh, I want also, make I want sure to go wishlist. Yeah. Make sure to go wishlist that, 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 game. that game. All the games in today's show, you guys can go on Steam, add them to your wishlist. You guys can even buy some of them. Some of them are out now, but make sure to add them all to your wishlist. Our next game is a uh, it is a, a monster catching monster catching game. You can train them up. You can level them up. It's from Fervor Games, and it's called Creature Keeper. <laughs> Creature Keeper. Have we heard of this one? Mm. I don't know. Another toad. That name sounds familiar, but it's like it could be anything. Like it's like putting dark or shadow or war or whatever in your title. It's like I could have heard of it, but maybe not.
ますと See a lot of people in chat think it looks good. Yeah, that was a cute, cozy game. Creature Keeper. Make sure to add that to your Steam wish list right now. And Do we, we can actually find out a little bit more about it because uh, I think that's we fame. got Asvin here with okay. a dev interview. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This yeah, is, uh, we're going to be interviewing the, show uh, is the developer. And uh, right. honestly, I'd like I, him I to introduce himself gotcha. because I think I'm going to mispronounce his name. But uh, anyway, I'd like to ask him a little bit about Kif kind Band? of uh, what's going on with <laughs> like that game. Uh, he, kind of where they're they did like a and everything full like thing that. and so, he's uh, back. Whenever he's ready, yeah. I'm ready oh, to go. Okay. Happened a while ago. So, yeah. Uh, hey, hey, oh, what's going on, man? You good? Hours. Got it. Yeah, I'm good. I'm excited. Yeah. The trailer was awesome. And hey, I'm Fervier I wonder how that would have worked. For your games. <laughs> I'm basically if somebody was banned off Twitch for this show, like and I guess they couldn't be on it, could they? Uh, working with Graffiti Games to as the publisher, and we got like a couple of contractors and. Oh, he got banned because of DMCA. Yeah. Got it. Yeah, that's my game. <laughs> so you just started this game all by yourself. He got DMCA like two what gave days you ago. The idea yeah, to make back. a game yeah. this way. So. What was like your inspiration for this game? Mm, I think so they're using Guest Keeper, Star for this, by the way. It's kind of just been. <laughs> Are they? Like my game There's, that I've If you I've look on the, uh, I don't see a single Twitch, Twitch logo, dude. Uh, like if you look on the uh, Twitch Keepers itself, kind of though, it says that there's at least it did earlier years. that they're streaming with and I started guests off as obvious, on the stream. Didn't really know anything. I would have no thought that it would have been all over no the stream if they were using it. And I kind of just yeah. So if you look at Asmongold next to special events, it says powered by guest star. Okay, there you go. The one thing that attracted me the most was just gameplay so you know i was just working on all these creatures all these items all these weapons and stuff and like eventually like through yeah, lots of prototyping and failed prototypes as well i like that's part of the process came across the yeah. idea yeah exactly yeah i came across this idea of just like literally flipping <laughs> I wonder if they did one, um, and then you're able to just have creatures right on there. your team and yep. you know it's cool because all the you know the all the stuff i've been working on in Rehearsals terms of like creature ai oh, and stuff it's like word. now that they're on your team yeah, like any creatures that i make like, fun or to fight against are also fun to fight alongside so, oh is this so you started designing the game to kill the yeah. creatures and then you maybe thought hey maybe this would be an interesting idea maybe we could not kill them and actually just make friends with them instead is that pretty much what you're saying what's guest star like exactly, a twitch thing yeah like who is banned from twitch oh uh, they were talking about miscuff just got like dmca a little bit ago being, back. like how do we make happens all the, the time creatures, the stars days. of the game all right. like all across twitch it's, it's as, as you it's as you said you know like just every game is like you're fighting monsters but in Creature Keeper, you're befriending creatures. Yeah, I mean, I think it's a really interesting monsters. concept. I mean, <laughs> seeing the uh, the graphics and everything, it definitely reminds me of a lot of the games that I grew up with. So uh, I'm really excited to see where you take the game. And uh, thank you very much for coming on and talking about the game. Again, the game is Creature Keeper. I know, DK. And no. it is going no. to be uh, available on Steam at some point, And you can add it to your wish list now. <laughs> that would be a cool so reveal. So I'll take it back over to no. S-Fan. That'd and, be a great uh, world we'll premiere. The show. No. Yeah. Uh, well, I'll go ahead and tell you guys about our next game. That was great. Uh, our next game is from Valhalla Cats, and uh, it's actually called... Well, let me tell you a little bit about it first. Uh, it's, it's a narrative-driven platformer that kind of channels the classic 80s, 90s animation style. It's really cool. I loved it. Check it out. It's called Stars in the Trash. <laughs> huh. <laughs> Again, just words next to each other in weird places. I love it. Huh. Oh, that cat's scheming. Uh, that cat knows more math than I do. Why is this called Stars in the Trash? <laughs> That's a good question. Why not call it Valhalla Cats from Stars in the Trash? <laughs> what? Oh, what the hell? I have so many questions. Oh, 
okay, so that was like it's like that that was the wrong choice because the butcher came out with his knife. And then you make the yes. right choice and you get you get some sausage links. Hey, this guy's Stars in the Trash, which is the name of the game, not a nickname for live streamers. <laughs> but yeah, Stars in the Trash, you guys want to check one. it out. Uh, get it on Steam, wish listed on Steam right now. And I'm going to throw it up to our variety. Yes. Nick, what'd you guys think up there? Yes, fan, uh, we thought, you know, it was awesome. But before we get into these <laughs> adventure games, I got something cool to say, okay? We are giving away three Voyager Creator Elites uh, PCs with Star Forge, so you got to make sure that wow. you guys enter that. We are also giving away merch, one hundred dollar vouchers, plus gamer sub stuff, a razor chair. You can see it right there on the screen. So make sure you guys those enter Voyager the, Creator Elite. Is that just awesome a case? Giveaway. Super, or is that like a no, 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 no. giveaway, That's which is great and awesome? Yeah. So there you go. Okay. Uh, there should the, be some the instructions the how to enter totally that built in thing. the chat, okay. things like that on Twitter, etc. So, yeah, yeah, awesome. So I think we're ready to get into the uh, adventure games. Uh, Chance, how are you feeling? I felt great, you know. the If we can get some B-roll of a first game here, Saturnalia. Yeah. That, you know, I love horror games. I'm a big fan of horror games. And I love it when I see a horror game take a crazy twist and just get kind of crazy that middle host is cute. I that wonder what, game, what, what his deal with is. With all those different perspectives. Oh, that's soda popping. Third person, I'm I saw some top down. I mean, the color changes and just the yeah. ridiculousness of the horror aura and take that they're It's funny, every time we it, see each other really at, a, at a convention, it. we take a picture yeah. of one um, of us kissing You know, the other. an interesting <laughs> aspect about this game, Chance, that I read that up on it. Thing. Actually, what? when you lose all of your characters, all I heard was one of us kissing each other. What are you change. talking about? So every time we see each other at a con, we take a selfie. You do a lot of And one of us is kissing the other one. So that's pretty. That's a, I don't that's, know, should I that's say pog, pretty much classic both of you. Oh I'd my say. god! That, that, oh yeah. my god! Uh, I'm yeah, gonna be adding that one out. to my wish list. So um, all your characters die and the roads change. What does that mean, Seer? Well, you'd have to play to find out, which is what I'm going to be doing. So, but yeah, you're looking. You're looking here at the game. I like the animations. I yeah. like that. I guess it's is that hand drawn. I have no idea. It's very unique. <laughs> I haven't really seen anything that looks like that before. And yeah. I'm just I'm excited to get my hands on it and just kind of see how it plays. It's really unique. Cool. Yeah. I'm, oh, not I, for another twenty I, minutes. I, I see Johnson get and Nero. I'm really scared yeah. with scary games, so it's going to be something. Oh, it, it shows, Nick. It okay. shows. Well, yeah. You know what? I'm gonna join back up. Yeah, Sierra. How do you feel about Creature mm. Keeper? Okay, so Creature Keeper, one man studio game, looks great. Got good nostalgia. Oh, can't make fun you of cook it. yummy food, crafting oh. trinkets. One you got power ups. You got one, a pocket garden game. that stores all your information. Uh, I'm excited to see end game in that. What happens after level 50? Oh, the end game. Okay. Yeah. So we got to talk with the dev, and uh, which was pretty cool to you know see that he's sort of a one man team with some contracting on the side here and there. But overall, you first look at it, it looks cute, it looks cozy. But looking at it a little bit closer, it's more than just capturing creatures. I saw a boomerang weapon. There it is, the boomerang weapon. Uh, that's my favorite. That's my favorite weapon. Okay. There's, there's <laughs> caves for you to explore. I saw some chest loot. I think okay. I saw a talent system. Okay. You should you got, now. Of course, the pet management that comes with the creatures. This yep. game has a lot to it, but it's also that really nice indie pixel art style that seems to do well with pretty much every game that goes with it when it's done right. And this game seems to have done it. Right. And I love that it focuses on befriending beasts and making friends. Something that I need more of. Yeah, as a lonely guy, this is going to be perfect for me. Uh, so I'm definitely gonna be adding that to my wish list. Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, being so able who, to you know make what, friends in game game is super important. Streamer. That's uh, yeah, he's an OTK streamer. He's he's super here. important. We got to make sure that we you know okay. find them in any way. You don't have to say he's an OTK streamer. I consider you a really good that. friend. <laughs> I don't even like you after you said about me earlier. He's an OTK, anyway, by the way. So don't touch me. Oh, got it. Stars okay. in the trash. Chance. Um, stars in the Trash, so that's the, um, let's get some B-roll of Stars in the Trash here. That was the cat game, and we saw with Stray, I'm pretty sure it got some type of game of the year, um, for something, I don't know. It was, but people love cats, they love that narrative-driven story, yeah. and you can tell the devs of this game have cats. They're highlighting all the different things that cats like to do, scratching on the window. I, they probably even got their own cats to voice act. I'm sure a lot of people's cats at home were freaking out. A little bit of meow, meow, like, meow, I'm a cat, yep. control me. Wait, try that one more time. I'm a narrative-driven platformer. Try that again. What does the cat sound like? <clears throat> meow. <laughs> uh, <laughs> meow. I, hey, listen, 
If we, I have one, I wonder if there's a skill tree in Endgame in this game because if there is, I love this. I want to see what that cat can unlock at the there's, end. There's there's not gonna be a skill tree in this. You game. got a dog with wheelchair I, uh, wheelbarrow legs. You got that's, you do not. <laughs> do you, okay, you're gonna talk about a skill tree. That dog. Okay, okay, let's move on. All right. There's but they've got great characters. We saw the dog <laughs> with wheels legs. that looked fun. It reminded me a lot of the movie Homeward Bound. Yeah. So a nice game with a story kind of driven like that. With you got puzzles. A lot of puzzles and that adorable animation. Watercolor that, painting. It just looks great. I, I I would love to play that game with you. It's a single player game. Oh. You guys could play on the couch together or something. I'm I'm relatively sure it's a single player game, but I mean the, the art style is clearly very nice, but let's wrap this the fuck up. Okay. Meow. Okay. okay. <laughs> Alright, chat, chat. Meow. Chat. It's so you guys right now can vote that for your so favorite good. game in Discord in the OTK network discord in the <laughs> expo <laughs> voting channel make sure that you guys do that right now you can figure out your way how to get in there uh, i'm sure you guys are you guys have been there just go find it go vote okay and before we go to a quick break uh check out the spirit of the samurai uh game trailer oh, right now there you go oh, oh cool okay great i'm going to tell you a story a story about three Extraordinary spirits united to face the darkness. A spirit, a kitty, and a samurai. What is this graphic style? Yeah, dude, it's like stop it's, motion. Yes. Yeah. It's like Harry House and shit, dude. It's great. Wait till you see some of the boss fans. Yeah. And this and little cat. <laughs> death. I, Kitsune, spirit of the forest, was a witness and a part of it. Not the cat! That's horrifying, dude. Oh, this one. We just saw this one, too. Yep. Yeah, they showed this at... Uh... Three conferences now. What's the origin of this event? Uh, this is OTK, which is a streaming group on Twitch. This is their second year, I want to say, of them basically yep. doing their own showcase during SPF. So it's a group of Twitch streamers, uh, IRL streamers, and game streamers. And um, they just got together and put on a show. Yeah. Is this a part of SPF or is it its own? I think thing? it's just during yeah. SPF. I don't think there's any official yeah. connection or branding. Yeah. I saw like Keely was being social with them on Twitter. Oh yeah. I didn't know if it was a part of it. Oh. Yeah. Oh, some people are saying it's on the SGF website. There you go. Oh really? So it is. Cool. Oh okay. cool. How do I get this pin thing to stop popping up? What thing? I just X'd out of it. What? Thing? Welcome back, guys. You guys just saw Rekka. Make sure to add it to your Steam wish list right now. And we're going to get into some strategy games. Strategy game. <laughs> Every one of those is just like two seconds too long. <laughs> yeah. Our first game for strategy is from Ring Lab. And it's a, uh, it's a game that you can go and you can build colonies on a, uh, on a forgotten moon. And it's called Scorchlands. kind of cool definitely a lot of a lot of things 
Hmm. Oh, this is 12 bucks early access and has a demo <clears throat> on Steam. Cool. Interesting. Guys, you can get Scorchlands on Steam now. So make sure to go check it out on Steam. Our they have those little, those little is from flame graphic thingies. It looks like S apostrophe it's a game Corch where you're on the, uh, or you're on the S apostrophe Corch on, of Earth and Last City. Got tongue tied a little bit there, but that game is called the Project Haven. A lot of games I've never heard girls, of. This. this is our first proper gig since the breakup. Rex doesn't think we'll make it on our own, and we'll go crawling back with their tails between our legs. Fuck that! We're steel dragons now. Oh. We don't crawl for anyone. can add Project Haven on Steam now to your wish list. And uh, there's actually a closed beta sign-up that's going to be available very, very soon. So make sure to check out Project Haven. It kind of has that feeling of the old uh, XCOM or Silent Storm style of game. So that, that one looks really, really cool to me. I'm very excited about that. Our next game that we're going to show you guys Starting is from Hippo Rider Games, and it's a single-player roguelike auto battler. And that game's called The Soul Walkers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm intrigued. Oh, it's like TFT auto battler. Okay. <clears throat> I've never really got into TFT at all. I was in hard for a while. In fact, I don't think I've even ever tried it. It's fun, man. It's it, it really appeals to a gambler's nature, yeah. like mine, because it's like the the smart thing is to save your gold. But if you can get that one uh, tune to like lock up your fucking team, you, you just spend the gold and try and get it, and then you don't get it, and you throw things and you know make everyone around you scared for a while. <laughs> can add the soul walkers to your steam wish list now make sure to check it out make sure to add it to your steam wish list again like i said earlier just like all these games check it out on steam you can buy some of them already but all of them make sure to add Are them to your wish list sponsored by steam uh on that note let's go ahead and know. take it up to our variety but i really like how they're take really to pushing the wish list discuss thing. the game a little bit nick how's it going it is going great once oh again, Espen. Thank you, thank you, thank you. But I'm before excited. we get this into part of the show. talking about these strategy games, I got something else cool to talk about. Guys. What is Dude, soda in his little eye? Look at this picture. Merch. Oh, let's yes, talk about it. Yes, That's yes, cool. let's oh, talk about it. Merch is on sale right now. As you can see, we are wearing some of them right in studio, but here they are on the screen. Check it out. All these new designs. They are awesome. They are fresh. You know, if you want to look like super oh, cool that's like Bay? C or a great like <laughs> chance, that's the way to do you it. No, we talked about it. We thought about wearing suits to this, but instead we decided to wear our you, Yeah, we you, did. We if did. I could jump into the excuse to wear a suit, I would, but I chose this. It just looks so good. How do we get it get again? This guy a lint roller. More of this. Jesus. You Come can on. Go to the website. What is this? You can buy it there, otknetwork.com. Isn't that awesome? Thank you so much for that information. That is really, amazing. I but hey, appreciate it. <laughs> let's get into the games. Oh. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. Let's talk Statue. about it. Oh, we know. Feel. We know. Well, the first game on that list was Scorchlands. And 
at first look, uh, it made me immediately think of a game called Dwarf Romantic, which I think is also, or potentially showing in this. I game. thought that as well. Uh, Dwarf Romantic, a game I personally love, that top down hexagon. Dwarf look. Romantic, very is cozy, great, very but nice it game. Needs a but point. then I looked, and it's clearly got a whole different take <laughs> yeah, on it. And it I, seems I like a game terrain game management for game. For an hour and um, 59 minutes. It's hard minutes. to fully know without and actually yeah, fully playing it. it. But you also have a character uh, that's running uh, around. Uh, I saw a talent rude. tree Shot. in there. I so it's, like it looks like a really fun game to kind of sit back, play on an iPad. Still play it on PC, which I played Dwarf Romantic on PC, so I'm sure it's the same. It doesn't have like a. But just a very different take on it and a whole lot of different it's just like aspects play styles do, do as well as you can and then like said. i love the fact it gives well, me the feeling of like uh, uh, okay, guys let's hear it I'm a, so you know the, you, you can't can get terraform. the highest score you can which you is terraform the moon is never like terraform. never been appealing it's to just me a, well, right. terraform sounds cool. Like, it does. It does sound cool. Guys, this isn't a competition. Yeah, it feels you like solitaire. Well, solitaire is an ending with lasers. You can win solitaire, and it you does remind me a lot of Dwarf Romantic as well. And I played a lot of that, and I beat a lot of that. I, it, and it, uh, at first look, it looks like Dwarf Romantic. It, it is. I think it's, it's very. But different. this is a, this is. <laughs> it is very yeah. different. But you're right. Colony management, terrain management. Mm -hmm. I see higher levels. I see like canyons. Are you so, good at that kind of stuff? No, I'm terrible at that game. Um, but you're terrible at a lot of games, Chance. dude. Stop, it's not the place for it. <laughs> but very excited for Scorchlands and happy to yeah, see Okay, let's talk about Project <laughs> Haven. Your thoughts? So, Project <laughs> Haven is it, it, I've personally never played XCOM, it's a game I've wanted to at least try, but it does remind me a lot of that. Um, but the key difference that I saw was instead of just telling you a percentage about whether you're gonna miss or land a shot, it actually zooms you into first person and you have that hip fire circle so you get to feel whether you're gonna miss or land a hit. And I thought that was a really cool take on it. And I know these kind of games are hard to do. Um, so you really gotta actually take in your environment and whether you can, you actually have line of sight on someone and it's very accurate with that zoom in. And I thought that was really cool. You got an arsenal of guns, you can customize the guns. Yeah, that's the thing about squad tactics games, you know, you get all of that and you get it all one to four players. A lot of line of sight going on there. And Chance, I'm thinking I would love to be on your squad of four. You know, I think we could chill till like two, six in the morning. And, and you see, there's the zoom in perspective. Yep. You can kind of see that circle. You can see your actual accuracy. A lot of the environment seems to be interactable too. I saw them push a dumpster. So it just looks like a really fun tactical turn-based shooter, which are very hard to pull off. And this game seems to have done it. Awesome, awesome, awesome. We have one more game to talk about. The Soul Walkers. Chance. Um, I'm not going to beat around the bush on the Soul Walkers. It looks a lot like TFT. Um, and keep in mind, that is a compliment in oh, itself, yeah. but they're going for a roguelike take on it, which seems really fun. I'm curious to see I, how they do the balancing. I, just, I um, wish I liked I the look of it better. fight in there. I yeah, saw the art you see the PVE, not, how does the difficulty? I see a Slay the Spire-esque kind of pathway choosing to pick from. A lot of roguelikes they like somehow made like so a I'm bunch curious of characters to see how this game's going boring. to play out, but... I mean, I don't it's, it, know yeah, a lot of games like that have done muted. a single-player yeah. auto battler like this before. Like it, it could, like it, they could turn up the, the saturation I, I'm or something. I'm gonna crack this open. It's an auto battler, so and it's combined with a roguelike, so you get to choose your upgrades. It does like it. Hope it works out. The whole middle of the screen is just like a green. Let it play out. I'm just thing. gonna chill. Yeah, we'll exactly. be hanging out like we always do, All the playing time. video games. Yeah, we love that. All right, well, I think I'm gonna be really good uh, at. That I don't I don't think so. Okay. What do yeah. you know what? Whatever, whatever. We're not going to talk about that. Okay, chat. Again, it is your turn, guys. Go into OTK hey, when the good, Discord it's pretty good. and vote for your favorite game in the Expo channel, okay? You guys have a say. It's awome Take some water, chat. Voice your opinion. It's going to be awesome. But before we take a Skatering, quick break, okay. let's check out Kaduman Hyper Auto Battlers and make sure to add it to your Steam wish yeah, list as well. That's good. Yeah, you're fine. You're good. No sugar gator. Cool. By the way, thanks to, uh, oh, well, hold on. Thanks to OTK for sponsoring the last hour of oh, God, the stream. 
You know what I want, JB? This is the OTK Expo. Like I, 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 I don't want... Shut up, Zeke. This is the OTK Game Expo. Uh, you can find it right now on twitch.tv slash Asmongold. And um, we're going to keep watching it. So, um, but yeah, thanks to them for sponsoring the last hour of the uh, of the stream there. Applause, if you please. Yeah, I really appreciate that. It was nice of them. Thank Even you gods right. need a way to pass the time. There we but go. But they have grown bored of the same. Let's just keep Zeke muted. <laughs> it was time for something new. And that's yeah. how it all began. As a simple <clears throat> game of cards. Yeah. These cards oh. were land. All right, so they just haven't made a game that you're followers. excited to collect. Placing things, trees and stone. Yeah, exactly. exactly. I, want, I want it to be more, it, like, I hate to use the word edgy, but I, I like it to be more like horror. So I feel like, you know, you should start edge fest. These I know. And you you know, like I think that would be a hit, though. If I, if I just picked, like, indie, indie titles that were coming out that I like, I think everybody would fucking jizz their pants. With any of them, that's rise it. I mean, above you their just adversaries and take their place at the head of the pantheon. Find out for yourself when the game comes to Steam Early Access. This Steam September. Early Access. That guy on the top right is steaming. <laughs> Guys, you just saw these doomed aisles. Make sure to add that to your Steam wish list. And uh, again, just like every other game, wishlist, wishlist, wishlist. There's probably a wishlist counter on several streams right now. I don't know, probably Forsen's or somebody else's. I know Forsen's probably jumping for joy constantly this whole time. But we're going to go to our next segment, and that's going to be platformers. All right. I like platformers. Cool. Our first game is from Cray Spirit. It's a Metroidvania uh -huh. game with bullet hell mechanics. There's some buzzwords for you guys. Is, bu is buzzword a buzzword at this point? I, I don't even know. It is? Okay. So anyway, our, our first game is Tevi. T-E-V-I. Tevi. Check it out. I think they're doing their Expo mods game better trailer. than last year. Uh, I, I would say overall, yeah. I think, I think honestly, they need more. I think they need to let them be themselves a bit more. Like a lot of times they're just kind of reading from sheets. And yeah. I and I think that the best parts of this show are where they when they break that. So um, yeah, I think I think like more guidelines and less scripts I think would be a little bit more funny. It's, it's there's times there's long periods when it doesn't feel very organic at all. Um, but they clearly have something with it. They, I mean, and, and I think if they just kind of they have all the the tools to make it be like really funny all the time, and I kind of hope they do. Yeah, Seer, Seer and Soda's interactions have been some of the best and also yeah. some of the worst. <laughs> like, it, you know, so it, it's like, I think giving them more freedom, I think it would be better for sure. <clears throat> Espen's doing a great job. Uh, I think I think he's keeping the pace up. He's not, they're not lingering on him too much. He's not cracking dumb jokes all the time. Like he's, he's, he's the guy keeping the pace up, which is awesome. I think that's working really yeah, well. That's great. Tons of gameplay, lots of games. Like that's super cool. There's ads in there, but they're not like super long or intrusive. So yeah, I, I would I would agree. The show is a step up from last year. So yeah, it's weird seeing Soda like be so he's always, not he's brand that risky. Last year too. Yeah, he's it's like it's the weird. One. Yeah, Soda's also grown up though. He has. Yeah. That's true. That's so. true. In a lot of ways. Yeah, dude. True. He's like 19 right now, by now, right? Oh, God, I think he's I think almost so, 20. Yeah. 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 <laughs> All right. That was Tevi. That was Tevi. Make sure to check that out on Steam. Uh, add that to your wishlist as well. They add changed him. Steam wish list. <laughs> he's Our now under the control of the JPEG. It's from Purple Ray Studio. It's true. And it's a couch co op 3D platformer. And it's called Bodhi Biteland Overclocked. Check it out. Wow. I will say I with all these uh, with all of these these showcases, what Espen's doing I feel is the best way for the main host to do it. Just like oh we're back here's next game enjoy it and then a whole bunch of give oh hey again okay here's next game enjoy it like that is the best way to do this. He's he's nailing it. Yeah, I think that's how I, I feel like that's how Xbox is gonna be tomorrow. I hope you're right. <laughs> I mean, it's usually always just Phil. Right? Yeah. He's just like, here's our next game. Here's our next. Do you think they're going to say anything game. about Redfall tomorrow? 
you think they're gonna like like say sorry or anything? I doubt it. I don't think they're gonna say sorry. I bet you. I, I mean, Phil apologized. A... He did. Phil publicly apologized. Yeah. I, want, I, I wonder. I wonder if they're gonna mention gonna... in a game pass, and that's it. Oh, watch them! Watch them announce an expansion. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh no. Oh no. I wonder. I really wonder what their plans are for that. Because their their whole thing with it is that we're gonna make it like a living game, quote unquote. I wonder if they're still gonna push it. It's gonna be. It's gonna be interesting to see. The new Redfall cash wish shop. Wishlist now, guys. Make sure to add that to huh. your Steam wish list again. Yeah. That was Bodhi. Yeah, my Lander chat's kind of right. The best thing Redfall the has going for it is the Golem and, uh, came out. That's our next game coming. Pretty correct. Is wow. actually from a studio called Team Ugly, which was our first name for OTK before we decided to go with something else. I wonder if they and, sent him uh, like a gift basket. Called Ugly. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, thanks. Okay. Yeah, maybe they'll announce Redfall new new uh, cash shop with uh, featuring NFTs. <laughs> I'm here for it. I'm, I'm totally here for it. Wow, look at this. <laughs> I've never heard of this game. Ugly? Mm. Reminds me of Braid. I guess it looks like a, a dried apple doll. He looks like that merchant from Zelda. <laughs> Beetle? Maybe? Is that the one with the red Thank nose? Thank you. I think so. I saw a lot of Pierce cosplaying as Beetle and it confused me. <laughs> God, this is very much brave. Yep, I was just thinking that, yep. This looks super cool. V, there's some V, 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 V. True. I'm doing it. I'm wishlisting that one. Yeah, that Oops. looks pretty cool. Damn it. Damn, dude. Okay. This year, too. Nice. I'm going to wishlist that one. Yep, that, one, that one's getting a list. That one's getting a list. Boop. An alcoholic. I love how they're team ugly and they're naming right. their that was game ugly. ugly. And if you guys I want to like give them a hug to your Steam wish list now as well. <laughs> We're going to go ahead and uh, swing it on over to Asmin, who is actually about to do an interview with the producer for Ugly. Eh. So I, uh, I have to do the interview for the game called Ugly. <laughs> what a coincidence. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, um, I kind of feel like a, a, you know, kind of a jackass because their their name is uh, Team don't, Ugly. But I'd like to welcome. Don't stop talking uh, if someone's in your IFB. To, uh, to keep, the keep show. Going. Keep, uh, keep thank chatting. you very much for coming on. I appreciate it. How you doing? You're welcome. I'm very happy to be here and also very excited. Well, the fact is that I don't know if this excitement or maybe anxiety, <laughs> but. Uh, the fact is that I'm very happy here. Yeah, I mean, I think that the game, I mean, I, I, I have to say, like, for me, I would understand, like, what my, um, like, why, what my inspiration for making a game like this would be. But I was actually curious what what drove your team to make Ugly you and, keep uh, you know, what yeah. inspired you to make the game. Yeah, sure. I think that uh, one part that we have in common is that we have a lot of ugliness inside Being of our hearts. Common, I Definitely um, have that. We in are common, like 10 people on oh, and we met I can't keep in a in working space. And the idea started to develop, to develop like 10 years ago in the hand of Gerard Singerlin, uh, writing his ideas in a very sad napkin in the saddest bars from Barcelona. So the idea came up um, from the innovative mechanic, which is a mirror that needs to reflect the, the main character. And from this mechanic, it comes up all the all the imaginary, all the narrative and all the stuff surrounding. Wow, I mean, yeah, I think that the, the narrative <laughs> of the game and the way that it's designed, and especially like, the, I, I really like the art style of the game because uh, it, it's really interesting whenever you see a type of game that really kind of uh, takes an idea that's so unique and especially like an aesthetic that is, you know, very intentionally, uh, you know, not necessarily pleasing and they make an art style that's really impressive. So I, I really like that as well. <laughs> Yeah, thank you so much. The fact is that as I'm the producer, I am also quite sad because it's quite expensive to make this kind of art yeah. because we don't, I don't know, I think that we are silly because we don't reuse 
assets uh, because yeah, he's like probably having a speaker issue in his ear level we, we we try to to make the opposite of the narrative which is very ugly okay so yeah you you make a very uh, you make a very beautiful game called ugly is that right <laughs> Yeah, okay. thank you so much. Great. Well, thank you very much for coming on the show. I really appreciate it. And again, you can add Ugly to your wish list on Steam. So uh, thank you very much, Rita. Bye-bye. Thank you so much. And uh, anyway, uh, before we go ahead and oh, we talk oh. about the, uh, the get games, the I would like to remind Starfield you all again that we do controller? have the 20... What? Mech PCs from <laughs> Starforge yeah, that, for that sale. They are going on. Uh, I think they're going to they're be on sale yeah. now. And as well, there's a five percent discount uh, coupon today for anything on StarforgeSystems.com. Oh. But oh, it's just, oh, you mean headphones, games, not a headset? No. Uh, Miskiff, which one reminds yeah. you the most yeah. of Jump yeah. King? <laughs> the answer is all of them, Asmin. They all remind me of Jump really? King. Really? I think that they are great platformers, but. The game that I'm very excited about oh, wow. uh, first is honestly the game Tebby. Uh, this, to me, is exactly what the Game Expo is all about. Yeah. Uh, Tebby, you know, it obviously looks like a little bit of Maple Story mixed with Jump King. I think we all can agree with that, with a little bit of Anime Girls. But it wasn't really... a little bit. I'm, I actually paid attention to every single character. Mm -hmm. I don't think a single one of the characters didn't either have cat ears or bunny ears. Yeah, and that's exactly what we need at the Game Expo. This is perfect game. It fits in perfectly with, you know, audiences <laughs> like Tectones. And what I love about it is the juggling and dash mechanics that go with it. Uh -huh. it very Tectone swift, is the gotcha which is really hard to do for some of these games. Um, it just Did he get fantastic. kicked out? Wasn't that where he was sitting last time? Uh, this game has a lot of things that I like. Uh, no, I like no, when games have the damage it. numbers on the screen. No, no, I mean, I think that's really he was big. on the couch a minute ago, wasn't he? There's going everywhere. There's oh. things oh. going on the screen. It looks really fun. Maybe. Visual novel elements. The art looks really nice. I think when it's a really I, cool When I started doing the, the Twitch hosting thing, this is the kind of game that everybody would be like, all right, you're the new, you get this one, new guy, and be like, fuck, I gotta go on stage and pretend I'm excited about this. Girls, and I was like, wow, Yeah, just got better. Better. Exactly. So it was a it's nice surprise. Super cute. Yes. One one other thing that's really shoes good on the about couch. Shoes on the couch. To get uh, as an indie developer is the music. I, I think the music in this game to me, uh, you could see this out of straight up a straight a uh, AAA studio. It's yeah, they own beautiful the music. I saw the want. chat was loving it before <laughs> as well. Uh, and honestly, for this side scroll, I think it'd be a fantastic platform. Yeah, I mean, I think this is the first time that I've ever seen a Metroidvania type platformer game that. Like, I mean, most of these really are catered towards about 30-year-old men that are into, you know, the old games that they have whenever they're growing up. What? And so it's interesting to see I feel a attacked. completely new perspective on it. However, I I'd like attacked. to talk also about the second game here, Body Biteland Overclocked. I, uh, I kind of like the idea of it. Originally, it reminded me a lot of kind of like Fall Guys with like the different jump mechanics where you're able to go to different areas and, you know, interact with other players. And I, I thought this game looked really, really nice. Of, uh, I think that's one thing that really impressed Astro me about World it a lot is like the, yeah, the fluidity Block. of gameplay that it had. And uh, that's something that to me is like a S tier value is the most important thing. Yeah very difficult to do in these type of platformers is to actually have a world that not only feels open but has a lot of things to do and one thing i would say about this game is there's a lot to do there's a lot of content throughout it uh there's very little downtime in this game which is great and overall the puzzles look really exciting and i'm excited to play it it reminds me a lot of uh one of my favorite platformers mario 64. i really like the worlds that they're in it the, f the platforms they're very responsive, it's very interactive and engaging, like it's just fun to watch. You can see when you jump on things, there's things exploding everywhere, colors, all the projectiles, it's just very beautiful. It looks like a chaotic and fun game. I think it's nice that they were able to showcase a 3D platformer game, so uh, you get to see all different movement styles, and I agree with what you guys both said. I think this is really what the Game Expo is all about. <laughs> Asmund, does this remind you of like a little Ratchet and Clank? Yeah, I mean, like, I, well, back in the day, I used to play that all the time. Like, yeah, those original, like, PS1 and PS2 games, oh, my God. Yeah, they were some of my favorites. So uh, I really like this one a lot. And the last one, uh, I guess, you know, again, uh, I feel like I should probably be the one to start this discussion. Uh, ugly. Uh, very interesting game. I'll be honest, the first time that I saw it, it really caught my attention, especially in terms of, like, its style and just, like, the... Uh, it had, like, this, like type of melancholy ambience to it. And then to talk to the producer and have them 
you know, explain how they just made pretty much everything from scratch and they don't just reuse a lot of assets. I mean, I don't know. I've been playing a lot of AAA games recently and they don't even do that. Yeah, this game to me, uh, I think it's just a beautiful puzzle game. I'm very excited about it. Tips actually wrote in my, my notes that this game is a story about Miss Kiff CX lore, which is very interesting for Tips to say. Why do they keep um, but the art in this game looks because beautiful. I think we all can agree. It's something that stands out throughout this entire expo. Yourself. And I just yeah. love the horror atmosphere that it brings. It's really beautiful. And it's Ms. honestly very... Miz, 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 those, those are your notes? What? Tips wrote in your notes that? Yeah. Just wrote in my notes. Emmy, what do you think? <laughs> I love games like this that don't tell you the story. You just see it and figure it out as you go. Visual storytelling, I really appreciate games that do that. I find them really enjoyable to play. I really like the creative problem solving that you can see. There's some kind of like reflection mechanic. I think that's super cool. And the hand-drawn animation, especially on the bosses, it's really fluid and brings them to life. It's just gorgeous. Well, I mean, it's, it's ugly, but it's gorgeous. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I got chills watching the trailer. Like, I would definitely want to play this game. It just looks really, really interesting. And uh, I can't wait to see what it's more about. Yeah, I just, I really like the, uh, the the whole style of it. And just honestly, the, the game, the name of the game with the dude with the big nose, I don't know. I just think it's really funny. I'm going to be real. <laughs> so I, I liked it a lot. And guys, again, if you like any of these games and you want to vote for which game is going to win $25,000, head on over to discord.gg slash OTK network, and you're going to be able to vote on the game that you guys like the most. So before we go to a quick break, I'd like to introduce you guys to the next game. Towers of Fana. Is the audio super decent? I don't think so. No, I don't think it is. That's usually because of better Twitch TV. I didn't know that. But yes, yeah. I have better Twitch TV. Would I ever plan or consider being on an event like this? Uh, probably not. I much prefer to watch them. Oh, here we go. Wandering Village. Yeah, these events are stressful as fuck. If you're yeah, and, and like... <laughs> It, it's kind of weird because you see like like that last interview segment was a good example like these guys have to walk the line between praising games and giving valid true feelings on it and it gets to the point where sometimes it just feels like noise yeah. um, which is kind of unfortunate you know not, not the strong point of the show so I, I yeah Yeah, yeah. Like every everything they've been saying is just super positive and bubbly, and you know, it's like I think. Well, I, I think a big thing is understanding who the show is for. Yeah, hundred percent. Like, is the show Welcome for, back, for people who don't know who OTK village. are? One second. You guys can get Wandering Village on Steam now for twenty percent off. Or is it for just so, gamers? Going on to our next segment. So you know, that's kind of you a know, thing. There's a lot of times where you know you, you get the crew together, you got you got your friends here with you, and you got a whole other segment coming up called. Party games. Guys? Who's the guy in the top left? What? Uh, okay, tips, well, it's okay, because sometimes people don't show up to the party, and uh, it's okay, it's gonna be good, because some of these games are online party games, too. Like, our next game, from Hat Games, Oh, that's Tecto? Is he a dad? No, I, I don't think that's Tecto. Oh, that's Tips Out? out. Yeah, Tips. What are you going to do about it? What are you going to do about it? Hmm. Nothing? Nothing? That's what most people will do about it. Or are you special? An outlier? One who might just... One who just might... 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 Buy it? 
by the game. Become king of the hat. Butterfly, smooth control, triple deep competition, spicy play, party chaos, local and online. Let's go. Arcade mode. And golf. In one. I I am so confused by this. I don't know what's going on. I think that's a dishwasher, or maybe a lawn, maybe a laundry one. But uh, for now, it's out on Steam Early Access. Of the hat. Okay. Washing Machine Junior's here. All right, guys, that was King of the Hat. It's available on Steam Early Access right now if you guys want to check it out. Our next game coming up is from Bite Parrot, and it's a, uh, it's a fun snowboarding game. I was a huge fan of SX Tricky growing up, so this next game might uh, appeal to some of you guys who are into that sort of thing. Slope Crashers. Oh, wow. Okay. So our guys are going to play a game of Slope Crashers right now on the couch. So, Asmin, you want to go ahead and lead them? Uh, yeah, I mean, whenever we're ready to go, I'm ready to play. Um, I, I'm going to be honest, I the last time I played a game like this, I was about 11 or 12, and I'm pretty sure it's going to show. So I'm, I'm a little bit nervous, why didn't, why didn't but uh, you know, I think we're ready to play, and, and we did it. one test run. I mean, and I, I, I wonder if this is like sponsored myself. I'm going to be totally honest. I wonder honest. if they're paying for this. I, I actually, it was guess, so bad they are. that I was losing so bad. I actually claimed that I was that? one of the other players yes, because I, I didn't think... want to acknowledge how bad no, I, I really that, was. That's like a mad so, uh, cat. Yeah, that's the position. Oh, I bet in. you those again, are Razor. Guys, you can Razor. add this yeah. to your yeah, wish list on Steam. But in just a couple minutes here, we're actually going to to get into the game and actually play it ourselves. You guys excited? Yeah, it looks cute. I'm very excited. This game is super fun. Who actually, uh, who won last time? It was probably me. No, actually, I, it was me. Well, I mean, uh, I don't know about no, that. It was, it was literally me, but all right. <laughs> no, let, let the record be shown that you're playing the best character, and I just feel like that's kind of ridiculous, and I'm playing the worst. So if I win, you should be very embarrassed. Okay, I'll keep that in mind. Good. Dick tone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm done talking Elite? shit. Oh, yeah, sorry, I was Yeah, okay, all right, cool. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, I'm pretty sure, uh, you know, That's I'll win like this it. time, right? Because I spent a lot yeah. of time going uh, the opposite way around the track whenever yeah. I was playing, because I just didn't really know anything. Well, now you and know the map, so there's no excuse. You'll win getting glass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, all right, are we ready to start this? Yeah! Like, can we start the game? All right, yeah, all right. Press <laughs> X whenever y'all ready. Well, let, let's go ahead and do it. So, basically, I, uh, I get to be the parrot. Okay, right. uh, let's see here. And I think that I'm, I'm good to go, I'm ready. Yeah, we're waiting on Lemur here, player four. It's probably extra Emily. Did you press the A button? You the Lemur? There yes. it is. Sorry. <laughs> oh, yay, let's get into it. Mm -hmm. Got she, it. She show, hey, so before you guys game. get started real quick, yeah. or not. Uh, go this is actually like a demo the for the pants. game that is available right now, chat. You guys can go and yep. you guys can check out the demo right now and they're gonna get it loaded up right here. here. Oh boy, all right, here we go. Who's the cutest? Yo, Asma, Me. Press A, Asma. Sure. There you go. Press it again. Let's go. Woo! Okay. We're not getting uh. Asma, oh, just cam? don't lose to the bots what? and it's fine. <laughs> no, no, watch, watch, bro. Like, I'm gonna pop off. There it is. Winner gets a thousand dollars. Nope, that's not true. <laughs> Unless I win, then it's two thousand. Gotta change camera and just no, a smooch. I'm doing sick combos. Wee! I'm around with pressure buttons. Well, I think it's rigged. I think the game's rigged. Eighth place? Uh, oh, no. hilarious. Wait, how? I thought there was only four people. How am I in eighth place? How's it look back there? Because there's bots. Uh, where am I going? <laughs> Wee! How am I, I, I want to be able to fly? Bro. 
Dude, as when you're getting railed by bots, man. Wait, who? No, no, I'm not. I'm beating one of them. Oh no! Bob, I'm beating one of them. Oh, no, I, I think Asmund goes looking at the right, wrong right, screen. All right, all right. No, 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 no. We're good. We're good. We're good. <laughs> yeah, he's the I right think here. he's playing the Does wrong like, screen. I used to play. This is where I would unplug other people's controller. Did this remind you of TCP? Oh my god. Uh, uh, okay. I think god, he's I definitely looking at the wrong screen. Wait, who's, no who's top left and bottom oh, right? God, yeah, whoever's in top left is really good. Okay, so who's who's bottom right? <laughs> My hearing is twice. Who's I'm bottom right? Is that bad? Oh, this guy's crazy. That's that's been talking. Okay. Oh, I just pooped some. Why stones. is Asmund yeah, just constantly turning? Ew! Am I winning? Mud on the ground. Am I winning? Nah, but whoever's in top left is probably super smart and really good at this game. Uh, uh, right and probably really oh, handsome. Did you play this off screen, man? Are you kidding me? No, dude, I guarantee you Tectone played this for like eight hours off. I guarantee you. I <laughs> guarantee you. And dude, check his Steam profile. I mean, no, no I'm tell I know Tectone, this guy, dude. I swear, dude. What do you mean? A hundred percent, dude. No. A hundred percent chance this guy wants God given natural talent, baby. I'm a gamer. Unbelievable, dude. I don't even know what I'm doing. I threw a snowman at somebody. <laughs> Wait, I think the snowman hit me. I hit myself with my own attack. <laughs> That's impressive. At least I'm not an ape. <laughs> I agree. Uh, guys, I'm, I'm about to. I'm about to. It's like back. a whimper. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna I'm come back real quick. Watch. Sure. Uh. Okay. Um. I like how pretty okay. the map is. It's very calming. Oh hey, I finished. Are you guys still playing or Wait, what's going what? on? Oh, that's, oh, okay. That's crazy. Don't. No, no. I'm on my way. I'm, what? He's I'm attacking me! Yeah, it's real Get crazy, off. right? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. What the? What's going on, huh? No. Oh, my God. Asmund almost beat me. Wait, wait. Beat. I finished it. I, I beat it. Let's go, dude. I finished it. Whoa. Oh, my God. I can't believe it. That uh, that didn't even happen last time. I'm going to be totally honest. I uh, it, it, it was so bad that the game eventually just, like, it said time out or, like, time out. <laughs> oh, gosh. Like that. Yeah. yeah. It's, like, basically better like next time, idiot. So anyway, <laughs> yes, uh, please guys, uh, make sure to add the game to your wish list it, and we'll take it back on over to S fan to uh, continue the party games. Watching my stream, right? Yeah. Okay, right. so I mean, uh, like like Asmund said, of course, you guys can <laughs> oh, add to your wish list now. On. There's a demo available. That's that's what they were just playing. And uh, we do have our next game coming yeah. up, which again will probably be a game that Tectone practices off stream, just like he clearly did for Slope Crashers. <laughs> it's, it's from Asafa Guys LLC, and the game is called Asafa Guys. No, I honestly would have got up in the middle and tried to take somebody else's controller away. <laughs> All right, here we go. Now I'm. Here's a video ass video game. Suffer guys. Oh, uh, um, oh God. This is, this is, there was a goofy ass game where you played like a lump of human with only with like two arms and it was a co-op game where you, each one of you would control an arm. I have no idea. I hope they interviewed the dev for this. I hope he has a really long neck. <laughs> That'd be so good. If he's just like That's got a freakishly yes. long neck and he's like, so, uh, I, I think this is a game meant for a specific type of person. Just goes on to talk about his huge neck. Oh, okay. Uh, that was a sofa, guys. That was, uh, that was interesting. All right, it's looking. And, uh, long as well. That was very long. Uh, guys, you guys can go to <laughs> Asafa Guys on Steam and Epic, actually. And you can go to asafaguys.com and check out all your latest neck-worthy news. Uh, so, yeah, what did you guys think over at the uh, over on the stage, Asmund? Well, uh, I'm going to have to just take a couple of minutes to really gather my thoughts on Asafa Guys. <laughs> really got to just sit down and, and really process everything that I just went through. So let's talk first about King of the Hat. What would you guys think about that? You wanna go first, Techie? Yeah, no, you got it. I can start. 
Uh, Let me get my I'm notes. a sucker for games with pixel yeah, art. Yeah, I he's just, reaching over for his I notes, right? It. I think it yeah, looks great. Uh, I really like the art style. It looks like a chaotic, fun fighting game. One of the first rules Some of improv. Smash elements, uh, clear is, uh, visuals. Don't put and it somebody has a, else on the a spot. Fat cat. This looks like the kind <laughs> of game yourself. that you would play with your Discord friends over like, and over again. It looks like a lot of fun. Yeah. I think it could be like a washing machine character or something. I actually never used those, so now I can become what I'm not. It's perfect. Oh wait, no, I <laughs> like extra right? Emily doesn't look at any of her notes and she's just like the washing machine Yay! is the dirty I'm just happy laundry. to be here. Oh, that's always piling up on my chair. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's the same thing, but it's like it used to be on the chair and then it was on the bed, then there was so much on the bed and Amen. on the chair I had to put it all out into the garage and exactly. it's like now it's a, it's a whole different situation. Yeah. So, uh, also, guys, I uh, forgot to mention, I apologize, that we are doing a super giveaway. What? what? That's right. Are you kidding? That's right. What does that even mean? Uh, Three Voyager Creator Elite PCs, OTK merch, $100 vouchers on Twitter right now. There you guys go. It's a super giveaway. Oh, yeah, you also get a Razer Gaming Chair. Those are what? the ones that I have. Look at that. Yep, you got the link right in the chat. Make sure to follow that. You get one of these new PCs, play some of these new games that we're showing or some of the new games that you guys are all excited for as well. So please, guys, go ahead and, uh, and, and give that a click. Also, so we've got King of the Hat. Very interesting game. I liked it. But we also had the second game, Slope Crashers, which uh, I, I don't know. I think I think that at least agree, my bro, controller no, no. was or, rigged. Bro, uh, bro, 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 bro. Uh, what did you think of the game? Well, Protect as a natural variety gamer, song. still not yeah, understanding that. why I'm not on the panel up there, but it is what it is. Right. Uh, the game just makes Ooh, sense. Uh, the game gives me the vibes of a game that Miz Kip would play for a thousand hours off stream, then invite his friends over, and then if his friends won, then he would uh, be upset and then cry and then quit the game and say that they're bad people and never invite them on stream again. Uh, but I feel like the game is a very good modern take on the, uh, you know, casual party racer, and uh, I think it's pretty dang good, Asman. I definitely agree. Uh, what do you What do you guys think? Did you guys enjoy playing it? Yeah, I enjoyed playing it. And this, the racing actually isn't the only mode in the game. There's also a stunt mode where you can do flips and stuff and accrue points, and that one's pretty fun too. I wish we got to try that one as well. But people can try that themselves if they would like. It's a It's a pretty cool game. Yeah, uh, looking at this trailer, it makes me want to practice the game and try to do some cool flips like they're doing because I was just wiggling left and right, but I feel like this game has a lot of replayability for me, so it was really fun to play. Yeah, it, uh, it looks like another game that Mizcape would probably have a worse PB than Lakar yet. Mmm, you're Man. right. Man. The one time he's not on the stage, you just got to get them all out, huh? Yeah. Is that right? Okay. All right. Yeah, I see how it is. All right. Well, we have one more game, and uh, this last one, um, Esophag. <laughs> what? So, basically, uh, wow. Uh, pretty much like so. What I was. Why didn't they play this? Like, I guess so. I know, right? Okay. This would have been you're hilarious. Whole, I mean, like you're like one of. Yeah, it's like a, it's like Mount Your Friends, but even creepier. Uh, cause, cause they have like a, like the long. No, this, the sounds this, this game makes. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, yeah they like yeah. game developer yeah, look at that. game. Uh, wow. Uh, so, I think it's interesting that this a, game you have to work together like rather than versus each other, like, so you kind of have oh, to go shit. towards a common goal with your this very long necks. It's very nice. Yeah, I don't really know what's going on, but I'm definitely uncomfortable when I watch it. Yeah, that when is. I get the uh, the Discord gang together, I, when we're playing a party game, I want to be laughing until my stomach hurts, and this looks like the perfect game for that. Mm -hmm. mm. I actually it's, think uh, my friends was you, that. You guys know giraffes actually happened. fight like that in real life, where they just like, like hit each oh, other with their necks. This is hilarious. Oh yes. Yeah, oh, so yeah. I just I just think of that I just think it's funny. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna be on. I think it's funny. So guys, listen. If you want to vote on one of these three games. Discord.gg slash OTK Network. And you guys will have your chance to uh, go ahead and uh, vote on one of these games. And uh, we also have, uh, you know, in this, uh, in today, we, uh, we did say that we would have quite a bit of an announcement. And, uh, you ready? Where are we doing it? Yeah, are we ready? Is it time? Oh, it's time. <laughs> you hear mom Go saying, going, yeah, it's time. <laughs> World premiere. First impression that a game. game makes on the audience is far and away the most ah, important. Ah, here I it is. With game publishing today, what type of things OTK like game like publishing. I don't know the fact that like, yep. maybe every other game has to come out with an well, apology, DLC, measure. and they thought maybe 10 days afterwards of the release. We've seen plenty of times, especially recently, where games have come out because they need to come out by a certain time and they are not ready. One of the things I'm not super fond of with publishing today is 
Uh, a lot of creativity is sometimes taken out of the control of the devs and placed into the hands of the publisher. It's pretty predatory how things work between publishers and developers today. A lot of the times, deals are not very equitable for the indie developer. I think the most important one is being aligned with the vision of what the creators are trying to make. Mad Mushroom is a publishing company that is going to be a little different from other publishing companies. We made Mad Mushroom to kind of cut out the middleman and really give much better offers to these developers. One thing that we really want to do with Mad Mushroom is make sure that the creative vision and the overall final destination of the game is what is the it developers only these have in mind. Five Mad Mushroom, unlike a lot of other publishers, we have access to marketing tools because we are streamers. We can push games huh. organically. We can show the game in a way that's, you know, just people having fun. A lot of marketing feels like a bit detached and it might not catch people's attention. If you can build an authentic relationship with your players and with the community and through the creators, it's critical. But beyond that, we're also looking to provide a number of other full suite publishing services, including quality assurance and feedback during development, localization services, live ops, platform relationships, financing, and more. Basically, There's all anything, sorts, well, I'll wait until they're done. Major publishers can do, Mad Mushroom can bring to the table and work with development teams to craft the right move forward and partnership that makes sense for them. All of us at OTK are gamers at heart. That's why we got into streaming. That's why we got into content creation. And in some cases, it's why we play games every single day. Risk of Rain 2 is a massive gem, probably my favorite game. Um, Slay the Spire, Hades, Gunfire Reborn, Terraria. I really like Nintendo games, that's probably my favorite. So I like speedrunning as well. Whether it's a small one developer game like Vampire Survivors or it's something that's massively like a multi-billion dollar game like World of Warcraft, I like all different types of games on the spectrum. You know, playing vanilla World of Warcraft, classic World of Warcraft uh, from, from years ago to Chrono Trigger, uh, Metal Gear Solid. Legend Legend of Zelda, pretty much all of them. So I grew up playing a lot of Warcraft 3, a lot of World of Warcraft. I've always played a lot of League of Legends. I also like RPG Maker games like Amori and Undertale. I think that they're really cool. I play these indie games all the time, all day, and I feel like relatability, understanding the space, making sure we're still in touch, understanding the foundation and what can really help an indie game, um, and what makes an indie game stand out and be better than the others, I think is very important. And we have a very strong understanding of that. Not to mention also getting a streamer's community involved. I think it's really great to be part of a company that helps indie developers really showcase their game. When we announced Project Honor at OTK's first Summer Game Expo, we got tens of thousands of new Twitter followers. We had hundreds of new applicants to the studio to work here. I think most indie game developers are very tight with community. That's part of what separates them and makes them so great is they do listen, they do take feedback. They don't have eight different emails they have to go through to make a change. They will make the change. So it's that direct conduit to the community that makes the relationship between indie devs and content creators so synergistic. Development process for games and publishing them, I mean, this is a multi-year process, so being able to be there the entire way through and understanding kind of how an audience <laughs> is going to adapt and react. I like how all their B-roll footage the is just them playing games. And see how <laughs> yeah. people will enjoy it and be able to predict that. I think that's like, a Yeah, it's a, that was a good move you did there. It was a great choice in Vampire Survivors. 15 years taking yeah. lists of games, and I go through and I find what's good and what's not good. And there are some games, good synergy. Uh, especially good synergy. like the indie games that are not published. My role, I would say, is to find those games and say, hey, this is a gem. This, this, is, this game is amazing. We should get this on there, a pedestal huh. and let everyone see it. Developers should work with Mad Mushroom if they're looking to truly collaborate with a publishing partner. It is not publishing of a decade ago or even five years ago. You are literally working hand in hand with influencers. Okay, I'm just going to throw this out, out there. Make your game as this is a brilliant as move by them to play, because not only can they invest in games they the like, that I love about but the then they can all so promote the absolute hell out of them. They can so they get OTK behind them. They can literally make 
successful really, games for me out of small niche good cool games right now which is because it yeah. really what all that's like every publisher's dream as lifelong so yeah, I mean, yeah. And people that like are this passionate is about this space it's exactly what Jesse to get into game development for this is on a different level than that dude Madam like this is I mean with how much viewers and eyes they have on them like this is same time elevating a this is still exactly what Jesse Cox hundreds of indie a lot of well it's what a lot of a lot of people IP Sure. or an excessive amount of the revenue that should truly go to who creates the game, the developer. If you're a developer, also I like their focus on just letting the, the game, game get done properly, which is good. GG. It's that not in their interest website. to release anything bad, right? Look on there. We have all of the rest of our information. If you're a game developer and you'd like to see your game be a reality, check it out. We're very passionate and we're very excited about what we're doing here. That's cool. Well, man. I'd, I'd, I'd love it cool. if they put their 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 split on Front Street, you know. Well, it wouldn't oh, be an OTK event if we didn't get a chance yeah. to announce a yeah. new we, company. I mean, <laughs> we have <laughs> Mad <laughs> Mushroom, our new gaming publishing company. I am extremely excited. Oh yeah, about that's a good this. point. They uh, also are the owners of Mystic for, Talent, I don't know, probably so like they can like filter deals for their the published products have down through they are in order, hundreds of thousands of audiences across all different platforms. And I actually think that you know, obviously, I could sit here and talk about it, and I'm sure I will for many hours in future weeks, but. But I'd actually like Maybe that to was the point of Mythic Ta oh. Let's have some of the people from our Mad Mushroom team really tell you about what's really going to happen with the uh, uh, with the company. Huh. Hi guys, uh, Chance here, and I'm joined with an incredible backgrounded team. We've got Mike Silbowitz, Chris Kaliki, and Tips Out Baby. Um, and we are so oh, excited baby. to talk to you guys about what's going on. I'm sure Tips is also just excited. Mm -hmm. Tips, how do you feel? Honestly, it's uh, it's incredible. Uh, we've been working on this, as Asman said, for quite some time. Um, as gamers, we've always It'll wanted be to, to see what project development and publishing presents an opportunity for us to elevate a lot of indie game devs, um, just like we do here at the Expo. So I'm super excited. I'm freaking nervous as hell, but you know we've got some incredible we're, people. We're all here. very nervous. Know, this, is a, right? this is a very big deal. We've been waiting a long time for this. Go on, sorry. For sure. Um, but yeah, we just wanted to uh, to obviously announce and introduce you guys to uh, some of the incredible individuals working behind the scenes to help make Mad Mushroom what it is. And uh, one of them is a good friend of mine, uh, Mike Silbowitz. I know he might be a new new face to you guys in the community, but he's been in the games industry for a long time. So just throw it over to you, Mike. Yeah, no, thank you. Yeah. Hey, everybody. Uh, Mike Silbowitz. Everyone calls me Sibs. Uh, I've been working in video games for two decades now at companies like Activision Blizzard, Square Enix, ArenaNet, NCSoft. Uh, Crafton, and I currently run my own consultancy where we help indie developers find their road Which to their community. It's the question, why, why is he no stuff. longer we working at those places? But Chris, he's we probably going to make a lot more money doing today. this. And you've been working with us for quite a while now. Uh, you want to tell us anything about that and how it's been? Yeah, yeah. Hi, everybody. Uh, Chris Kalaki from Notorious here today. Um, yeah, we've been working with OTK. You know, I... Um, I think I've told the story before, but before I, we even started working on the game, you know, we pitched it to you guys to kind of see what you would think. Yeah. And whether, like, you feel like it would resonate with the market and whether players would like that. And uh, that was huge for us. And I think that's, like, so part of what makes Mad Mushroom really, like, a cool prospect for a lot of indie studios is just to kind of, like, bounce ideas off of you guys and get your feedback and all of that. So really excited. I think it's such a great idea. I was telling tips for a long time, like... You guys should like consider something like that so <laughs> today's the day you know no for sure and it was really you know when we started working with chris and you know notorious studios we we really saw an opportunity to help you know a lot of indie devs out there um we know that the publishing space can sometimes be daunting for a new developer um, a lot of publishing contracts can be sometimes predatory or a little bit unfair as content creator backgrounds like we know that it's really important for the creators to be able to create and um, we think there's a lot of opportunities to help out indie devs without you know kind of implementing some of the questionable practices in the past so we're super excited it's been amazing working i with like Chris, how the water doesn't have logos to welcome mike onto the that's team that's a lost gamer Sibs, sub sponsorship say. right there um, man and come on yeah chance i Jeez. uh I just want to breathe out, dude. You <laughs> want a year and a half to announce this, sorry. Um, it, it, feels it, good. it is a breath of fresh air to finally yeah. get it out there. We've been working on this for such a long time. I know you've been. What am I munching on? I mean, contracts, calls, all the works of trying the behind the scenes stuff Cinnamon that just rolls. are exhausting, and it's it's out there. It's so out there. It is finally out, you know, done, I guess. Um, and we've got Mike here with us, we've got Chris, we've got a phenomenal background, a great team. Um, did we have any, like, 
ad reads? <laughs> <laughs> well, obviously, again, guys, welcome to the generation of Mad Mushroom. If you want to keep up with Mad Mushroom, all the exciting projects and announcements that we have in the coming weeks and months, definitely check us out. We're actually running an awesome, a super awesome, super giveaway, I think is what Asmongold called it a little bit earlier. And if you follow Mad Mushroom on Twitter, uh, just check out that giveaway. It'll show you all of our different socials. If you enter the giveaway, you'll be able to, you know, just keep track of, uh, of where we are in socials and what Mad Mushroom has coming. So again, super, super Agreed, excited Shadow. to be working with an amazing, amazing team at OTK. Always blessed to be here every single day. And I, I completely agree with, uh, with that statement. The guys on this panel and... Yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much all I got, Shane. I made the Mad Mushroom T-shirt though. I don't. Know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm still wearing the OTK one. Mine got ripped on the way here. I'm sorry. <laughs> but there's only so many say ways we can say that we are excited. We are serious about this. We've got a phenomenal team, and it's finally out there. We feel really good. Thank you guys for coming out, guys. Uh, up next, we have uh, Airborne Legacy for the next game. Check it out. Wait, Airborne Legacy? Is this one we just saw? I think it's Airborne Empire. Yeah. Of Stories tell of a time Oops. when the skies were lost. So first we note for the new publishing company, among the clouds. get the title right. So I, I know we it's a little... Got gathered oh. distance That's resources. first note. And we could All right. no longer explore All right. Let's go. vast horizons. <laughs> but we never lost that way. No. Our problem this does look awesome. Is survival. Now, I want to see like we must defend ourselves. Yeah, this, this yes. the gameplay. I don't know. I don't think so. Enemy. This this looks way too quick. Is there a demo out for this? Yeah. We must restore the oh no demo yet. Empire. Yeah, it looks super cool, man. Oh no, we, yeah, we saw this already, but we haven't seen the gameplay yet. But I'm definitely gonna be checking that one out. I think JP is too. This is like Hop Story. Or, uh... Oh, yeah, you guys are the same. Wait, what's this one? Uh, the Precinct. What kind of game is it? Uh, I need some backup here, dispatch. This? <laughs> I don't know what, whatever type of game this is. Top down. I think a cop simulator? Cop simulator game, yeah. This looks kind of cool. Uh, fake 13 for the first hour, yeah. Wow, it really is a cop simulator. You said it was called the Precinct, JP? Yeah. Uh, today I learned I don't know how to spell precinct. Oh, there it is. Okay, cool. <laughs> I'm going to wish this at. That looks fun. All right. Let's get a, a big round of applause for Soda Poppin, the first person to screw up a name in the expo. <laughs> it took almost, what, two hours, three hours in? So... Very good. It, it took a while, but yes, yeah, Soda please. was the first person to screw up a name. That was Airborne Empire and The Precinct. So good make catch. sure to add those mm -hmm. to your Steam wish list now. And uh, we're going to go on to our next segment. Shooters. How long is this? Uh, over two hours from the looks of it. Yeah, I think last year it was around two and a half. Yeah. So our first game coming up today is a game by Replicant D6. It is a retro style shooter inspired by uh, classic uh, console shooters. So you guys are gonna wanna check this out. This game is called Agent. <laughs> Agent. <laughs> Wait. Oh my God, it's Goldeneye. Wow. Freaking Goldeneye. I wonder what, what they mean by immersive in this context. Nobody plays odd job. Wow, that poor guy it's just got shot by like five people at once. But yes, paintball mode will be on. Oh, it better be. This is 100% golden, I do. 
Agent 64. <laughs> wow. Spies never die. Yeah. All right, that was Agent 64, Spies Never Die. I think that game has a, a map editor, too, like a map maker. I'm pretty sure, I'm not sure if it showed that in the trailer or not. It was uh, moving around the studio. But our next game coming up is by Simon Fredholm, and it is a rhythm shooter where you can actually maximize the amount of damage you do by shooting to the beat. That game's called Robo Beat. Okay, okay, pretty, pretty common thing these days. So you're saying I could put American Pie in the in the game and shoot people to that? Wait, isn't Harris Heller a YouTuber? Am I thinking the right guy? Yeah, 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 yeah. I see him on Twitter all the time. That's cool. <laughs> Usually I shoot after I beat, but. I'm going to play the entire Shrek movie soundtrack. Guys, that was, uh, was Robo Bean, <laughs> and you can play the demo at the June Steam Next Fest. So you guys are going to want to check that out. That demo is going to be here very soon. Our next game coming up is a game from Hellforge Studios, where you're actually going to use an arsenal of weapons to be able to annihilate the swarm. It's a retro-inspired shooter. Nice. That game is called Exocide. Man. Always good to annihilate the swarm. I had to be told this, and I think he might need someone to put a friendly hand on his shoulder and go like, you're swaying, dude. Oh, he's got the sways. Oh, is that a thing? Yeah. That's a host thing? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. It's an uh, anxious tick. At least it was for me. Oh, yeah. Mine too. No, I remember watching your one of your first interviews, JP. Yeah. I was like, oh, but has got ago. the sways. <laughs> <laughs> That's a Apogee? Is that it? Like the old game? Like old Apogee? Oh my god. No, it says Hellforge Studios in the bottom. Yeah, I wonder why it said Apogee. <laughs> You're fighting a helicopter in like an underground parking deck. It's amazing. It's not even holding the gun, that's incredible. Kind of nuts. Oh, he was holding the ammo? Is that what he was doing? So it was like over his arm? Okay. Cool. I like it. It's like, okay. Oh, wow. That's a big gun. That's a big gun. All right. That was Exocide. You can make sure to add that to your Steam wishlist now if you want. And uh, we're going to go ahead and actually throw that back up to our Variety Gaming desk to discuss. Nick. What did you guys think? Thank you, s -Fan. Um, I'm actually super excited that we get to talk about shooters, but before we talk about shooters, there's one thing I have to mention, guys. The merch, it's on sale right now. Check it out. Look at these amazing 
pieces of merch. Uh, we're wearing them here in the, in, the, in the studio. We all look better than we normally do. I just, I am so comfortable. I just can't express enough. You've been uh, talking about it the whole time, too. I can't, ex- you, I, I can't talk about you're it. You're like, merch, merch, like, I don't merch. even want to talk about the merch. I just want to talk about merch. how comfortable I am in merch. Yeah. merch. Except I just need you to talk a little bit less, like a oh. lot, a little bit less. Okay, actually. that's, that's yeah. great. Okay, guys, otknetwork.com. Make sure you guys go there to check out the merch if you're interested. It's awesome. It's comfortable. Anyways, let's get into shooters. I'm glad that we are talking about shooters because we are the best shooters in OTK. Most of them down there couldn't even get out of bronze if they wanted to in any shooting game, but we were the best. Chance? Um, well, you know, let's jump into Spies Never Die. Let's now, I mean, clearly off the bat, you look at that game and you instantly think the Nintendo 64 007 GoldenEye game. Yes. Um, it's, it's clearly you know, going for that vibe, look, and pretty much most everything. <laughs> but it's going to be cool to see that game revived pretty much like in a new everything. setting and just overall revived. Um, I think the biggest highlight to come out of this is, you know, next generation AI. Mm-hmm. Um, that's one big thing, but mostly... Because we see that guy gym. right there. <laughs> yep. um, so replayability might be unique and cool, and I'm really curious to see how that comes out. I grew up on GoldenEye. We're talking Friday, eating pizza. I just realized there's no, like... Four controllers. You there's no crosshair on the blocky, screen. Uh, uh, the what? Guns, proximity no mines there on the screen in the game. Slappers only. No. I hope that's there. It's like they, they reload the guns. They got the animations. Except when like, you're aiming like that. You got the, oh, there the it is. clunky yeah. uh, face mapped AI characters. When's the last time you played Goldeneye? Um, that's a really oh. good question, Chance. Oh. Uh, it is, I will say it is something. Can you just bless there. that? I just I was saw there. right there. I was going <laughs> to yeah. ask. I'm yeah. wondering if their aiming is going to be similar to how it was back then. And it looks like it is. It is an experience going back to that. It's. I'm not going to say good or bad. It's so the, the way you aim is just like on the N64 as well. You hold down that you hold down that aim button, and then you kind of like move the crosshair around. You it, it's looking like it's got that auto aiming that Goldeneye used to have as well. So the gameplay is going to feel somewhat the same. Obviously, a graphics. You update. might need auto aim. I don't really need that. Okay. Um, I'm just generally good at that stuff. Okay. So okay. So you're going to do the whole thing where you hold down the the crosshair and your character doesn't turn, but the the yeah. gun does. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool, Seer. Um, <laughs> what do you have to say about uh, it? You, know, you really yeah, actually I'm really a lot curious. What do I have to say about yeah. this yeah, game? I'm curious. You ready? Yeah. Here we I'm go, I'm excited chat. to try it out. Okay, guys, let's <laughs> talk about... Would you say you'd put that on your wish list? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> that's going straight on my wish list. I can't wait to go home, play this game, and be a lot better like than you said, that's going so straight up excited. my okay. wish list. <laughs> um, either way, let's check out the next game. Robo Beat Chance. Robo Beat. I mean, that's it's a rhythm game. Uh, there's been a handful of them that have come out. Um, I forget the name of the one I'm thinking of, but it's clearly a lot more metal. Yeah, uh, hell, music shooter five thousand. The hell game. That's not it. Um, but this game, <laughs> it, it's not locking itself into the genre of just metal. It Hellsinger. seems like it has there we a go. Metal large Hellsinger. variety of music. Yep. And instead of it being just blood and guts everywhere, we've got a lot more colorful teal, green, and Explosion or colors, that BPM I guess, or game ever come out? Um, which is an interesting one? take on it. And Bullets per minute you know, or whatever. Cool see the variety. Yeah, I, well, I don't know I, if it came out fully, but I remember playing it. Nice. I played a little bit. There's of it, tons of guns and gunplay, and it seems like a lot of guns built around yeah, the fact like that it is a rhythm game. That's yeah. Like the release date September 15, 2020. So yeah, which one had the Troy Baker? That was Metal Hellsinger. If you saw that person open the file. I'm going to tell you right now, I will not be able and that to that one was uh, last year. I have zero rhythm. Yeah. Well, um, you have zero, like, skill, so. Um, and, dude, this is this is oh, sick. Man. It looks like you can actually switch songs mid-shoot fast, too. You're like, da 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 swap it. I'm curious if you can, like, use that in the gameplay. Like, hey, I want to use the machine gun, so you look at, you know, more beat. I don't know. I'm terrible at rhythm games, but I know there's a massive fan base for this type oh, of yeah, game, okay. and I'm I'm sure they'll all be excited for another Do you think Shroud will play this game? Huh? Do you think Shroud will play this game? No. I don't think so. <laughs> um, absolutely. And honestly, <laughs> even if he, if he did, I would be a lot better than Shroud at this game. You clip. are a lot better yeah. than Shroud at this Let's yeah. jump into the next game. Let's, ju- let's jump into the next one. Chance, take it away. The next game we got on our list here, Exocide. Not a rhythm game, just a, a shooter. Is but the amount of gun variety that this game seems to have is way over the top. I mean, even the guns in the top right and the top left, that seems to be their really unique area here. Um, 
I, I'm not even sure how those work. Are those like triggers? I have no idea. Um, we've got mini guns. I think the main thing that this game needs to really capture and get is the feel of the gun in a game like this. And I saw some shotgun blasting. It really made you feel like you were blasting someone in half, which is really important to capture. It's a good feeling. Yeah, they it got, really truly yeah. is. They've got Waiting a for the steam reviews. You see a I liked it. Trout didn't. You see, you know, your basic <laughs> AI just running at you. The people just to clear out of the way. Sliding mechanics. I'm looking at right now. So. It's gonna be a really fun, it's gonna feel good to play it. A little bit of the information that I got while doing my research. Yeah. So you can either wield four weapons or what they should at the end, one huge gun. So you can either choose one or the other. And you know, as a Dark Wait, Souls- Wait, read that again? You get one huge, so you can either have four this. guns or you have one huge gun. They showed it at the end of the trailer. He was like, I don't, I don't know if that's- That is true. I think that is just one, big shot you can do they were like kind of joking at the end there i don't think you just have one bullet no that is it. a thing no there's too many enemies for one someone bullet. here did the this guy's chance. great we need to get lyric in here and replace you because this guy <laughs> no idea what he's talking about shut the hell up God. i love other name uh, dropping way, this game looks so fun. it's got a large variety <laughs> it's got a lot of unique bosses a lot of unique weapons and it, it seems like it's capturing the actual feel of the guns and a lot of you know fun quirky other stuff in don't, say that. <laughs> okay. don't say that all right, all right. Well, guys, that is the shooter category. And yeah, at chat, least this bender feels a little Once more again, natural. Don't forget, yeah, you can like go it. into the OTK Discord. I will right say, I don't and vote for your favorite. Game. I don't. It is in the see, like, OTK. They're really. It feels like they're selling channel, the, game. the expo voting I don't feel channel. like they need the. Do, can, can is I that say, helping or hurting? Uh, what do, you guys uh, think? do I say back to S fan? We do not say that. <laughs> Because before we do that, depends what they're going for, I guess. We're going to take I mean, yeah. if they're publishing a quick them, break soon to, to be, check out right? my like, little maybe, universe. yeah, maybe. <laughs> and you can play. <laughs> I feel like they're not really talking about them. No. I feel you like they're trying to sell them. Dem demo, and yeah. you can add yeah. the which game I don't to really know if that's needed right now. Oh, my little universe. Walking the line, it sucks. Like we talked about a little bit, it sucks to walk the line between like they're getting paid to show these games, and they definitely want to do this again. I would imagine, especially since they're making their own publishing company. So like the more good things, and you know, more they try to sell it, it's the whole sponsored stream argument. Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, other I people will be like, oh, I'll, I'll throw it, throw them some money to advertise my game. It sucks, man, because like, if if you're being paid to do something, there's there's almost no way you can be 100% honest unless you are really into the game and you're gushing about it. And you really mean it. <laughs> I'm not saying they need to speak negatively about them. I just feel like sometimes it's a little positive for the sake of positivity and not because it's actually something they want to, they really they, they feel, you know? Right, and the, the, the force. It, it would help, it would help if the, if the, the developers were there, because then they have to talk about it solo, you know? With the developers there, they could ask questions and stuff like that and not, you know, Yeah, but even even the, the few, even the few interviews they've had, I feel have kind of shaken up the, the feel. Yeah. Uh, you got to match the energy in there. Yeah, yeah, hard to yeah. Do. It's an interesting question that they have to answer, right? That's There's not really a right answer to that. Is this an update? Oh, this is, this is the Dorf Romantic game that uh, Soto was talking about earlier, I think. Yeah. Oh, it says it right there in the bottom right. I guess that's cool, too. I think that's spelled wrong, though. At your owl. I always thought it was... Yeah, I thought it was... I don't even know how to spell it now. Like it. Dorfromantic, not Dorfronmantic. Really? <laughs> Wait yeah, because look in the in the right hand side, like Welcome the logo. Welcome back, everybody. Is you just saw Dorf Romantic. Oh, yeah. And you can actually get Dorf it Romantic was on Steam or Nintendo Switch oh, no. right now. Oh no! So, before we Lord of Ring Golem. First off, <laughs> by the way, see her anytime you want to say like back to S fan. That's always you're, you're always able to do that. Okay, don't worry. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, guys. Let's get into some, some simulations. Well, getting back to that, like the banter shit, like I think they could do without right, like guys, eighty percent of it. First game coming up for simulations. They just is, like come uh, back to them, say like, and it's actually two a sentences each, and then go back to another trailer or whatever. Infinite possibilities. Like, yeah. 
I mean, that, would, that would eliminate a part. lot of the, the superfluous, like, yeah. praise of a game. The best part of the banter is when they go off the, like, super kind of obviously scripted In stuff. So if they yeah. could figure out how to distill it to that, I feel like it would be, like, that would that would make the show gold. Oh, this yeah. might be pretty good. Of sheer incompetence. In this gridless sandbox. Oh, really? Oh, this looks cool. Engineer struggling with the fundamentals oh, this looks cool. Of physics. Okay, I'm gonna mention this you now. You must master the art of designing different types of structures, vehicles. Oh my God. And more. <laughs> Your intellect won't be the only thing tested. You'll need to show dexterity and athleticism if you have any. Designing structures is one thing. Ensuring they remain durable and functional is another. Or explore the limitless potential of our fully creative sandbox mode where you can build whatever you like. Build a castle or a questionably designed battering ram. <laughs> the only limitation is, well, you. Prepare to hear your favorite streamers claim that the reason they keep failing is for the content. So chat, wish list the engineer on the Asmin Gold today. Soda. Okay. Well. <laughs> that looks great. Here I am making fun of freaking soda for getting the name wrong. It's Engineera. My bad. I, I thought it was Engineer. Okay, unbelievable. And of course, guys, you can add it to your Steam wish list, but we also have a dev interview. Asmin's gonna interview the dev, so yeah, I screwed up the name and he's right freaking here, so. Unbelievable. Let's take it to Asmin. We got an interview. That's good. I get to talk to him. I, I, I got something to say. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's like, I, he made me fat. <laughs> can you believe that? <laughs> I can't. Oh, oh my God. No. <laughs> yeah. Well, anyway, we are on right now with the developer of the game, uh, Seelan Farrell. Uh, thank you uh, very much for your game. And uh, I, I, well, I honestly... I might act like I'm mad, but I, I am a little bit flattered. You put me in the trailer. I think it's very cool, man. So uh, thanks for coming yeah. on. I should have added a disclaimer that all characters depicted in the trailer are fictitious and any resemblance to uh, any real people is uh, purely coincidental, of course. Oh, that's fine. People call me fake all the time. So what caused you to make the uh, game? What got you into it? Uh, yeah, yeah, so... Uh, we're actually a two-person studio uh, called PT Turf, based in Scotland, uh, myself and uh, my good friend, uh, Neil McKenzie. And we're actually both full-time, uh, nine-to-five civil and structural engineers by trade. Oh, wow. Uh, the, whole game develop the whole game development journey is uh, effectively a passion project that we've been doing in our spare time uh, over the last number of years and has kind of snowballed into this awesome and fun project that's resulting in the video game called The Engineer. So, s fan, you did get it right. It is The Engineer. It's, oh, it's intentionally mis <laughs> It's, it's intentionally misspelled. So you, so you said it right the first time. Uh, yeah. I, I redact my apology. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> thank you, by the way. I was going to call it the enjoyer. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> really, really appreciate that. And uh, so let's say that you are an engineer. Would you have an advantage in this game? How close does this game follow real physics? So it's based off the Unreal Engine, which has a, a physics engine built into it. Uh -huh. So if there's any, if there's any structural or mechanical or any other engineers out there that do like finite element analysis, uh, it's not quite that advanced, but it does follow uh, fairly re uh, realistic physics. So in terms of if you compare it to like a building game or the building mechanics in like Fortnite or The Forest or Rust right. or anything like that, uh, in this game you actually build everything piece by piece, and every single piece has physics simulated in it so uh, yeah even that's the cool character man himself there's we almost pride ourselves in the fact that there's no animations in the game whatsoever the character is fully physics simulated so yeah if the character is walking across a plank the force of his weight is, is distributed through his feet and if he's too heavy on it for a specific uh, uh, member basically that'll crack and break so oh, cool. it's, it simulates physics uh, as real realistically as a game engine can effectively I, I think that's so cool. Yeah, I mean, just going out on a plank and just seeing it break because of the physics engine. Yeah, I, I think that would be amazing. So yeah, I mean, I, I, I honestly, okay, all right. Let me ask you this: How could I build a house in this game, or would it completely collapse? No. So, I, so when we're making the trailers and the funny TikToks and all that, I actually spend quite a bit of time deleting members so that it collapses in a funny way. Okay. Uh, it, the, the, the structures do actually hold up. It's not that hard to kind of build a house or build a castle or build 
basically a vehicle or whatever okay. you want. It's it's not that difficult, but depending on how big you build it, then obviously the you know it can collapse in funny ways as well. Well, I've had that happen in other games, and uh, to be honest, I've messed up Fortnite buildings before, so uh, I wouldn't put a lot of faith in myself. But uh, honestly, man, I'd like to say thank you so much for coming on the show and uh, well, being I part of this. Yeah. Yeah, no, th thanks for having us. It's, uh, it's, an, it's an absolute honor. I'm a big OTK fan, and uh, it's so strange actually being on the stream. But no, thanks again for having us, and, and congrats on the announcements of, of uh, Mad Mushroom. Uh, it's uh, really cool to see. Thanks a lot, man. I really appreciate it. I'm very glad now it's out in the open and everybody knows. So thank you so much. And I nice. uh, look forward to Applause playing your game. You it looks really cool. Thank yeah. you. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Energy levels were great there. Man, the way I looked in that trailer. Um, look good, man. I'm like, I'm going to have to go back and look at that, then look in the mirror, then go back and forth. And oh, my God. Uh, <laughs> Man, all right. Yes, the engineer, add it to your wish list. Back to you, S fan. All right, that was great. Uh, our next game is from Dragon Bear Studios, and it's actually a uh, game where you can team up with friends and you can build up your magical inn and you can actually go and adventure and take back your family's legacy. That game's called Enchanted. I guess the timing on the Switch is better now. Peggy three. Enchanted. <laughs> this looks like a game I've never played, but I definitely know of. Cook, serve, something? Is that right? Cook, serve, delicious. Is that, yeah. is that what this looks like? A little bit. Overcooked. There we go. Yeah. Like a fantasy overcooked. Is Coke is this really that different? I mean, you got little little right, cute guys. That was Enchanted, and you've uh, actually tunes added making Enchanted food, to your Steam right? wish list as well. Just like any kind other of a game genre. here at the Games Expo. If you guys are interested in something, you can go to Steam. You can add it to your wish list. I believe there's actually a list on Steam where all the games are going to be posted. So uh, you guys can go check that out. Our next game uh, okay. is from Milan Timchenko. And it's a game where you can actually go and build, customize, and uh, essentially run your own mall. That game's called Mall Craze. Makes sense. Think that, think that, think that checks out? Yeah. anymore god i haven't been to a mall in years holy shit i just thought about that last time i, I went to a like mall a... was because it had an apple store and that was the closest one i think outside the u.s and like japan they're pretty big still Oh man, you go all out in this, huh? Yeah, that's pretty intense. You design like every store and everything? That is a dead movie theater. guys that was mall craze so you can wish list that now and get ready for early access on september 19th i like that trailer it was nice it was cute it was cozy that was uh, super cool so uh let's go ahead and head on over to the stage we'll send it over to asmongold to talk about the games what you guys think 
Oh, I'm very excited. I, uh, I I liked a lot of the games. I thought they were, especially the engineer, I'll be honest, I thought that game was really, really cool. Uh, before, before we get into that, however, I do want to say that Guess what? We're doing another PC giveaway. What? We are giving away one of the mech PCs. So take a look. Uh, it's going to be on the, uh, I guess it's probably going to be on Twitter. You guys can participate in that giveaway. Again, you can see the specs on the screen as well as the PC itself. That is one of the one of 20 PCs. And uh, oh my God, I need to get one of those myself. That looks really, really nice. Wow. So uh, yep, there you go. Make sure to, uh, to join into that and uh, you can have a chance to get that pc so the first game that we saw the engineer um i think go this get is it a oh i'm good that uh i just got two like pcs I'm, I'm great <laughs> do a really really good job of making streamers look stupid <laughs> <laughs> it looks good i can't wait to build some random ass shit Hello? you know build it up for two hours break it accidentally lose my mind close my stream tell my chat i hate them then do it all again the next day exactly that sounds familiar exactly what i was thinking and this Hello? game is exactly what the game expo what? is all about Hello? i mean you know bridge builders like Poly are you on the phone do very complex physics everybody knows yeah, that pepperoni? but this game takes it to an absolutely <laughs> new level with having you cross the bridge yourself i think it makes it so much more enjoyable and exciting and also for chat to see it just seems like it's going to be a lot of fun um these similar physics remind me a lot of human falls flat which uh, was one of my favorite games when I was a small streamer. I loved playing it with my friends. What are you doing that game? Uh, it's you're fall basically flat, two blobs, and you have to try to direct yourself to try to get to you know specific goals using you know whether it's uh, blocks yeah. or any type of physics. And it's very exciting and fun to do with friends. Thank I think this you, game is going to be very similar with that, and I think the chat is going to absolutely love it. Emmy, what do you think? Yeah, this looks like the kind of game that's both fun to play and fun to watch. I really enjoy those uh, ragdoll mechanics. I think that they're really funny. It just looks like a, a really entertaining game. Yeah, I, I uh, that reminds <laughs> so me of dumb. playing Valheim. Broke his neck. Uh, very well. Yeah. Um, uh, second game, obviously Enchanted. We uh, already took a look at it. Uh, I'm gonna be honest. I've never really played a game like that before. I mean, like there, uh, you know, usually games like this. I think some of these you play with friends and stuff like that. So that kind of is like an immediate non-starter for me. <laughs> and uh, I, I look at a game like this. And uh, you guys ever played a game like it? Oh yeah. How, how's, how's something like this go? Yeah. There's yeah. played up, overcooked. This is super cute. I've never seen a cooking game like this with a, a medieval aesthetic or theme. I think that's super creative. No, uh, this game is super deceptive, okay? Because it is just yeah. like played up. It's gonna look super cute, super cozy. Say super again, motherfucker. Say it again. Each other there you. You're saying, oh, I need this on that. Super table. ain't no I country I've heard of. Table. And you realize communication is an issue. It's gonna look super cute, but I guarantee you, this game is gonna be super frustrating in the best way. Exactly, Tectone. And honestly. I oh think this God. game, I'm going to be laughing until my stomach hurts when I'm playing this game with my friends. I'm really excited about it. Um, it looks like it's going to have boss fights, too, which is extremely That's interesting honestly another, for a game uh, like this. Which is another hosting up and pitfall, you know, and I've found myself like into it, and one game. of my guests um, actually, I actually uh, um, can see myself playing the guy who played Radagast the uh, Brown, he was also Nikki, like and I think it's gonna be a lot of doctor, fun doctor who, I think. I just love the art style. I said awesome a couple times. And, and he I repeated it to me. Uh, oh, it's awesome, isn't it? I was like, yeah, it's awesome. And I could not stop Valorant. saying it. So, looks like a really fun game. I'm excited to see people Just play it. Just 30 times. Super awesome. Exciting. Oh, that's awesome. Very oh, that's awesome. Cool. And he would repeat it every time I said it. I do, I'm sure anybody that plays with me it. will it. never do that again. There's not a video so, of me saying Sean. the third Sean game, Mall Craze. I actually want to take a look at it and uh, just kind of look at kind of what the game has to offer. Uh, I actually, <laughs> I'm going to be honest. I, yeah, because I was casting for Day 9, so they put up a Sean counter. Oh, my God. I was always like one of those idiots that never cared at all about making like things look good, times and I would something. just stack them on top of each other. What? Yep, I was one of those people. And uh, sounds it's awesome. My house now, by the way. <laughs> and uh, so I, I take a look at this game, and it's like you've got all these fancy like door frames. It's like a nice yes, mall. Yes, Sylvester McCoy. Like thank you. Oh thank my you. God! Like uh, I. It, it, it was great. He was a great guest. In. You guys ever funny. played something like this before? Oh, yeah. I've played hundreds of hours of games like this. But this, yeah. this seems like a game where you boot up Twitch at 3 a.m. You see Thilvy Vale, Seer, Germa playing something like this. Real yeah. cozy vibes. I love stuff like this. And bringing, I don't think I've ever seen a simulation game try to bring a mall to life. You know, I've seen like roller coasters and stuff, but never a mall. This looks super <laughs> cool. I wonder if they're going to, I wonder, can you make like a hot topic and put like a bunch <laughs> of emo kids in yeah. the hot topic yeah. and, and like make it to where they don't let certain people into the building if they're not wearing enough black or something. Yeah. 
Well, oh, Emmy, you recently did that, didn't you? You went over to Hot Topic and dressed up like an emo, right? I did. I did. Do that in this game, too? Okay, yeah. I'll try it out. Looks fun. Yeah, this game looks very beautiful, Asma. I totally agree with you. I, it, you know, it reminds me a lot of Roller, t Roller Coaster Tycoon, uh, which I loved playing when I was a kid. I'd go to Hot Topic and buy that game there. I really enjoyed it with my Adventure Time lanyard. Uh, this game also, you know, Jur Jurassic Park Manager, if you guys ever played that, or Roar Shop Simulator. Very similar game to this. A lot of complex things in this mall, though, and I'm excited to see. Uh, I think it's going to be a great game for a streamer like Lyric. Um, you know, Skippy Pop and my One of the other well, things that's really, really, really difficult well to do I'm that you kind of want to shy away well. from is comparing the game you're advertising you to another game. Very so anyway, uh, uh, so if hard. you guys liked Sometimes. any of these games, if you thought these games were cool, go on over to discord.gg slash OTK network. No, it's, it's just, it's natural to do that. It's that natural to go like, this looks like a Souls game, this looks like a blog game, whatever. You want to like, not push to fund people to other titles the while you're describing you the title in front of you. I'd like to show you guys the next game, Odinfall. Don't most games, games give talking points? Uh, usually, yeah. And usually you, uh, like, I usually had cards when I would go up there, like on stage and stuff, I have cards, like outlining the, the points, the bullet points to make about the game and stuff like that. And uh, uh, the most valuable time as, a, as an interviewer is the five minutes, like they're not interviewing people obviously, but is the, but it's the five minutes before you go on stage and you, you talk to the person you're gonna interview and say and you ask them, what are the things you definitely want to get out into the public? Like the points you want, want me to make, questions you want me to ask, blah, blah, blah. That is Nuclear Throne. It looks yes. good, it's fun. It's not, dude, that music is fantastic. It's been played for nearly 1,500 years. Finally, got a new update. Chest two. Oh man, I remember the old ass battle chess. God, wait, 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 fun. wait, 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 wait. Are they controlling these characters? Yeah, it's a fighting. Huh. Checkmate showdown. So like, if knight takes bishop, maybe not. <laughs> That'd be fucking awesome. <laughs> Oh my cool. god, it's an actual fighting game. Like, how does that... That's actually really cool. I wonder cool. if, like, the king character is, like, unbalancedly stronger to than... defeat the one true king. Oh. Checkmate oh showdown. Secure closed beta access today. I am wishlisting that one. All right. Welcome back, everybody. You guys just saw Checkmate Showdown. You can wishlist what, that on Steam, the and they're actually, just like they mean. said there, that uh, means that it's good. They good can guarantee code. you closed yeah. beta yeah. access if you guys want to partake in that. So, but uh, it says rollback. I guess also, right if you're playing other that, players, that's Odinfall, that would, yeah. Which, again, you can wishlist that on oh, your Steam. So make sure to check that, those games out. Make sure to check out all the games. And make sure to check out these games coming up in our next category. Thank you. Just roguelikes. All right, our first game in a roguelike category is from a developer named Bitcake, and Bitcake is a four-player co-op shooter. Now is the time where we where we see if they know the difference between roguelike and roguelike. Check it. Well, they cut us, man, though. Because it took me a while to learn the difference. If you want to know the difference, roguelike with a K means you start all the way over. All you take back with you is knowledge. Roguelite, you get meta currency to spend on the upgrades like Dark Dungeon 2.
Or yeah, that's a that's a shorter way to say it, Hundy. Permadeath. Or All permadeath right. with that meta was atomic picnic. Atomic? You guys can go and add that to your Steam wish list now. And there's also a, uh, I believe there's a demo available as well. So you guys can check out Atomic Picnic. Next up, we have a game from Dino Boss, and it's actually an intense action roguelite that's inspired by 80s action. Jesus. Right. So you guys want to check that out? It's called Demon Spore. No, there was, uh, the, yeah. Rogue oh yeah, Lights we saw this. Rare. We saw this. Go ahead. Uh, just a little bit ago. This game looks cool. Huh. I don't know what it is about the graphic effects. It looks like it's on a VHS tape or something. Yeah. It looks awesome. There's like a like a screen shake to it as well. Very minor. Reminds me of Blight League from PoE. Is it Blight? The one with the uh, the tendrils. My yeah. of new woods. Yeah, no, I think that's right. I've done that mechanic a billion times, but I can not tell you if that's correct. I can tell you all the voice lines. <laughs> <laughs> like it's branching exile. Yeah, that looks odd. Time. Let me make sure I wish listed that one. All right, very cool. You guys can uh, you guys can wishlist that on Steam, yep. Demon Spore, or you can go to demonspore.com and even uh, get on their newsletter if you guys want to do that as well. Our next game coming up is from Flipfly, and it is an action-packed roguelite adventure, and it goes across land and space. And that's okay. going to be Whisker Squadron Survivor. It started at one, right? Two. Easter. Eastern, yeah, yeah. From the creators of Eastern, Race yeah. the Sun comes a new roguelite shooter, oh. Whisker Squadron Survivor. Oh, okay. This corridor shooter blends survival Fox? and action and thrusts you into a front row seat to a world that has been taken over by the I'm a big fan sword. of thrusting. These rapidly multiplying robotic bugs are hell-bent on destroying everything you love. You are part of an elite oh feline my God. pilot squad. Task an elite oh. feline pilot squad. squad. What, what about robots? thrusting cat? Oh, I regret everything. Uh, what, what do you feel about that, Co? Upgrades. I'm not on board with this. I, could, I do like chain death lightning, though. Oh, no. You'll be presented with the selection of passive items in your run. Fans of other survival robots. Furries rejoice. I know, right? Here. Some of the coolest upgrades we have are drone buddies, pulse wave, and chain death lightning. I, I do like Build that. your ultimate loadout with your choice of feline pilots, ships, and weapons, and take off on a run that gets more intense with each wave. Dodge trains while clearing the swarm from the city's main transportation corridor, or test your reaction skills by avoiding Are you still playing uh, Diablo, by the way? Glowing yeah, world. I did this morning. Started a hardcore sort. Way, your mission remains oh. the same. Are you not uh, are you done swarm, leveling, so to speak? Try to survive. Um, I'm like a main. Yeah, I'm if working on my ancestral stuff on my road. Through a portal during but a run, I, you'll be I got the T4 to way too early, so it's like, I swear to God, you I heard you say ancestral, and, and I was like, oh my, mm. wow, the what is D4 doing? doing? Help me, Step Zeke. Um, this customization is going out of control, Customize your experience by choosing from a list of modifications to make the game more difficult, or just change up gameplay. Whisker Squad yeah, I hit 80 Survivor last night. I'm trying to decide if I want to go you can wish list and hit 100 now or do and something play else. Demo for free today. Thanks for watching. Hope you can survive. Yeah, I'm definitely winding down. I can I can tell I'm winding down. People are like, are you going to be doing the, the drops every week for the next month? All and right. I was like, uh... Whisker Squadron Survivor. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I what? I don't want to play so Remnant again. The Star month? Fox vibes there. Yeah, they have like yeah. new uh, drops every week. Before we go like ahead and go oh, like the standard drop program. Before we do that, I did want to mention... A couple well, they of last for months. Uh, first the off, they do OTK like, they do like yeah. seven we days. Just like new merch four, today. Yeah. You've seen a lot of the guys wearing it. Wow. So if we can get a, actually, if we can get that graphic on the screen, that's all the new merch that just came out. No, today. Espen, and, you don't uh, get it. Okay, fine. You get, you get a pop print out. stuff. There's some collegiate <laughs> stuff. Uh, looks super, super cool. Super exciting. If we can uh, hop that up there, it is OTKNetwork.com. All new OTK apparel. 
We got some. Uh, we got some. Oh, deadly flow! You can't. You can't hear them stuff, hawking so their merch. I'm sorry. Hey guys, can we be quiet so they sure. they can hear but them also, with the merch again, stuff that they're talking about on the screen right now? Is that something we can do? merch are you talking about? I think it's something. I'm not sure really. It's about. I'm vote wait was there so merch on the screen could someone tell me like, i'm not sure can, 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 yeah. yeah i want to know what i should be buying right us now what okay your favorite game is tell us what game you think in the entire Sorry. games expo deserves to win twenty five thousand dollars okay <laughs> it's a big deal no so i'll make sure to sponsored. mention it again <laughs> so you guys can go ahead and tell us what your favorite game is I would have done that. Yeah, just that that's that's, that's standard chat interaction, everything. okay? That that is required during sponsor streams as well. This co co. Well, we're all fan, sellouts, actually, but uh, you don't have to hide pretty, with us. Pretty pretty awesome up here. <laughs> we, we suck at this. What do you mean? I mean, we Hey, speak for yourself. I love okay. I love roguelikes. I, I would Wait, say that's my it. genre. I believe it is, but before we get there, I have oh, something cool to talk about. Yeah. Sierra, this is awesome. You're going to love it, man. Okay, impress me. Okay, we're doing a super giveaway. Okay, yes. <laughs> Nick no has way. just been like oh the God, sales guy this entire show. Giveaway. Let's Let's stop talking about games. And... Creator Elite PCs. Oh my You're God. You're getting $100 merch vouchers if you I, win, of course. There's a part of me that One likes it because I try and I, I do this a lot when they oversell the, short. the yeah, sponsors super or the, super you know, it is amazing. That shit. That is incredible. That a lot Wait, when I do sponsor streams, like I'll really like no, they, over juice it just you. because, okay. like, okay. Right. You know, also, also, it, it feels weird OTK if I just like try and honestly, like, hey, you guys Steam. should really honestly think check about buying There's some this. cool stuff going on there, so make sure you guys go there and check it out. Um, there you guys go. You can use the QR yeah, code, on thick. you can use that <laughs> little short link there. Go there and join the OTK Steam community. Which is uh, which is something that's kind of new, but it's awesome and cool as well. We so, do we do love that stuff. We do. So let's let's get right into the roguelikes. I've been waiting because I'd say roguelikes are my thing. In fact, I th I I taught you how to play Risk of Rain no. too. But I love it when you play Risk of Rain too. What do you do in Risk of Rain too? You go around, you upgrade your weapons, you hope for the best. It's how a do you upgrade your weapons, Seer? Uh, you you unlock them. Chance, it's a, it's a, it's a roguelike. That's what you do. You upgrade. New skills. That's literally not. That's literally what you, what you do. do. No, man, I used to like no soda, clue. but he's gatekeeping, and I, I'm not into that, man. What? That's, <laughs> Atomic picnic. That's terrible. Let's, Let's, talk about that. Let's get some uh, nice little B-roll going up on the screen here. You got anime style animation. Looks you just reading the bus words. I mean, I could tell you one thing. Tectone will be playing this game. Uh, so I actually got to play the demo of this game. This is. It's 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 I mean, so cool. it is it is clearly Risk of Rain 2, which got is no clue. It, it takes a lot of elements from that. It's got a lot of the Hades and Vampire Survivors elements as well with the upgrade system. You saw the three cards popping up and the gems that you run around and collect. It seems like those three games kind of made a baby. And the one thing that that you know outside of that is come on, that was your cue well. to ask him how babies are made. Fluid. Something that. I personally liked the most when I was playing it that I noticed right away is how smooth the grappling system is. You have those two dashes in the bottom middle and it, it, it actually plays like butter, which is awesome. Um, another thing is it's got a lot of unique enemies. It seems like they've got some cool bosses. I don't know what that tentacle boss was that they showed at some point during the trailer, but that looks kind of crazy how it spawns in like that. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm just curious to see, you know, how this game's gonna play out balancing wise, but I mean, if they manage to pull it off, a baby of those three is going to be incredible. Yeah, they did come together and make that baby. Uh, we got Demon Spore. I mean, Nick, what do you think about Demon Spore? Honestly, I just, I'm just excited to be here, to be honest. Just, you know, <laughs> he hasn't said a down. single thing um, you know, like I the entire time. Like this, oh. I will be checking this Ooh, out. Shut up. Go, oh, okay. What? Um, sorry, I'm I was just, just excited to be the, here. I haven't been paying shut. attention. The, the, okay, map, the map looked cool because that's the one thing I wanted to ask. <laughs> is, like, I know it's a roguelike, <laughs> now but how does it play like a roguelike? Where are the upgrades? Where's the progression? I saw that map on the screen for a second, and that's what I was wanting to see, but... Outside of that, the gameplay, I'm looking here at the tentacles kind of grow, and you have to shoot the, the base guy. of it. I think that's moving pretty awesome. Along. You got really excited when you saw this game, and, and like, what about the tentacles really made you, like, well, what about unique. it? Well, it's unique. Yeah, yeah. It, it's kind of like a top-down hotline Miami um, is how it feels, but, it, I mean, it plays nothing like it because you're it's also fighting past a virus, bedtime, so. and you're fighting these little <laughs> tendrils going out, trying to get the base. The environment is interactable. I saw him throw a chair. It did zero damage, but I see a explodable thing in the top right. I'm sure that can blow some shit up. So 
interactable stuff, unique enemies. I saw some some unique uh, little guys running and jumping at you at one point, so it's got a large variety there. <laughs> this guy's a nerd. <laughs> <laughs> this guy is a nerd. <laughs> Technological weapon upgrades. <laughs> I'm going to be playing this one for sure. Can I add it to my wish list? <laughs> wow. No, but that's okay. Dare you like you video games. Excited, guys. <laughs> <laughs> it's really great. What the Nerd. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, Sierra, what do you have to say about this game? Well, no, you said it all. Oh, really? Did I? <laughs> you did say it all. Why don't you add the something, Sierra? The animation satisfying. I mean, listen. Does it remind you of Risk of Rain? <laughs> no, uh, no, actually. It's okay. a completely different style of game. <laughs> okay. I mean, listen, if we want to get technical, you blast your way out of a tentacle hell as a film. He's reading it. And gives birth to rapidly growing vi viral horror and this action-intense roguelike inspired by 80s monster movies. So we're talking John Carpenter, The Thing. We're out there. We're in a lab. Things are going crazy. Monster, tentacles, the weapon changes. <laughs> Before we move on, I want to just show, I, I, I noticed it had like three different types of weapons, a laser, a flamethrower, each of them playing differently and seemed like they're useful in different situations. And then the music. Yeah. I'm hoping the music stays that good through the whole game because good music is some of my favorite things. In well, you're not going to make it through the whole game. Like the music in Risk of Rain. Yeah. Oh, oh. yeah, it's like. <laughs> oh. Okay, guys, guys, guys. Let's go on to okay. honestly one of my favorite games. Whisker Squadron Survivor. <laughs> I, when I first saw it, I was super excited about, you know, the flying, but then I realized I Whisker. used to be a cat, and I was, that is what I'm all about. <laughs> yeah. It's literally not what you're all about. That, I love that stuff. Okay. So There's I, a I, lot of cat going on today. You know, I like it. I, 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 because people like cats, man. Yeah. They like cats. But, Sierra, I, I talked about, you, you take the beginning of this one. You go. All right. Let's, uh, so you can definitely... You get you build up some combos. You got Which weapon upgrades. You got passive upgrades. The art style. Now, while what do those upgrades remind you of on the screen with the three cards? What does that remind you of? Risk of rain. No, it fucking doesn't. <laughs> it's hate. <laughs> Sorry, can we get this guy out of the studio, please? <laughs> now, listen. The good thing is, while you're doing all these upgrades, you get to maneuver and dodge. Objects, I just love the progression cool. of this. You can Maybe just you can see do a them roll. getting wow. more and more comfortable. No way. Maybe so, yeah. I could do a barrel roll. Me watching the game, this game looks like eye candy. It's going to be heavy on the bit rate, but yep. that in itself can be pretty fun. Um, I, I noticed there's a lot of times you can take the plane and turn it kind of horizontal like that, but and there it is. Vertical. Uh, vertical. But, mm -hmm. There so we go. <laughs> a lot of those dodges can be pretty fun with, like, the bullet <laughs> hells going on, some unique enemies. The lady that talked in the trailer pretty much did most of our job for us, um, highlighting pretty much everything. So we That's every trailer, homie, really. We, we oh, could. Look at that. But, you know, we've got those upgrades. So it's Star Fox meets a roguelike. Yeah. And I think there's absolutely a demand for this type of game. People love Star Fox. And I think the modern way of doing it is, you know, transforming them into roguelikes. And I, I'm seeing a lot of really good things on how they're doing it here. Absolutely, absolutely. So we just saw three amazing <coughs> roguelikes. And you know what, chat? <laughs> Don't forget, you can vote <laughs> right now in the OTK Network Discord, okay? In the Don't Expo touch. voting channel. Your vote matters. There's money on the line. Get in there. Make sure you vote. It's super important. And you know what? What? <gasps> Back to S-Fan. What? Okay. Back to you, s -Fan. Are you sure? Oh, well, interesting. Okay. Well, anyway, guys, that was great. Awesome. Show me the star facts. Absolutely. Guys, our next <laughs> segment, our next segment is going to be puzzles. Puzzles! Let's go! Dude, we're like is 20... Is the puzzler here? We're 20 minutes to three hours. Am I looking at this right? Yeah, you're, no, you're correct. All yeah. right, Whew. guys. Uh, the puzzler is not here. From, uh, he may uh, show up later today. Okay. If I'm wrong here, I'm on that. I'm in the uh, Sibulus. I'm in the fifth uh, of pure the map. Developer. See, and that's the thing. Catch for this game. After that, this thing, uh, I, I, I do so want to stream a little bit, and puzzles. I was thinking about doing and some And that game is called Ready, Dude. Steady, Ship. Do you know there's 1,200 levels in that game? Yes, I did. <laughs> so, yeah. I clicked on Hell and looked at the first level, and Alt F4 did about five seconds. <laughs> Breaking news. The world is under severe threat. Mankind is too lazy to even go outside, but hopefully you can help. Have you got a working brain? Can you lift a box with your bare hands? Then you can save the world. Join the world's best shipping company now.
No, oh, it's like a party game. Cool. Yeah. Oh. So, I just looked at last year's mod. Yeah. For us talking about OTK five, Games Expo. Four, three, it was five and a half two, hours. One, zero, all engine run. Oh my god. Best employee ever. Okay. Wait. The expo was that long? Ready start. I'm gonna door dash. Five and a half hours. It's a puzzle I'm, game. I'm door dashing. I, love games. I think that looks great. We did and 30 make minutes sure of to wishlist on Steam. If you guys uh, want to check and it out, you can see wishlist on Steam. And about 10 minutes that, of wrap up. We uh, have another dev interview. So, Asmin, you want to take it away? Yeah, I will. Uh, I think this is a really great time for me to come in. Obviously, it's a game that, uh, you know, the premise of the game clearly is that uh, nobody in the world wants to work or do anything anymore. And uh, now you have to uh, solve the problem by working in the fulfillment center, basically. And uh, thank you very much, uh, Artness. Can sorry, I, I might have apologized. I uh, uh, sorry, I might have pronounced your name wrong. I apologize. I yeah, yeah, but, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I thought so. Okay. <laughs> How you doing, man? Yeah, you nailed the name. Uh, actually, uh -huh. it's, it's, it's all right. Greeting from Lithuania, anyone, uh, everyone. So it kind right, of I got instantly gave me back. Eurovision vibes. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, so first of all, I would like to give a shout out to all the teams that uh, made it today. Like, uh, very nice trailers, very nice game. I'm actually excited to be myself here. So about my studio, well, actually, it just I'll get you some me, chicken myself, buddies, and I. Yeah. <laughs> uh, That's so your studio behind you? Uh, yeah, 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 it's yeah. my home. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. so I just decided to, like, make a game. And uh, I have a couple of freelancers who have helped me in different aspects of uh, development, like music and uh, 3D art. And uh, basically, that's my team. That makes a lot of sense. And uh, what gave you the idea to make a game like this? Yeah, so I was inspired by well-known games like Overcooked, uh, Moving Out, and I just I saw the trailer. Now I'm also inspired by Enchanted. <laughs> uh -huh. As I'm a gamer myself, of course, I had a very great time playing these titles with my girlfriend, and I noticed that there are no many games like these, so I just decided to make one myself. I got an interesting question. So you're working yeah. in a fulfillment center. Are you able to pause this game? Um, yeah, yeah. Oh, totally. So, like, if you wanted to take a bathroom break, you could just pause the game and go do that, then come back Jesus. and keep playing? Yeah, 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 that's, wow. that's no problem. Wow, okay, all right, that is yeah. interesting. And so, what exactly got you into game development? What inspired you? Uh, I'm actually... Uh, it's dangerous, man. ...indie game developer yeah, for like around that's, seven uh... years. I work full-time <laughs> at Mobile Game Studio, and this is, this, this is the game, like, uh, only I do on my free time. So, yeah, I don't know. I'm a passionate gamer myself, and, and uh, I really like make games. <laughs> all right. Well, that makes a lot of sense. And uh, honestly, game looks like a lot of fun, and uh, we all wish you the best Thank of you. luck. Thank you very much for coming on and, and being part uh, of the show. one more thing, if, if I may. Do it. <laughs> yeah, so if you guys uh, like watching devlogs, I'm inviting you to visit my YouTube. The videos are, let's say, creative. I won't spoil too much, but you can check it out by yourself. The, name, the channel's name is Game Devos. <laughs> All right, Thank man. you, guys. Thank you so much. <laughs> really, really appreciate it. Yeah. And uh, you guys can uh, make sure to add that game onto your wish list on Steam. And uh, I guess we'll go take it back over to S-Fan for the next game. Yeah, that was great. Thanks, Asman. Uh, we learned a lot, actually, there from Martinez. Uh, not only did we learn a lot about the game, but we also learned that indie game devs are giga chads who definitely have girlfriends. So that is true. You can be an indie game dev and a girlfriend haver at the same time. Our next game coming up is from Playdo, and it's a cute uh, side scroller puzzle game. It's called Lost Twins 2. Check it out. All right. What I miss? Anything? Oh, uh, really good jokes. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I missed a pee joke. Oh. You missed a uh, Amazon uh, worker conditions joke. Dude, mm -hmm. forget mm -hmm. that.
was looking at a huge donut. No, I, I was watching that. It looks cool. I'm right. just placing Lost an order. Twins too. You guys can check that out. I'm hungry, Steam. man. You guys can wish list it there. Still got a if huge donut. Like. Our next game oh. coming up is from oh. Dracnik and Friends. Are you gonna order it's one? An abstract puzzle no, I just ordered a big burger and fries and, fries and onion rings advantage. and a side It'll salad. It'll make sense after this trailer. Ooh. Check out Patrick's mm -hmm. pair of boxes. Mm -hmm. Pair of box. Mm -hmm. Pair of box. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. right. Patrick's pair of box. Is it is it getting a? And chicken tendies for cat, of course. Oh, it's not a it's not a re -re or a, a sequel or whatever. Th this is the, the pair pair of Patrick's pair box game I was talking about. I love it. It's a Wonderful little puzzle game with some neat mechanics. My brain hurts. I don't like it. What the? See, the box you're in is also uh, <laughs> the box you're outside of. <laughs> is this how the game plays? Yeah. He's, oh pu my he's pushing. God. He's pushing the box he is also currently inside of. I played through this. It's great. It hurts. If you like, uh, like, um, headaches. <laughs> it's kind of like Baba is you a little bit. That's crazy, dude. Bit. That's super, super creative. That's wild. All right, guys, you guys can check out Patrick's pair of box on Steam. I believe it's 20% uh, off. Uh, you can get it today, actually, for 20% off on Steam, and it's going to come to consoles this summer. So it's really it, they, right they do they start you off really and, uh, basic though. It's, sure it's a I nice hope, yeah. like they've got like nice Aspen? little intro tutorial-ish well, uh, kind of sections to say. First where you're game, like ready, okay you can push ship, a box inside ready, another box ship, jump in the box me. push that box I, out the uh, other side of that box. I like the idea of the game the premise you work in a in a warehouse you're doing a bunch of crazy stuff and things just kind of spiral out of control from there. I like that a lot. What'd you guys think about it? I immediately thought how cool it was that the developer himself because I saw the trailer and I was like oh that looks like Overcooked. Then we talked to the developer and he's like oh yeah I really like. Yeah, it's like overcooked. Yeah. It's so cool how indie devs are like putting their heart and soul into making more games and the things that they want to see in yeah. the industry. It's like actually, uh, it makes me so grateful to be a part of this experience because, uh, you know, devs are putting their passion in this and we get to see that on the stage. True. Personally, I think it looks really cozy. Like, it's a perfect game for me to unwind to, like, uh, at night. I think it looks amazing. And yeah, it's just like super cute and really fun. Uh, I would agree, Emily. Uh, this game reminds me a lot of Overcooked or Played Up, if you guys have ever played those games. Um, but instead of really cooking, which is what you do in those games, you're moving boxes and just completely different. But it just seems so cozy and fun to play with your friend. I mean, just ready, honestly, ready, ready to <laughs> ship this game to my wish list. This wow. game just looks incredible. I can see myself <laughs> yeah, laughing dude. until my I'm stomach right there with you, go. Oh, my God, game, dude. It looks really exciting. <laughs> oh, my God. And I'm excited to see what the devs take my glasses, can do. Let you take breaks, off. too. You know. <laughs> that is Massage a little bit temples. unrealistic, uh. but it's okay. It is a video game, and so uh, we can all appreciate, you know, the, uh, the, the focus on idealism. And uh, that's great. The second game, Lost Twins. Uh, I, I'm going to be honest. Like, the main thing I, I saw, like, I feel like kind of a, a, a dumbass even saying this, but, like, I think the coolest thing about this trailer, I really liked the way the bird looked. I thought the bird looked really cool. And uh, I've, I the never played it takes I two agree. because that would mean that I would need another friend. So Bro, you guys ever play that? I played the hell yeah. it takes two. It's super good. Remind me of that of instantly. Uh -huh. And then it, it differentiated Whoever itself immediately. Where like split the job. screen into four yeah. boxes, yeah. took yeah. the bottom one, put them on the top. Looks super interactive, man. It looks so fun. That was crazy. I never personally have seen a mechanic like that in a game. And I just love the whimsical look of this, uh, what they've done here. So it looks awesome. Yeah, I, I've never played It Takes Two or had a bird mount or anything like that. But yeah, game, see that. Look how cool that bird is. That's a cool bird. <laughs> see how cool that. That's a cool bird. It's look at that. Wow. Real. Yeah, this is beautiful. It's yeah. a beautiful game. I mean, this game reminds me a lot of uh, Brothers: A Tale of Two Sons. If you guys really, yeah. Game. Wow. Um, that's what are you doing that game? The art style is incredible in that game and in this game. So I'm very excited. <laughs> they're for just it. like fuck uh, it now. And yeah, I think this could be a phenomenal game. People other. love these kind of games where you basically play with your partner or your very close friend, and you just go along and with a great journey like this, and it's just. Very cozy to play with a friend or, you know, somebody at night. 
Oh, absolutely. And, yeah, uh, and it's, it's weird to think was, that uh, we do three hours every and, week, uh, but like that. This is the, you know what this game. Are we going like? Are we boring the shit out of people the color after stickers after off a Rubik's cube done? and then put? Zeke, I hate to tell you this, man. It's been that way for years now. Because we kind of lost steam after left for like episode ten. And I would always like I would do like the first two or three levels, and I would think I was like some kind of a wizard or something, and then like level five. See, that's that's like the intro puzzle. This reminds me of the world. Hardest game. Yeah. Mm. And this is out yes, now on PC. Yeah. You can move by your own. Yeah, I played through it. I don't know why they're yeah, it doing looks, it. Here. Someone in my a lot chat asked the console. Game. Uh, coming out on but this one just feels yeah. way more I guess, it is. intricate. Is what yeah, I'm you saying. see, you push that box I thought in, it was going to be like push like it a trailer where we were actually and in a box over and over again. So You kind of are. Yeah, that's yeah. true. You are in a, in a box. But I think I like the simple movement of it. It looks very easy to play and get into. Yeah, I was watching the trailer and my head started to hurt and it didn't really make any sense. And then now I'm seeing the breakdown footage. I get it, but still, like, I don't think I'm smart enough to play a game like this. But it it, it looks cool, so I can watch other people play it. <laughs> it's funny that all of them had the same yeah, comment. Like, I'm too stupid for this. Watch, but I'm sure, you know, once you get your hands on it, it's a very exciting game to play. Um, it's this, this the kind of game that, like, a streamer can play and, like, the viewer eventually figures it out before the streamer. And then that viewer calls the streamer stupid for like <laughs> a month. Yeah, no, I, I know this this kind of stuff very well. I've got a lot of experience with that. And uh, yeah, anyway, uh, that's pretty much where we're at. Obviously, if you guys want to vote on these games, discord.gg slash OTK network, and you guys can vote on this game. And you're also going to, of course, be able to decide the person who will win the $25,000. Yeah. And as now, really quick before we go, yeah, this yeah. is actually the PC, uh, in case anyone wants to know, this is the PC that we were uh, talking about. This is the mech PC that is brand new. Uh, this is the OTK PC. I don't know if you can see it with the camera, but uh, that's a PC. Yeah, it's <laughs> there is a PC over there. So that you, you is don't it just me, that or does PC, that patch look like, like a fucking it? iron yeah. on an yeah. yeah. old yeah, shirt? Yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll be back. Okay. All okay. right. So, uh, <laughs> okay. uh, yeah. I, 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 I'm a little bit annoyed to say this, okay? And the reason why is because a few days ago, S Fan got a chance. S Fan got a chance to play Wayfinder. What? You guys can check out the trailer right now. Mm hmm. Oh. Yeah, I played this. Wait, Wait no, I didn't. Never mind. Never yeah, mind. no, you didn't. No, nope. no, I didn't. This is cool. This is beta. It, no, it looked like a, a game that I recently played, but it, you obviously it's not. You rallied to protect it. the beacon and paid a terrible price. You fell, and the world was broken. Remember who you were. Is the embargo still on this? And returned. Chat like his guest Gothelian. Oh, it world is. Okay. Needs I want to hear what Goth thinks about it. He's tweeted about it. God likes everything, man. He likes it. <laughs> it's only that's right, yeah. So I'm actually extremely jealous of S Fan. I've been following this game for the last six months or so. They recently had a beta, but it was NDA, so I didn't get a chance to play it. S Fan did, and he got a chance to try out the mechanics, play the game, see what it's like. How was it? Yeah, I mean, it was sick, just straight up. It was sick. Uh, yeah, I had a chance. This was a few days ago. Uh, I had a chance to hook up with the Wayfinder guys and, and get to do like a private demo uh, online, which is cool. So we went and played the game, did some of the bosses. I got to take a look at some of the characters. And I mean, it's the, the game is really, really fun. Well, let's talk about the characters, right? Because in a lot of RPGs, you have the warrior, the mage, mm. the rogue, etc. In this game, you don't play as a class, you play as a hero. However, you can customize the heroes in a pretty large way, whether it's like single target, 
AOE, mm -hmm. like, uh, you know, crit base build, dot bait build, base build, etc. Right. And uh, I, I think that definitely, like you said, there were like echoes that you were able to get from some of the boss fights. So, like, so that to change it. Exactly what you said. Yeah. You can do that through a bunch of different weapon options. Like each character, it's, a, it's like a hero, oh. not like a class, but yeah. it's a different hero that uh, you have the different weapon options for, and they it kind of changes their kit a little bit. Yep. Uh, not their kit, but their playstyle. And you can get these echoes, and you can imbue their weapons with echoes, and these will be like stat increases. Yeah, these yeah. will add additional effects to your, to your stuff, like dots and stuff, like yep. you mentioned. And uh, the, yeah, I mean, I so love So what's that. the boss fight like? The boss, yeah, the boss yeah. actually looks pretty cool. Actually, good. There's a lot of like traditional like RPG type of mechanics. Like, so it's, I it's know like, this one. It's like this because like basically what I've seen with a lot of these fights is like you have I'm there's like okay obviously there's a you yeah. know, red circle on the ground which by the way in this game way. thank God well, they're the, actually easy yes. to see. Uh, but also you have like platforming stuff too. Yeah, like, you have no. to like dodge stuff and like run around. Hitting the nail on the head. Color palette is amazing yeah. because you can actually see things. You can actually see the mechanics. Yeah. Guess, uh, as far you as like this? the platforming stuff up goes, up on the yeah. last fight, it actually showed where you had uh, these like squares coming at you, and you had to dodge them by jumping on the like other platforms, all guys and then stuff. it actually shifts, yeah. and then they come at you from another side. Right. So then you have to just have that kind of like spatial awareness and the tracking to be like, okay, boom, yeah. and then you go to the next phase of the boss. So yeah, these guys made battle like? chasers, like, which this, this one I thought like was great. This one so, is a battle fight, right? chasers. Yeah, essentially. It comes out of a box. It's Grand Deceiver Maris is, is the name okay. of the boss, and yeah. it's digital it streams. I think it's a fight. Bunch of different mechanics. You go in there and fight them. Right. And something. At the end of the yeah, phase, involved splits somehow. up into a bunch yeah. of yeah. chests. We're not making it. And then you right go word. and you open each chest. Sometimes they explode, they do something. Sometimes it'll be like a mini boss. Uh, and then if you pick the right chest, then it actually goes into the next phase. So, so like, uh, is there like tanks and healers and DPS? How's it work? Uh, it's it's uh, it, it's not like a traditional setup like not that. Not Trinity, but like, it, it, is it like a soft Trinity kind of? Like, uh, like kind of like tank based? Well, you, you, you have, you, you kind of, yeah, okay. it is okay. kind of like that. But it's not like exactly like that. Everybody yeah. has like healing, you have potions. Like okay, the, so you get like potions. You, can you get like potions those, and heal. stuff. I mean, right, cool. the way they use the potions, it's like a, it's like a da, da type of heal. It's not like a, it's not like a slow chug or anything. It's like, there's like a delay to it and then boom. So like the boss does something like, can you like parry or like, cause like, you know, like in like Valheim or like a lot of games nowadays, yeah. like they've got a ton of like perfect parry, perfect dodge mechanics. Exactly. Right? Do so they have that? They have that exactly. Ooh. They have, you can parry, you can dodge. Uh, there's a bunch of defenses. And uh, specifically, there is like a perfect parry mechanic and a perfect dodge mechanic. Yeah. You can like counter strike with that. So oh, it's, it's pretty that, sick. Man. I mean, Wayfinder, uh, absolutely great. It was a, an amazing experience getting to play it. And uh, yeah, just to uh, just to go ahead and mention, if you guys type exclamation point Wayfinder in chat right now, you guys can uh, you guys can find out a lot more, and you can have a chance to actually become a founder later this summer. And uh, you can go to playwayfinder.com/press. If you guys want to get involved, if you are a content creator and you want to get more involved, so as down. Yeah. yeah, here, do this. Go to playwayfinder.com slash press and you can have a chance to get involved. Uh, okay, uh, just, yeah, uh, that's like, like me, like I was. Okay, involved. okay, yeah, it must be nice, huh? Oh, it was Freaking nice. Freaking yeah, chat, nice. man, I yeah, tell you. Absolutely, ya. it was. Chat, absolutely. I tell you. We'll so, uh, anyway. Chat, me and chat. Wayfinder, check it out. Oh. Early access All this of a sudden, summer. people are, mm -hmm. and speaking I've been Wayfinder in chat. It's like, no. RPGs. Oh. No, guys. <laughs> if you don't get a message on the first try chat try a second time probably should try it a few times the bot's just probably trying to yeah the bot's didn't hear you the first you gotta, time you'll get a whisper remember it's w-e-i-g-h oh, e-h-i-n so next up we're uh, going to talk about our first game which is from star drifters and, uh, it's right. a game where it's a it's an action rpg where you go in you build and explore uh in a crumbled fantasy world that game's called First Dwarf. No, Waifu Finder is a totally different thing. Have we Wait, seen this yet? Game? I think we've no, seen that. I haven't seen this. Maybe? Well. Wait, is this a from this is that Premier. mech farming game? I think. All the dwarves, I am What's stuck here maybe. with you. No, I don't. Likewise, I don't think right. it is. It's like that Love, Death, and Robots game, or uh, um, sketch, or not sketch, uh, Go. episode. This looks pretty fun. Now, let's put your skills to the test, Ragnar. More islands! 
Yeah, what's this called? First Dwarf? First Dwarf, yeah. On Steam. Yeah, that's an easy wish list right there. Oh, that's an easy wish list right there, yep. Mm -hmm. It's not the monsters. Does it say on Steam if there's like there multiplayer or co-op? I don't know. Let's see. It doesn't say anything about it. Action, RPG, Adventure, Tower Defense 3D, Shared slash Split Screen Co-op. You guys oh, can boom, check out that. First Dwarf on Steam right now. You can go add it to your wish list. Cool. It's uh, available just like all the other games here at the Expo today. You guys can go and Steam wish list everything. So make sure to go do that. Our next game coming up is from Sickinger Studio. It is a game where you can enhance your armor and combat abilities and uh, run around and do different parkour stuff in an action RPG called Night Foretold. Night Foretold. Oh, with a K? Oh. The time has come. Uh, okay. Go now, my son. Subtitles. Oh, it said the night has come, and the subtitle said Italian girls come. Venture forward <laughs> into the darkness and bring oh. forth light. For there it's the poner. of old. The night foretold. Bro, seriously? <laughs> what is this? God, this looks so ridiculous. Wild. I love it. It's like the jump over ish game. What is happening? Is that it? Okay. Parkour! Okay, that was Night Foretold. You can wishlist that on Steam right now. And also, he uh, they have a Kickstarter that they're working on as well. So if you guys want to go support that game, if you want to support Night Foretold, you can check out the Kickstarter for that. Next up, we have a game from wreck -It Games, which is a beautiful third-person open-world adventure. Elements. For thousands of years, brave warriors have journeyed to Elamithia in search of eight magical stones hidden throughout the world. These stones possessed unrivaled power and divided what was once a peaceful world. Many have tried and failed to harness the magic of the stones. Thank you, T-Dot. But now, <laughs> that quest belongs to me. Oof. It's surprising to me that there isn't a game already called Elements or Element. I think she did. That dragon was the coolest part of that fucking trailer. Yeah. Huh. Chat's all into it. Get a chat. Wish list. Get that wish list on. You guys can add elements to your Steam wish list today. So make sure you guys go do that. Check it out on Steam. You're not going to do Steam it? How list. dare you? And we are actually going to go wow. ahead and throw it over to NMP and the Variety Gaming Desk to discuss our RPGs. Thank you so much, S-Fan. And honestly, I am so excited because <clears throat> those trailers just blew me away. Like, you can ask Chance. I was just beaming with excitement. But before we get into it, I have to say, check out the merch, guys. We have the merch. <laughs> The this? merch, yes, that merch this is, is on available. sale right now. This is it, available. Yes, that's available. This is available. Those are available. It's all available. Check it out right now, guys. OTKnetwork.com. You can scan the this QR code thing, whatever that is, the barcode. I don't know what this is. I'm too old. But either way, Chance, 
Yes, sir. The games. So, I mean, that was a... We love the merch, by the way. Yeah. Um, so we got the RPG games. We have the honor to go over some of these. Those were sick trailers, and Nick was actually freaking out. I was freaking out. Like, like oh that my isn't, God. That isn't... Like, he was actually like, what is this? Oh, my God. Uh, our RPG games can be some of the hardest to pull off because they're just such... Ma- I mm-hmm. mess with my mic. Um, they can be just such massive projects, especially yeah. these big open world games. And for these indie, de- indie devs to kind of take on the task i'm it's, not sure do these guys have merch off. uh but yeah it's a code.tv slash store as our first game here so <laughs> right off the bat one thing i noticed is that little dragon started out on your shoulder and by the end you were writing it mm-hmm. i i don't know what the kind of progression is on on the dragon so there you're thinking maybe it grows up and you I end mean, up using them as a mount flying that, around I, so you've got dragon management you've got your mech management which you can clearly see on the screen and you've got your your you know staple rpg farming mechanics of mm-hmm. growing your house your building and speaking of building i saw some connecting wires at one point which is going to be some yep. fun base management so kind of seeing their take on all of the progression in this game is really going to be it's the, really the cool because normally you go around as a character yourself and do it but you get in a mech that helps you kind of optimize how you get resources and well, that, also the size of the world feels massive it, it, it is it feels like you see that mountain in the distance you can go there and that's what I was saying with, like, these RPG open world type games can be so hard to do for an indie team. And this game looks to have pulled it off. Um, but not only does the mech help you farm and whatnot, I saw it doing a little bit of combat at one point. Mm-hmm. So we've got farming. Just pick up the whole damn combat, thing, I you've guess. You've got exploration. And the way you explore is what looks to be on the dragon. Fly- I-, I see yeah. lava at the bottom here. So not only are you exploring the islands, you're exploring the bottom. This seems like a really rich world to kind of dive into. And I'm really curious to see more. Gotta explore the bottom chat. Anything you'd like to add, Sir? <laughs> you said it all, Chance. <laughs> you are I? the variety gamer. Okay, what does this game remind you of? I'm just afraid to say it. Say it. Nick, what do you think? Because I'm really excited. I do want to hear your thoughts. Because you know me, I love to be able to build things and sit there and grind, you know, by yeah. myself. And this is, seems like the perfect game for, for me to do that. You know, there's a little dragon walking around talking to you. So I really truly oh, won't feel too alone, which is great in games like these. Um, well, I'm looking here. I see mana, and I see the yep. back of the mech has a blue pool in it. Maybe you collect the mana, right, and it fills go. up Let's the mech, yep. and there it is. So, oh, that is again, awesome. Robot management. You see the dragon mm. on the shoulder. It, we're we're going to have to wait to see more from these devs, I assume, to really see how it all plays out and how it yep. all works together. But this is a massive open world you know, indie game, and it, it looks to be really cool just based on what we get to see here today. I cannot wait uh, to actually play this game. So let's check out the next one. The next game on the list was Night for, Nights or Night Foretold. Night, Night Foretold. So Night can, I t- can I talk about why this is so sick? Go for it. I mean, you can just see Okay, it. there's nothing better than the satisfying movement in a game. And look at that. You fly over objects, you parkour, you can slide under a table. I was losing my mind at this movement, by the yeah. way. Oh, my goodness. I-, I think the big highlight to this game is the movement. And it looks to be, you know, instead of just simply swing your sword, swing your sword. Mm-hmm. It's a large, I, I want to know the control. Did you see the loot drop right there? It was green and he picked it up. Yep. It, that is. We're going to have uniques, legendary oh, chests. Yep chests um the progression of this game i'm really curious about but the actual combat looks really fun i mean it's it, 69 I love the 420 World gold looking character panel i see the stats i see armor <laughs> nice. i see health i see speed increase and his Clearly name the is poner i love that is awesome and you can amplify your speed that is uh, so sick i see a top down open world here with probably yep. quests <laughs> guy just did a front yeah. flip into the city <laughs> like it's just so it seems to be a really big driving point for this game yeah when you have fluid movement like that it just like creates an overall kind of you get little dopamine points in between doing mm-hmm. tasks and just that alone is going to make it so fun to play i'm 100 percent going to be playing this a lot of dopamine coming in from all the gear upgrades and i can see it here it, it keeps it pretty simple and it's going to feel pretty good so i'm <laughs> there he goes it's guy doesn't use doors um, so I'm curious to see more about this game, but the combat and the parkour is the real highlight. I've never seen anything so, like that. that was a, what would you guys think you check out the next about game? this idea uh, yeah, for the OTK show that I'm going to yeah, sell, next sell game to them? Elements. This, this so looks amazing. It. But this game um, looked like, I mean, do this crazy. like there's so much this going like on desk here. banter. Um, I, I want to know how like, that sword. right after the game they showed, and then just go into the next game. Like do like so much going. You know, I saw a couple of back and forth, and then the next game. So this just feels like a different amounts. Yep. I saw flying. I saw spells being casted. There's building mechanics, farming, crafting, gliding, climbing. We kind of got that in the Keeley show. 
It's it, it, yeah. it has all of it. And we still oh. complain about even that. swimming. I saw some swimming yeah. mechanics at one point. So you're going with trailer, 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 trailer. Shows done. This is and so that's like the it has everything. That's, that's but what you I look want. at the combat here and okay, I mean, got and that would be great. But why doesn't everybody do that? Resources and you can kind of what we want. I think they're trying to they're trying to put themselves into the show, which makes sense. It's their show. But I I just feel like they put themselves in the show in in such a better way. I mean, like, it looked like yeah. you could make a little village. Like, do you know if it's a uh, multiplayer? They're they're, I mean, they're I, really I trying saw, to sell the games, people and there. it's just okay. if it's multiplayer, that is crazy. Yeah. So we can play. Most of it just yeah. turns yeah. into reading the feature um, set and saying how cool or amazing it is. I think this game is yeah. gonna be sick. You Feels like it's a little. That would be awesome. Name dropping and fake. You want to play with Co Carnage? I would love to. They name drop you, Co. Oh my god, they name drop me. No. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So what Why do you they name drop me? Game, Nick? What do you think? They name drop you as we're shitting off. Like the <laughs> no, it's uh, hey, hey. Like, we're not, we're not here, shitting on them. We're talking about weapons, ways like, this can be better. Because you're gonna do this like, for another year. Play games and, well, you can and I want, I want this show to be mounts, awesome. Depending on the mount. I've seen different mounts. Mounts must have different. The best game with like, This is this is right That's up my alley. I appreciate that and I like them for that. I mean, the yeah. way you chop but down like, trees is... I, I, oh, yeah, you can build all the stuff, best parts of the show are the stuff between yeah. so the scripted is, stuff. We just saw and I feel like they need to, yeah, they need to distill that down RPGs. to that, because that's hilarious. Those are, those are massive projects, and I'm really I was I was them. having you know a hard time here? earlier Ladies breathing with some of that stuff. Back to S-Fand. <laughs> well, thank you. yeah, man, I want to see more of that. Thank you. Guys, I just think up, it needs to be more of a trailer. Meaning yeah, yeah. Evercore They're trying Heroes. to be other shows, and if they want to do interstitial shit, it should be like their kind of shit, like a little bit crass, they've, a little bit you know wacky exactly. or something. And the thing is, is they've got the show down. Esfin, Esfin, and the trailers are killing it. Right? It's quick. It's gameplay. The games speak for themselves. So yeah. we don't we don't need them to just say what's in the game again afterwards. What would be hilarious if for, is for them to like organically and really do their thing in like more bite-sized components like boom 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 they're probably concerned about time they they there there's no concern about time in this yeah, show zero if anything if anything that they're like they're wasting okay real talk real talk they're wasting time with that stuff this show could have been like significantly shorter if like the funny good stuff which is honestly that's just them being them if like they don't need all this other scripted stuff, they just need to be themselves for shorter amounts of time. They get back to the games, we get more games, we get more distilled funny parts. Like, like I, they have such a good thing going with this show, man. Ever and I'm, I'm Heroes. hoping Close beta begins to go that June direction. June 20th. Maybe yeah. they're paid by the hour. The maybe. That, the fact that you um, can another thing I'm curious about is maybe they're the ground, paid by the the publisher. You know what else I love? I In which love case, the maybe they have to do this. Have like an I don't. With CEO maybe Travis there's reasons for so they... Asman. I think most of these games uh, they get because they're submitted oh, to them. I think that's a yeah. great idea. Yeah. I uh, saw a message in chat about 20 minutes ago that said, uh, why don't we bring on some developers and CEOs and have them talk about the game instead of these goblins. And uh, he's banned now. It's okay. But I'd like to welcome Travis George to the show. Thank you very much for coming on. Appreciate it. Yeah, it's awesome to be here. Thanks for having me. Oh, absolutely. So uh, what gave you the idea for Evercore? Because it's like kind of, it's got a MOBA-esque feel to it, but it looks like there's a lot more of a focus on PvE. Yeah, so Evercore Heroes started out, um, it's, and first off, like you said, it's pretty unique. Like, yeah. um, it's not a MOBA, it's not an MMO, it's not an ARPG. It has elements of a lot of different games, but it's its own thing. Of course. And so somebody who played it the other day kind of described the experience as... Uh, it's like competing for like a world's first, like every match with a lot more strategy and replayability. And so details wise, like it's a competitive PVE, it's real time skill based, and it's four teams of four basically going all out each other to save the world and prove that they're the best team of heroes. And you get to beat that new boss that was showed on the trailer. Yeah, so the way the game works is that um, you and three other people join into a match. <laughs> you and three other people join into a match, um, and everybody picks, like, tank, DPS, or support, the Holy Trinity. Okay, so it has that. It has Got that, it. and each, uh, it's a hero-based game, too, yeah. so each one of those is super unique. And so there's a Trinity. And then we okay. match you up with three <laughs> other teams, and we put you into a stage, which is, like, its own self-contained, like, raid. Mm -hmm. And so you jump in, um, and each one's different. Uh, and you're all competing in real time uh -huh. uh, to essentially uh, outplay each other and take down the boss. And so, so it's like you're, you're almost like speed running. 
Yeah, you know, actually, an early version of the game, it started uh -huh. out as kind of speed running. Yeah. Um, but it really evolved into being more strategic. Um, and the game itself um, is a lot more about really outplaying the other teams and thinking about what to do. So it's less element on like racing. So apparently, um, I, did, so I didn't know this like about the show. When the they say go vote for each other and the game in Discord. So what kind of friction ends up happening and between and the winner gets actual like, money uh, yeah. for you know, the one team Yeah, that's what they said. That's why they're trying to explain like, it Are they able to actually kill each other? Or how does that work? Yeah, so there's no PvP in the game, but... yeah. <laughs> Tectone is just sitting We're there trying not to here. laugh so hard. <laughs> well, it's because he's fucking um, wearing a tank so top no like PvP a gross in the game. fucking... Um, <laughs> like, put a shirt on, fuck. There's no PvP in also, the game. Also, I wow. just realized that Asmongold uh, IFB, that earpiece, uh, is upside down. So okay. There's, uh, you can it's supposed to go up, over his ear, other teams. and I'm guessing it didn't harder. work that way for him. Maybe he's got huge ears or something. In the moment, you can actually real-time, like, mess with them, like... So you can, like, grief them, like, increase the mob's health. See, that part is supposed to go over the ear. Oh, you're right, it is! And try to mess them up and get them out of their It's supposed to probably be on the other side. from them, gain advantage. So you really have to outplay the other teams. All right, that I makes a lot of sense. Uh, you can actually see the... You can ask a question. Yeah. Go so, ahead. He was playing with it earlier. Maybe he had to move spam it. Spam this door. Yeah, it was for, not working. To release Evercore. Is that a, is that a common thing around here? Uh, it's probably some of the Evercore community. Um, they're all watching. We have an awesome community it's that's been actually helping us build the game mm. for the last couple of years. Um, I think they're trying to, like, get... Uh, I think they're trying to, like, get, get us to, like, release a demo of yeah. the game or something. Mm. Cool. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I saw them spamming like crazy. I was like, damn, that's a that's a pretty solid community. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it's quite a community. And so uh, can you explain a little bit, tell us a little bit about the development team and like your studio for making the game. Yeah, so we're Vela Games, and this is our first game. Uh, we've been around for about five years, actually. And okay. it started with three of us. Um, and um, pretty awesome to have a couple uh, really awesome, cool co-founders. One uh, has worked in AAA for like 20 years on all kinds of different genres. Um, one's an anthropologist who worked at Riot Games like twice over her different uh, periods. And me, um, I've worked in games for 20 years now. Wow. Um, AAA, got into MMOs because I was playing so much vanilla WoW. All right. Uh, mm. And then eventually I ended up at Riot in 2008. Okay. Um, and worked on League for about nine years, um, including all the different kind of crazy modes like Dominion and Twisted Tree Line and some of the stuff that nobody saw. Um, but then also um, I was the lead producer for like season two through four. Mm -hmm. And after Riot, I really just wanted to do something different. And so we all got together and said, let's build a game. You should show the games that, during these interviews. Um, has yes. a whole different range of people. I agree. But also yeah, can build games that are game. really unique. And what 100%. we wanted to do was I think this is Wayfinder. Games. Uh, talking about have a ton of like depth and mastery to them, yeah. but also that you can play with other people and not yeah, you having know, like, like lose your these shit guys be like down so here. So you worked on in this box, <laughs> and then the rest of it be the game. Yeah, actually, yeah. several people on our team worked. Oh, on this is Evercore. Okay. So we kind of know Evercore heroes. That, um, you know, okay. a lot of times when you're playing I don't know these what games that, is. that you love, you don't really love the experience yeah. with other people. Yeah, it's the PVE competitive game internet toxicity oh. or anything ever like that. quest heroes oh, don't you dare do so it's a lot better to get <laughs> mad at oh, the dare. bosses in the game rather than the players in the game yeah and the game uh -huh. too is super cooperative right? right so you really have to work together play together and so it's really about playing together um how do you get better at the game well you have to learn everything about the game you have to learn all the yeah. bosses mechanics but you have to also have to learn how to play together and work together as a team right the best team will come out on top Mm. Uh, makes a lot of sense. And uh, if people want to support the game and uh, play it, where can they go? Yeah, so the closed beta starts on June 20th, and <laughs> okay. you can go to evercoreheroes.com uh, and get into the Founders Pack, um, and that'll get you into the closed beta. Each Founders Pack also comes with a friend key, mm -hmm. um, so you can bring a friend. So if you don't want to buy a Founders Pack, convince Did one of your friends to Did they show this game? I just missed right. it. Um, but also, the like, trailer we're right super excited talking. to be here, oh, okay. and um, we didn't want to just... Uh, talk about the closed beta. We actually oh. wanted to do something special for OTK. Oh, that's nice. And so I think what people are spamming the chat about is if you go to evercoreheroes.com right now, mm. you can actually sign up and we're going to run a limited time game what night. What day is it? I have no oh, idea. Wow. Community. Oh, badass. Like hey, today. Oh, cool. right not Starfield there. there. Oh, shit. And so anybody no, can go, sign up, play the game. Like all Man, the that's going to be kind of whiplash going from they get what they just want. <laughs> download to the it, Xbox uh, event and we'll tomorrow. run it through midnight. Oh. Um, and so basically, however many people the servers can handle can come check it out. Uh, and also, we've been in closed testing now for like two years 
Uh, and so the NDA is now gone. So if uh -huh. you want to make some content, get an early jump on streaming, you know, if yeah. anybody here does that kind of thing, mm -hmm. um, awesome. well. can check out the game tonight. And so go to evercoreheroes.com, play the game tonight, including the Hard Frost Harbor map, which we just showed, which nobody's ever played. Wow. So. That's awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Well, anyway, thank you so much for coming on the show. I like we really extra appreciate Emily's it. commentary. And, uh, <laughs> now, whenever I get home, I might actually try it out. So thank you so much. Yeah, thanks for having me, and uh, thanks, chat. <laughs> yeah, thanks for yeah, yeah, chat was very supportive. I was impressed. So, uh, again, thank you very much, uh, Evercore Heroes. Travis, thank you so much. And uh, we're going to go ahead. We're going to move on over to a break. So what, what do we have? Oh, God. This is probably for uh, Xbox? Oh. Well, they have a podcast together. Guys, I am so sorry I'm dude. late for our LARPing session. What is that? We're playing Diablo 4 co-op on the Xbox Series X, and we got the bundle, so we have extra endgame items. No, not that. That. The couch? Yes, it's an anachronism. It's ruining my immersion. Wow, good word. And the uh, Xbox and the TV aren't? <laughs> Oh, it's a GameStop. Yeah, okay. Nutty. What is this? Now, is this an ad or is this a game they're showing on? This is great. 20 minutes till dawn? Oh, it's a moment. Oh, yes, and that's, welcome back, everybody. That's the length of the run. Like, a vampire's survivors is always dawn. 30. Make sure to check that out. You guys can go and add that to your Steam wish list as well. And also, a lot of people had questions about the Diablo Steam. trailer. Okay. Uh, and the answer is yes, Tectone was wearing deodorant in the Diablo trailer. So. <laughs> Yeah, he was. Don't worry. <laughs> nice call, uh, next dude. Up, nice call. We have call. our next segment, which is Creator's Choice. Our first game for Creator's Choice is a tower defense game from... It's from Literally Everyone Games. That's the name of the studio. Literally Everyone Games. It's called Mob Factory. Check it out. So what, what does creator's choice mean? Did I miss that? It's, I think like the members of the OTK have, have chosen games, a game oh. to highlight. It's kind of fun. I, I wish it said like who chose what game. That'd be kind of cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, 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 oh. Espen's ca carrying this expo. Dude, Espen is doing a phenomenal job. Espen's doing yeah. a phenomenal job. I think everyone's doing a great job. I just think, yeah. They could they could change the format a bit, I think, to make it more entertaining. But everyone's doing everyone's doing great. Well, almost all of them are doing great. What? I like I like the uh, chemistry between uh, uh, Soda Poppin and and um, what's the other one? Seer. 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 Yeah, they're killing it. Dude. I like when, that. that. When they go off script, great. it's amazing. Some, dude, these beats, man. This is awesome. <laughs> Mob Factory. That looks kind of fun. Is that Tower Def That was Mob Factory. You guys can check them out on Steam right now. There's actually a demo available as Ooh. well. So wishlist them, and you can play the demo. You guys know Soda Poppin's a big tower defense guy, so we had to have a tower defense in our creator's choice. Another thing, speaking of Soto Poppin, you guys know about a little bit of a uh, social deduction that he's done in the past. And our next game is just that. It's from World Makers. It is a social deduction horror game called Deceit 2. I'm not familiar with social deduction. Oh, wait. Really? Oh, among oh, among us. Oh, deducing. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Among, among us is social deduction. I get it now. Yeah. 
uh, mafia, secret Hitler, whatever. Among us. Uh, yeah. Big booty among, shaking among sussiness. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I killed somebody. Cat lost me at social. <laughs> right. He's not wrong. That was deceit. He's definitely not wrong. Which is actually in beta. It's actually in beta until the 12th of July. So you guys want to go ahead and check that out now as well. Make sure to Steam wishlist everything. Uh, everything. <clears throat> everything. Our next game coming up for Creator's Choice is actually from Barrel Smash Studios. Uh, is it? Barrel Smash Studios Party Limited. I think that's... Is, is that right? <laughs> uh, it's, it's actually a roguelike action strategy game with building involved in it as well. Oh, thank you, Steve. And that game is called Riftbound. Honestly, okay, okay. My suggestion for this, next time they do this, have the people pick the game, introduce the game, and why they picked it. That would yeah. actually be awesome. Like, hey, I picked this game. I picked this game because, boom, here it is. Like, that would be, that would be awesome. Although, don't get me wrong, Espen's killing it, but I think that would really add some some backing to it. This is like Plant vs. Zombies. But hold on. They didn't pick the games. The, the, they're getting, you know, No, no, this, is, this, this section is called Creator's Choice, which I'm assuming, oh, okay. I'm assuming oh, means sorry, them, sorry, sorry, sorry. but maybe, I mean, maybe yeah. just Creator's Choice is a vote See, or something they, they took. I'm not sure. See, I missed they, that part. It chose all these games. They're not getting paid by any of these people because it's all indies. Yeah. Some of the games are paying, but when it's it's clear, they, it's an ad. They, uh, Espen was talking about last year how they actually didn't put Dark and Darker on because they all looked at it and didn't think it was quite there. They later regretted yeah, it, yeah. obviously, but that that infers that they, you know, vet each game and choose which ones are going to put in the show. I'm sure after yeah. this year, though, they're going to have no, <laughs> absolutely no, uh, what am I trying to say? All right. They'll, they'll be able to Rift choose, Bound. pick and choose. Rift Bound. There's going to be a lot sure of interest check that in this. Out on Steam today. Make sure to wishlist that on Steam as well. And our next game. No is lack of choice. Free Jam. Thank it's you. from Free Jam. Excuse me. Sure. It's from Free Jam. And it is a vehicle based online PvP destruction shooter. So check it out Robocraft 2. Oh. Well, uh, I guess. If if they picked out the games that they are going to or that they are showing and they're not being, you know, paid to show these, it, it seems like they don't know a lot about them. Well, I mean, there like, are a lot it of. It feels games. like they're going in cold, like I did every, you know, most interviews. From the looks of it, especially with Soda and Seer, they're they have like notes on like the hot points, right. the buzzwords and stuff. That looked okay. Hmm. All right, that was Robocraft 2. Make sure to check it out on uh, make sure to check it out on Steam. Add it to your wish list. But not only that, we have another interview available. So let's send it to Asmin for our next interview. Oh man, I'm excited to do this. I love the games where you can just run into each other and it's like, it, it's almost like a, uh, what, what do you, what do you really want to call it? Like a sandbox Miss almost. Or for not Miss uh, so Tech Tone has a sweatshirt to, uh, on Chris now. Chris Cleveland, who's the community <laughs> manager. Uh, how you doing, man? I'm doing great. Thank you very much for having me here. You've been having some incredible games here. I'm really looking forward to going back and wish listing some of them who? as well myself. Well, hey, thanks for being one of them. So uh, what caused you to make this type of game? What was your inspiration? Uh, so, uh, so basically, this is a sequel to a game that the development studio worked on about 10 years it's ago. Uh, we were creating a uh, series of like uh, block-based uh, games where you can build yeah. things with blocks, you know, Minecrafts bit like that uh and basically we thought hey what if we just added guns you hey, know hey, people were making right. these kind of uh <laughs> people were making like a lot of kind of like single player experiences and we were like hey multiplayer guns brilliant i i that's all you need right and so it <laughs> w what happens so do you queue into a game and then like what happens do you do you like make a character is everybody the same starting out how does it work I uh, know everyone starts off with uh, pretty, you can get a starter bot to begin with uh, or you can download bots from the CRF which is the community robot factory people can upload their robots so others can use them okay uh, but most of our uh, most dedicated engineers are basically creating their own robots but they're creating them out of uh, logics and pistons axles all of these things uh, recently they've discovered how to make 
mech legs or kind of like uh, ant legs. Wait, so they discovered that? Moves. They discovered that through the tech in your game? Yeah, so basically they've been able to uh, create and recreate ant movement. And that's what you get and see in that trailer just right there. That was probably some more in the B-roll footage as well. Oh my God. Well, that is incredible. Can you tell us a little bit about your studio, Free Jam? Yeah, sure. Uh, so basically, we are a development studio, completely independent. There's about 20 of us working on the game right now. We have uh, been in the industry for about 10 years, and our focus is turning players into creators. Any game we make, we want you to make something. Uh, be it card life, you make a sword, you design the actual character. Robocraft, you make the actual machine itself and bring it online and others can watch it. And they make some weird stuff. There is a problem sometimes. So, so are we going to have a situation like uh, Tears of the Kingdom, Legend of Zelda, where like a lot of people start playing this game and they start inventing all kinds of like really, really crazy like different bots to use? Yes, definitely. So right at the moment, we've got flyers as well. We've got some people making drones. We've got people making catapults. Okay. Uh, and there's going to be some really interesting new uh, parts as well. So we've got mech legs coming as well. So you'll be able to create your own mech as well. Uh, and then more flying parts and uh, various other stuff. We also have every single map in the game. Uh, is created using in-game tools. Okay. So we have also the objectives. And yeah, in the, the B-roll footage would be really nice right now. Players, they can okay. create their own maps and game modes. And that'll be really have fun Asmin as well. Asmin and Chris oh in the bottom so left just, and right. At a and then point, they're just gonna gameplay be front and center. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if they right. can make a machine, they can technically make our game for us. Ah, I guess that so makes it sense, It uses right? the same tools. It's a simulation. Yeah. yeah, I understand it. Well, thank you very much for coming on. I really appreciate it. And uh, people can wishlist this game right now on Steam. Is that right? Uh, yes, you can go to Steam to wishlist the game. You can also sign up for the playtest. And if you want to, and you maybe want to play year, a really maybe. early version with uh, uh, kind of like scheduled time-based multiplayer, you could download it right now. Doors open right now, bro. To Thanks, com. Man the pre-alpha but you guys i'm gonna get my food real quick uh, like back. hourly windows where we're testing server because everything's server side physics i totally understand that yeah absolutely well best luck to the game it looks very exciting and uh hopefully one day i'll be able to play it and uh there you go thank you man thank you very much absolutely uh yeah i uh actually had a mod his name's free jam and he uh saw this and he was he, he thought that somebody took his name or something like that so oh, really? it's really funny i just had to say the name of the studio at the time anyway um we're gonna throw it on over to have a little bit of analysis expert analysis by the variety gaming panel Thank you so much, uh, Zach. We are the Variety Gaming Panel, and we're back to give some great, great, great analysis. But before we do that, I got something really, 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 really cool to talk about. N not the merch. There's a Mech PC giveaway. Yes, that is right, chat. Make sure you guys enter into this Mech PC giveaway. It's a custom one of 20 um, it's super cool. I wish I had this PC. Uh, I'm going to enter it myself. Um, it looks super sick. You can look in chat how to how to enter the giveaway and things like that. Yeah, it is amazing, it amazing, does look pretty amazing. Dang cool. It does look cool. It looks cooler than anything I want that I have that. currently. You're yeah, the giveaway. Giveaway. Am I missing the giveaway? It looks even better than No! No! Oh, no! Oh, 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 I mean, this is just point my giveaway in your chat. Oh. Look at the best PCs in the universe, so this is even a step this is up. The, this is the best PC of all times here. Yeah. Like, yeah, it is It is greater than LeBron. I got, yeah. chat, I got way too much food. I'm going to need y'all to eat some of this. Whatever that might be, but yeah, look at that. Super cool, super sick. So... You ready to get into the game's chance? I absolutely am, Nicholas. You look super excited. So let's I am. Just, let's so, just hop into the game. So, Chance, I gotta, I, I have to give it to you on this one. Okay. Okay. Um, you are great at tower, tower defense games. I, love I know that. that's your thing. I'm not gonna BS it. You just don't have anything to say. <laughs> Chance, no, I, I want so you to talk about it. Go no, ahead. Chance, I have let's so talk about Mob say. Factory. Yeah, it's a tower Here, defense automation game for the lazy adventure. Smelt down enemy loot and turrets and fa uh, factories <laughs> to automate never expanding dungeon from the comfort of your own tower. I mean, obviously. Okay. But so. I know you have passion for this, so <laughs> I, you do it. I am a massive tower defense fan. I mm -hmm. grew up playing a lot of Warcraft 3 custom games. And the one thing that a lot of tower defenses don't have that I really love in these tower defenses, when you get to build the maze yourself. Oh my and God, I, I, I think I see stuff. that going on 
here, and it just keeps getting longer and like longer and longer and going absolutely me, crazy. <laughs> um, and what? Different towers. I, I see some damage <laughs> numbers coming out, but the mazing is Said, really I don't like what all that quitter feels good in these kind of towers. Dude, so when I saw this, I'm like, yes, ordering, it's ordering about food time. when you're hungry is dangerous. I love the art like, style. When you're really the hungry, pixel art, yeah. the music seemed pretty good, um, at least in the trailer. I don't know if it's in the game, but I'm very excited for this tower defense game. Me too, Chance. This is like a game that I'm going to play when I get home from a, a long day of work. I'm just going to get back and relax and, you know, sit there and play this game. It's super, super I'm, cool. I mean, I, I just I want to know more about it because I see all those materials in the bottom left. And usually in these kind of tower defenses game, they, they keep it pretty simple. You know, you have your gold or cash and that's your currency. But I see like 12 different currencies in the bottom. I don't know what those are. And that's one of those things you just got to you got to learn. Well, he's hovering over stuff and it's certain required materials. I don't know how you get them. So a lot of unique things that might be coming out with the gameplay with the whole map building and adding more squares and it getting longer and getting crazier over and over. I'm just really excited about this game. So am I. Well, you know what? The next one is a big one. Let's talk about Deceit 2. Chance, you have a lot to say about Deceit 2. I, I, I actually don't. <laughs> um, I, I have some good things. Deceit, people love that game. A lot of our friends have played it. A lot of streamer groups go in. It's a, basically you so this find is a, out. Like a horror game where you're running away from demons. Someone is sus. Okay. But it's a first-person okay, so game. Okay, there's one bad out of many. You got to deduce okay. who the bad person is, right? And looking at the trailer, it didn't reveal too much. But the fact that the first one is so, you know, people love it so much, and we're getting a second one, I'm really curious to see what Not else is added enough. aside from oh my a graphics God, update. Which it looks it more. amazing. I'm, I'm seeing B-roll. This is the first time I've seen All I've seen is yeah. the trailer, I so I haven't it. seen too much. So this oh, is something you get together with, like, dude. can you get with a group of nine friends? Dude, and you, you on, kinda, I don't I know how many, but yes. I'm opening okay. your screen. Hold um, on. Something like that, and one person is sus. Okay. Oh, you have to close dude. your chats, and you got to find oh, out who yeah. the sus one yeah. is. Yes. And there's different ways to deduce it. Um, is that there's a nighttime bacon phase and where someone becomes bacon a bad, and, and that's when they start killing onion, you. Fried onion I've straws. There's, a, there's an egg. Have, there's Nick. pickles. That's crazy. Wait, yes. Oh, my we God. This. Yes, someone we had, have played it. Okay. What have I done? Yes, yes. this is Deceit 2. Right. I'm excited. It is, it, I don't you know if it's like fully being announced. Two. People didn't know it's happening. I should have ordered about... Shit, they're making 18,969, awesome. awesome. so, apparently. Yes, this yeah. game, the first one is loved. People still play it to this day all the time. And now the second one, I don't know when it's coming out and all that, but I see, so I don't know. Are you pretty good at being sussy in those games? Or like a, <laughs> being a, a sussy boss? He might have been one of the original <laughs> sussy boss. Stop. I, the Wait, direct, you made a game <laughs> Stop. Didn't you? We're not, Stop. We're not going to bring that up. What either way, either way. You guys ready to talk about Riftbound? Yes, so Riftbound. You both said you had no idea what was going on the screen when we were watching the trailer just a bit ago. Yeah. Um, I did not what, say that at all. Please explain this to someone like Siri who doesn't get it. Yes. Oh, help us. Okay. It's 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 clearly a take on plants versus zombies in a way, at least the perspective of that, you know, horizontal shooting waves of guys coming in in multiple different lanes. Um, there's going to be different towers, I guess, that you place and you survive as long as you can. It's a roguelike. So, you guys ever played Plants vs. Zombies? I have not played that game before. I was at that time too busy hitting the clubs, meeting okay. women, and just driving really expensive. Okay, well this is, uh, all, what I see in this game is a variety of different towers, a Pikachu looking thing in the back there. Basically, um, you know when I, I wake up in the morning, I piss excellence. progression, kind of like Slay the Spire, where you select which direction you want to go, left, yep. right, select loot, upgrades. Um, I'm not sure how the roguelike elements are in this game, I'd have He's to play so it to see, but I know, I know that they have. I see cards now. <laughs> okay. Um, so it's basically a Plants vs. Zombies. I'm sorry, Chad. I'm eating during this. I'm and sorry. And they've got some other elements added in that are, you know, spells casted. It looks like. I don't know what they just That looks there. like a boss fight. I see barricades. Boss fights. Yep. And you got to survive. You got barrels being thrown, towers being killed. It's Can't, a really fun game. You did game. a remarkable job at it, explaining that. Did I? Yes. Okay. You know what? You want to put in the test again? Let's explain RoboCraft 2. Well, we got to talk to the dev, actually. So... This was amazing. The fact that the You're community... talking about for Robo Robo Robocraft. Yeah, okay. moving forward to Robocraft. Right. We got to talk to the dev. Yeah. And I think it was really cool that uh, what they have a community of 16 million people, and the fact that they are literally the community kind of, manager. Yeah, d developing the game. Mm -hmm. They they are creating vehicles and making mechs and fighting them against each other. That is a crazy deduction of yeah. what this game is. Yeah. Um, one thing I really like is how it's a lot of community driven stuff. So Warcraft 3 custom games have always been like bringing out some of the best, you know, 
things in general when you allow your community to make stuff. And that seems to be the foundation of this game. Yep. Um, you build your own crafts, or your community does, which you can download. But not only that, he said you're going to be able to build your own maps. Uh, he's got their community building, building like centipede. Yeah, the, I don't. The community I, is making the game. I, 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 I mean, what it is. the physics and capabilities that it's giving the gamers themselves is absolutely insane. It seems like, you know, each piece can be blown off. I don't even want to know the physics it looks like behind that. Someone's flying there on the right side of yep, the screen. You can, We've got you flying machines. We've got centipedes. Okay. All of okay. these are built by players, which is insane. That is... Um, and, it's, and then you throw it in into this kind of twisted metal vehicle battle thing with flying stuff and walking stuff mixed in. I mean... Shit, we might have a map with water and we'll have a This boat. looks really cool, and I think Seer will be really, really bad at it. Absolutely. No, 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 no. I would thrive in this environment. I'm not even joking. No, you wouldn't. But you know what? What? You know who would thrive? I know who would thrive in almost any environment. Ladies and gentlemen, back to S fan. <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> 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 Thank you for that wonderful introduction. Thank you, Seer. Uh, guys, we have from Julio Quiroz our first of our next set of games coming up. It is a 2D action fighting game called The Resistance 2046. Resistance 2046. That looks sick. It's like a. Uh, it looks like a trash talk game. It might be. It might be one we. We might do in the future. We'll see. Guys, our next game coming up is from Soul Game Studio. It is a bullet hell Metroidvania type of game, and it's called Mini Shoot Adventures. Was all right. <laughs> that was a mini was shoot cool. adventures. Make sure, make sure to check that out on Steam. You can add that to your wish list, and uh, also, uh, as well as Resistance 2040X, you can add that to your wish list as well. All the games you can add it to your Steam wish list. If you want to do that, make sure to go and check it out. There's going to be a uh, there's going to be a whole page with all the games from the expo on there that you can go through, and you can add them all to your wish list if you guys like. And our next game is from Last Credit Games, and it is a top-down bullet hell arcade shooter, and it's called Bullet Casters. All right. 
those bullet casters. You guys can check out bullet casters on Steam as well. You guys can add that to your wish list, add your Steam wish list to your wish list, get another Steam account, add everything to your wish list twice. It's gonna be great. Bullet casters, check it out on Steam. And our next game coming up is from Astrolabe Interactive, and it is an open world naval combat game. The game is called Aloft. I think we've heard of this one, right? The sounds by everyone is pretty telling how engaging this is. Well, like, uh, man. All right. Yeah, the animal update the, the is coming. <clears throat> the yeah. animal update is coming. There at the end of June. You guys can get the demo right now. Yeah, you guys can wish list it right I now. I just want to talk about a sandbox dad. game. Super cool looking. Yeah, no, I and get it. And for our next game coming up, it's from 85 plus games. It's, uh, I don't know. This is. There's not too much to be said about this game. I, I don't even know who would who would, you know, try and own one of these games. But it's called Unrooted. You can check it out. You'll learn more about. Must it. Must be a friend of his. Was this Ms. Kiff's game? Or his own game? Yeah, maybe. No, this is Ms. Kiff's game. Or their, I mean, their own game, right? No, this this is Ms. Kiff's game. Isn't he part of OTK? Yeah, yeah, but he made it before uh, <laughs> they were, they did their thing. Oh, okay. like Jump King, right? Yeah. That was a, Unrooted. A little bit? Yes, I Unrooted, the game that Mizkiff paid Sinak to work really hard on, and then he was going to take all the credit on it. So uh, Unrooted <laughs> is available to be added to your Steam wish list now. It's coming very soon, very, very soon. So let's, uh, let's throw it to the stage to discuss. Asmin? All right, well, here we are. Well, let's go ahead and talk about it. I think Resistance uh, 204X was the first 204 game. 204X. I'm sure you've probably <laughs> taken extensive uh, notes on the game. Uh, what, what, do you, what do you think about this game? Asmin, this, I love this game. This is yeah. exactly what the Game Expo is all about for me. Um, it reminds me of Nidhogg with a little bit of Lethal League, uh, two of my favorite games. Really? really exciting to play this. I love the controller adaptability that you could do right here in the game. Uh, the art style to me is just something that stands out. It's that like 70s style that they're going for. Uh, really pumped for this one, and I think it can go very far. And you can get it right now in your wishlist chat. Resistance 2040X. Uh, go ahead and grab it. But Emily, what do you think? Uh, I agree with, your, with what you're saying. We said earlier that this would be a great trash talk game, and I completely agree. I think it's uh, the anti-air concept is also extremely cool and different, and I think it looks great. So Miz, you like Lethal League. Oh, what's who's your favorite character in that game? 
by far the uh, the girl with the hair on it. The it girl. Looks, that, the, that's the girl cool. is by far the okay. best character. The girl. Yeah. I play a lot of games, so I don't really remember characters as much. Oh, right. Man. Yeah, it um, looks like really a fast-paced, cool fighting game. Really cool. Why are they visuals, all just like colors. trolling it each looks, other? It looks great. <laughs> they don't play yeah, these exactly games. like Lethal League, cool music. which I'm really excited for. <clears> yeah. Your favorite um, character, by the way, Lethal League. <laughs> Candyman. Wow. Ooh. <laughs> Do you have one? Uh, it, it was Candyman. Oh. Oh, it was yeah, Candyman. The girl. Not anymore, Candyman. though. <laughs> no, it was Candyman. Makes sense. Next game, Mini Shoot Adventures. We'll take yeah, a look at BS, that. See that would what never happen. Have to say. Any of you guys have any thoughts Do about I that really game? have to tell you the difference between drop yeah, this frames game, uh, and a I think fucking it's a game very expo unique style. that's presented I do like the by camera, Summer how it's, Game uh, Fest? Panned out a little bit. Like you can't, this game is a kind of game. Is that yeah, fucking I mean, tiny that you can't just, comprehend the major difference between the two of those? You dumb fuck. Hey, man, that's that. I'm talking about a stream and I'm not really listening. Look, deep breath. Play this JP, game deep breath, Snickers. And just I'll go get you a Snickers. I think this man needs a Snickers time. stack. I'm not listening to your friends. What else his name is? <laughs> <laughs> I just feel like it's a, it's a really, uh, it seems like a really uh, chill game to play. Uh, it's the Galaga-like shooting. Uh, I like how Chad's like, JP's been, kind of awesome been live too long, man. And, uh, it's been live too long. Good <laughs> to <laughs> guys. Wow. <laughs> That's wild. Uh, I mean, I, I feel like this game is obviously looks like it's a very, very chill game. You know, it's a very relaxed game. You can just sit back and play it, which means that if I played this game, I would go absolutely fucking ballistic ape shit, getting mad at it, quitting the stream, getting mad at people, banning people, etc. But uh, I mean, to be honest, it plays very well. It plays very well. It's extremely responsive. I've seen this whole thing, I think, a couple of times already. And uh, I was actually really impressed by just like the movement and everything like that. Uh, what did you guys think about one touch that I like is the bold outlines on all the projectiles for yeah. the bullet holes. So it's, it's really easy to visually see what all is happening on the screen. So even yes. when it's cluttered, it's very easy to read. And I really enjoyed the smooth movement. It looks like butter, the, just the way that the character's going through it. So, yeah. So, like, we had this game, and this is like a slow version of the next game, which is Bullet Casters. And it's kind of like, imagine if that game that we just saw had like 50 other ones at the same time. And they were happening and they were way faster. And so, like, uh, I remember these types of games back whenever I would uh, go to the arcade. And they cost a lot of money. <laughs> it was like, uh, like probably 3 or $4 just to get through the first level of this one. What do you guys think? Reminds me of Toho. And it's got really cool bosses. I like yeah. the animations and colors. I know Very I bright. would be horrible at this game it's like <laughs> it looks so hard but that's like part of the challenge right is being able to beat the levels so it looks it looks very very fun and challenging uh yeah the the art it's style so really i think is what you're gonna take from here like, just a beautiful that's art every style. video game uh, it's just described the smoothness that you're having with the the <laughs> frames i think is just incredible to do as an indie developer uh and overall this game looks really great asman you know, to me, whenever I watch runs of games like this, I've watched many bullet hell games like this, uh, one of my favorite things to do is watch people play the game on ultra super hard expert, and then they do everything right, except for they get hit by one thing, and I call them stupid. <laughs> I feel so good. Have yeah, you ever, it's like you watching ever played the Super Olympics. Hexagon? Say what? Super Hexagon? No. See, the, it, Super Hexagon reminds me of this a lot. Where really? Just, yeah, you... You're like, it, it's crazy, like, feels dank man style game, but at the same time, you're trying so to... So anyway, the next game is uh, a loft here, <laughs> and yes. uh, I was that actually, was I, I kind of like that. I mean, it, so you're, you have, like, a boat, but the boat is a rock, and instead of water, it's air. And, like, it makes sense because it's, like, a loft. Because mm. yeah. it's, like, lofty, it's in the air. That's, so what do you think about that one? Uh, this game is, I mean, in, in my opinion, uh, this looks super cozy. This game just feels cozy, uh, <clears throat> incredible art. I can see myself. Somebody just said this in chat, really and now I can't stop thinking it. about it. The can you imagine watching this, this show without having any exciting. idea just who the, who the, the OTK was? That's available. Um, yeah. Bring these games to light is really what the game expo is all about, and I'm really excited that it's here. I wonder if you can actually make the turtle because they had the turtle. Hey, you just in the be like game, this the entire time. The animal like, update that they're showing. But I wonder if you can actually like put enough rocks together and make it look like a turtle, is, and is it's like real? it just turns into a turtle. <laughs> this, I know they have the goat, so I think this game really what, does what did, have everything what did he just it has. Say? You can customize, no. you can build, you <laughs> can pet animals. Winston from my chat said, "I get it now. Important. They're yes, making exactly. every game seem so the shit so they can sell the publisher business better." Very impressive for an indie developer. 
and also having a boat in the air that okay, I'm, customizable no. is oh, that's good. Brutal. Brutal. This is not your handwriting, dude. <laughs> Who's... What the fuck is going on over there? These, this isn't your handwriting. What are you doing? This is Chance's handwriting. <laughs> what? They literally stole Chance's notes. Oh are, my you, God. are you kidding me, dude? Everyone oh cheated on school. I thought I'd do it. What? That is well, actually Speaking true. of stealing somebody else's stuff, uh, let's actually look at the next game, uh, Unrooted. Yeah, so, so this is just basically Jump King. Yeah, mm. so, I, yeah, I was actually wow. going to say, this game okay. reminded me a lot of Jump King. Yeah. And so, I mean, we actually, I mean, you're, you're the developer, right? So is there going to be pay to win in this game? <laughs> uh, there will be no pay to win. Why uh, not? I actually chat... Um, uh, you know, the biggest the difference, talk, I, I think, no, 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 look at your notes. Fine. Ant, between this yeah, and Jump King is Jump King, you do not get to I, uh, watch. I played a lot game. of right. platformers uh -huh. my day. I played like Jump King, and um, I'm really excited to be here. Uh, this game we've been working on for a few years now. I uh, actually had Sidak grab a bunch of people, and they've been working on this game tirelessly for a few years. We actually had it almost complete about a year ago, but we wanted to basically revamp it to make it super exciting for chat. Uh, there's, it's a unique play style to platformers that hasn't been done, but uh, it's a cute game. It looks uh, it's fine. It's very like, simple. It is similar yeah, to Jump King, uh, but there's a lot more technicals to it. You can stick to walls. Uh, the jumping style is different, and uh, you can't get it yet. Uh, it's actually available on for your wish list right now, but we're looking to fully put it out there in like November or December of 2023. So is there gonna be like gotcha in the game? <laughs> Why do you think I'm just going to put gotcha in the game? Well, I've been playing a lot of recent games. Do you think, <laughs> no, I'm not gonna do, there's no gotcha in the game. Okay, Nothing. all right, well, it's just you know, I tried guys, game, hey, that's it. you know, it, it is what it is. Uh, Amy, what do you think of this game? Uh, I think this is what the Games Expo is all about. This wow. really reminded me of a game where I'll be laughing until my stomach hurts. <laughs> yeah. But I, I like the new environments that have been added. It's nice to see that more progress has been made on this game. It looks really cool and cute. And yeah, I'll be excited that to try it. That was great. I think the game looks kind of bad. Ooh. On the opposite Ooh. day! On the opposite day! Okay. <laughs> it looks great, really great. Uh, I could tell the developers put a lot of love into it, and I like the characters. They're really cute. Yeah, I, I mean, I, it's been a long journey with this game, a, a very expensive journey, and, um, <laughs> you know... But it's it's really fun to have your own ideas come to life. I have a great <laughs> team that worked on it, and you know <laughs> your own ideas of making a game exactly game like this other game. Today is really, what the game expo is all about, and I'm just glad to do this. Thank That's you crazy. So anyway, uh, I want to go ahead crazy. and remind you guys anyway. that you, this is your last chance actually to vote. <laughs> And if you uh, you want to vote for the game that's going to get twenty five thousand dollars, oh, so they're doing voting. Okay. And uh, again, the... that's going to be happening. Watch this, them give um, it to Misgif. Uh, <laughs> I wonder if you can even vote here, for it. But, yeah. uh, I want to say make sure to vote now because uh, this is going to be your last chance, and then we're going to announce the winners of uh, the whole expo. So thank you guys so much already for voting and for watching and everything. We're going to go to the last ad break, and uh, then we're going to look at who won. Thank you. No, I don't think I. I doubt you can vote for Mrs. Game. That that'd be silly. Yeah, I'd, I'd be surprised. Yeah. Yeah. None of those horses. Oh God! Don't have legs. That's why yeah. they don't have legs because they got lost in the war. I'm wondering if the title of the game is a play on play on that fact that no one has legs. It's called Don't Die in the West. Oh, never mind then. And you think you can take the mask off to do some farming? <laughs> Get hard off of that shit. It's armor, man. He's Mandalorian, bro. Don't hate. That's yeah. true. Yeah. It, yeah. Maybe he had a crazy glue accident. The 
this is the way. Okay. That was a weird thing oh, to end up. Everybody, you guys just like saw Tolan Worlds. You can play pre-alpha and you can sign up for updates at tolanworlds.com. So, it's about it. Yeah, you want to take it away? Yep, well, there it is, boys. Um, well, we went through a lot of games today. I, I don't even know That's how crazy. many. There were dozens of them. Four hours. Four hours. Yeah, a lot of you guys had a lot of votes yeah, as four well. Hours. So, in just a couple minutes here, we are going to go ahead and let you all know who actually is going to be winning the collective $50,000. So, again, there's going to be two different categories. There's going to be chat's choice and also the year? OTK pick. Um, so, as soon yeah. as we get weird medieval building we're gonna go ahead game. and let you know so uh hmm. man i uh <laughs> feel like a lot of the games look really nice this year i'm Dude, excited i i, I was yeah. very very impressed what? very Absolutely. impressed with a lot of the games coming out uh this yeah. year uh here at the games expo this year so i i know this is a hard choice this is a hard choice oh, yeah. for a lot of people going to the discord and making sure to vote again this is for twenty five thousand dollars for each voting Man, I mean, just the opportunity to show off all these indie games. I mean, there's a lot of developers, man, that, you know, people that are really talented. They have really good ideas. They work really hard on all this stuff. And how many guys did we, I mean, we, we talked to a few guys today that it was just one. It's right? one two, dude Wait, did I type? Yeah. It's like, yeah, I'm at my studio. It's called all right, my no, room. That was totally me. Yeah. I was moving my you know, keyboard back. That's Sorry. it. And so, yeah, I love I, that. I feel I like that's anything. really what, uh, what gaming has turned into, right? I mean, you've seen so much democratization of gaming, like platforms like mm -hmm. Steam that allow you to upload. You have, like, you know, tools, resources, the whole internet everything like that and uh honestly we're here for it and yeah. i feel like we've had so many just absolutely crazy indie games pop off over the past like i'd say five or so years and uh i think they've been i, I would say genre defining you know absolutely look at something like vampire survivors literally find a genre you look at something like valheim even like you know kind of reinvented a bit of a genre mm -hmm. and uh i'm just I'm happy to be part of it, man. I it's am. it's super awesome. super cool, man. No I idea mean, how to play it or what show. it's about, but I Last hope that headbanging pigeon game I mean, wins. It's, it's an incredible <laughs> amount of work goes into <laughs> yeah, it. Our, our I know, right? Team, our staff, of course, the wonderful. I, I want to re-emphasize here that uh, you know the people that are really doing a lot of the work. Uh, well, I guess okay. Let me. Let me or, do yeah, or yeah. checkmate right showdown. Now, you, you don't see yeah, the people that are doing a lot of work. Right. It's been mainly the other people behind the camera and behind the screen. But we did just get word of the winners of Chat's Choice and the OTK pick. Yep. Oh, oh, is Before it? we do that, let's bring up everybody yeah, else. Yeah, let's actually bring let's, let's everybody. Bring, let's on, bring up on, everybody on. else who does all the work. I don't know if we're doing it yet. All yeah. right, let's do it. <laughs> oh, you okay? Oh. 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 These guys are goofballs. Applause, if you please. It's a tradition. Oh, yeah, it's a tradition. True. So true. All right, everybody make it up. Okay, all right, we're safe. Okay, so the winner of Chat's Choice is going to be the engineer. Hey, oh, nice. Oh. Great choice, man. Right. That game looks really cool. Engineer. That game looks really
hours ago. Yeah. He said, yeah. you know, I might play some of that uh, Q Remastered Q remaster, later today. Yeah, you might, might go play some Q Remastered here. Yeah. I am oh, man. Q that remaster. was, uh... Dude, that was actually pretty great. Now that, now that it's, yeah. like, everything's said and done, that was pretty great. Like, Esfin... Esfin, and, Esfin really carried the games. Like, that was mm -hmm. awesome. Just, like, here's a, here's a genre. Game, 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 game. No, no cringy jokes no ridiculous like like stuff just tons and tons of games tons and tons of gameplay that was awesome the ads weren't too intrusive especially considering how many sponsors they had um the only my only two big bits of feedback would be probably more interviews that aren't as long with gameplay behind them because those are pretty cool and man yeah. they they really the whole show is long they could shave an entire hour off yeah. with with getting rid of that scripted this is what the games are stuff like just have little focus groups after each of the um the the genres and instead of spending like 20 to 30 minutes on that stuff and and it, most of it's just reading off cards like let them just organically super quick talk about them they don't need to say every game is cool and that we all need to play them just let soda and seer do their thing um like it 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 was just that all felt really kind of fake and weird, um, and which didn't feel like them. And then every so often they'd like break character, quote unquote, and do something hilarious, which you can tell is them like actually, you know, enjoying themselves and having fun. So I don't know, man. Overall, overall, that was awesome. It was a big improvement over last year. And uh, and I, I'm actually looking forward to next year. This this was a this was a good show. This was a good show. It was solid. Yeah. Was I fun. wonder if they'll keep the indie focus, because at a point like There's only so big you can go with that, I guess, in terms of like what is shown and what games can be there. Um, I wonder if they'll like separate that or if they'll keep the indie focus and keep the like. Uh, I hope they Discord do. Discord voting and stuff like that. You know that. what? I wouldn't be surprised if they kept an indie focus, especially since this year they announced an indie publisher. Like if True. any, if anything, yeah. I think like it would become the Mad Mushroom OTK Game Expo or something or like, like that. Or like the winner gets to be published by them or something oh, like that. Yeah. No, yeah. and here's chat saying isn't five hours too long. It absolutely is. And and that's why I said like they could literally shave like an hour to two hours off by retooling how a lot of that's done. And I think it would be just as impactful, just as cool. Um, like I think again, I think the whole Esfin sections were were done super well, and they just need to retool the group sections. Like when it would go yeah. to 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 Nick Sear and Soda. And then it would go to the uh, Asmund and his team. Like those sections need to be back. They need to take those back to the drawing board, tighten them up, make them more focused. But the Esfin part was great. The the ad the ad runs were great. There weren't a lot of ads. They were short when they were there. The interviews were long. I feel like the interviews were a little bit too long, and they picked some weird games to do them on. Um, and just make them quick. Just make them quicker. Um, and and put gameplay in the background. And I think that that can be great too. I was gonna say too. like the one biggest note is like. Give us something to fucking look at while you're interviewing. Them. Dude, there was For a shit sake, dude. It lost me immediately, like two minutes into the interview. And then every time they said, let's throw it over to another interview, I tuned out. Not only that, they sure. at, for, for a couple of the interviews, they didn't even have the name of the game that they were interviewing the guy for on the stream. So it's like if somebody were to drop in during those interviews, they have no idea what they're listening to. They have no idea what game that's that's going on. Like at one point, I think with the with the auto one, it said community manager under the community manager for who? For what game? Like it's a, that, like that tells nobody anything. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, and again, this is all you know. This is all stuff that they can easily improve and easily make better. The uh, little yeah. little shout out and note, by the way, I don't, I don't think we've ever talked about this. The set was awesome. That was that yeah. was like a that was like a, a like a like an act like an Xbox style set. Like there was videos everywhere. It looked great. Um, like they they clearly put a lot of resources into that, and it showed, and it was worth it. That was cool. Same set as last time. Well, it's a great set. Like it's a solid studio, man. Um, and pretty much everyone, pretty much everyone did great, um, which was which was also really cool as well. So, well, I, yeah, another it was thing, fun, man. Like, it was I good. Think, it was good. Worth I a watch. Absolutely, think they could do is someone I can't remember who in my chat had already scrolled off, but <clears throat> if they want to keep it like like it is, split it up in a two or three days, man. <laughs> like, I think mm. I I don't mind watching a three hour show. If it's eighty, you know, sixty to eighty percent gameplay and reveals, 
and then like 20 or 30 percent you know funny otk stuff that's great the problem is that it was like 40 60 and a solid 30 percent of the, the otk commentary was just reading off cards and saying that the games looked cool like that's we, we just don't when the show is already super long you don't need to do that like at that point you're just kind of like <laughs> you're just kind of dragging a little bit um, right. but Hey, I'll do three hours, man. I would do three hours of that. Like the amount of games they showed and the, and the way that they did it. And like, like that was cool, man. That was, that was yeah. awesome. That they was by, by far had, 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 uh, are, and are going to have more games, like twice as many games as any other showcase, yep. which is great. Yep. Also, I love how they said how much to wishlist things. I hate that they never at any point explained why to do it i feel like it's so much more impactful if people fundamentally understand when you wish list a game you're directly supporting the dev it gets their game on the front page carousel it gets that game more sales steam looks at those wish lists like they just kept nailing home to wish list stuff but they never at any point assigned value to doing that so it's yeah. like i really wish that they would have a few times been that being like keep in mind when you wish list a game it really helps support these devs you know and stuff like that and uh like I guarantee you more people would wish list knowing that they're like actually fundamentally supporting those games. Um, yeah. Which seems to be the whole goal of the show. And, and that's, that's awesome. So yeah. Anyway, yeah. that's it for me, man. That was fun. And even at five hours, it was still fun to watch. They can tighten it up. Yeah, it was still it was good. Fun. Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, what time tomorrow? 1 PM Eastern. So normal drop frames time till mm -hmm. probably like five. 30 it four hours? Know, oh, it was four PC hours. Gaming I'm sorry. Show. It was four hours, not five hours. Four hours. I don't know if they said how long the PC gaming show is. I think it's about an hour. It was generally like 45 like to an hour. They, yeah, they, it's, it, that's, that's the day nine. I think they're having day nine and, um, I, I Frankie? Name. Frankie. Frankie. I think day nine and yeah. Frankie are coming back. So I think it's in between generally 45 to an hour. That's going to cool. be great. They're such a good team. They're such, a, they're such yeah. good hosts. Should be good tomorrow. Cool. <laughs> yep. I'll see you guys probably right, real quick, 30 minutes or so before. We going to do any pre-show stuff for Xbox? Okay, 30 before. Perfect. Yeah, yeah we'll do ask. 30 before. Okay. All right. Well, thanks, guys. That was fun. Yep. Yep. See you tomorrow, guys. Yep. Catch see you guys, guys tomorrow. Bye. Bye. All right, guys. That was great. I, I, I know that some of you were here for the entire four hours, and I appreciate that. That was fun. That was cool. Uh, am I leaving? I'm leaving for now. I'm, I'm leaving for now. I'm going to go and like hang out with my kids a bit. And, uh, and I'm, I think my wife, my wife has been a freaking rock star this weekend, watching all three of our kids. We don't have a nanny on the weekends and she has been managing an almost two year old, four year old and six year old all by herself all day these last two days. So I'm going to go do what I can and, um, and help out there. I might be back this evening. I do want to play a little bit more Liza P. I do want to try out wizard with a gun. I actually downloaded, uh, that mob factory demo so we could maybe try those out. Um, but I don't know. I, I may just wait and maybe we'll do that stuff tomorrow morning. I don't know. We will see. We will see. Yeah, big thanks to Nuriel for uh, pretty much every time a game would come up, she would put the link in chat, which was super, super useful. I saw a lot of you guys in there um, utilizing that. So that was that was awesome. That was awesome. But anyway, uh, thank you guys so much for being here. I appreciate it. And and I, as a final reminder, if you did like any of those games on the OTK show, definitely go wishlist them. It helps support the devs. It, it's It's a great way to support indie development without spending a penny. And it's very, very, very meaningful. The devs will tell you it is, it is at times better than buying the game as it will put them in front page positions, which will get them hundreds to thousands of sales if they get there. So all that takes is wishlisting. Uh, make sure to do that. And um, it's awesome. All right, friends. I'll see you guys in a little bit. Thank you so much for your time. And uh, catch you tomorrow for Xbox and Starfield Direct in the PC show. It's going to be good. Oh, Esvin, thanks for watching, man. Hope you and chat enjoyed it. We did, dude. We absolutely did. Thank you for your one year. Uh, dude, you did a great job. Like, that was, you did an actually great job. Like, we just watched the, um, we just watched the future game show before this, and we were talking about how the hosts were, like, trying to do, like, cringy jokes, and the pacing wasn't right and stuff, and man, you just... You, you, you helped make that show, dude. That was great work. That was great work. All right, anyway, I'm out of here. Thank you guys so much. Bye-bye.